T-Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the Sky High Spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this sixth anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect down players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
Hi everyone, in this devlog, we'll be introducing the all-new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute, Bullet Penetration. Shots now not only penetrate vests and bodies, but they can also damage multiple enemies in the bullet's path. However, the damage dealt is reduced by 50% each time it pierces an enemy. We hope that by adding this attribute, it can give players more room to showcase their skills. Players can also utilize this new attribute to achieve a double elimination with just one shot. Do keep in mind that landing a headshot increases the odds of achieving a double elimination with one shot, and the damage dealt differs between bolt-action sniper rifles. If you're interested in this challenge, let's find out which bolt-action sniper rifle is best suited for it. Let's start with the two most accessible firearms, the Car 98 k and M24. When armed with either of these firearms, and facing enemies at full health with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to eliminate the first enemy while the next enemy receives massive damage instead. However, when faced with enemies not at full health with a level 2 and level 1 helmet respectively, you'll be able to achieve a one-shot double elimination. Hence, we strongly recommend the AM or AMR. Although the AM and AMR can only eliminate the first enemy with a level 3 helmet, but when facing enemies with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to achieve a double elimination in just one shot. And when facing enemies with a level 1 helmet or no helmet at all, you can use any of these four bolt-action sniper rifles to perform the incredible one-shot double elimination. That's all for the new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute. See you next time. In ages past, the golden moon cast a mysterious color upon Nimbus Island. According to legend, there was a clever adventurer that could utilize fog and terrain to defeat powerful opponents unexpectedly and obtain the reward of the genies and magic lamps, attaining the glory of chicken dinner. Indeed, this is Sky High Spectacle. Anyone can be the one. PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful 6th anniversary celebration! In the Sky High Spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. 
Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7mm ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90! Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay where you can now use drying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop, and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
Hi everyone, in this devlog, we'll be introducing the all-new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute, Bullet Penetration. Shots now not only penetrate vests and bodies, but they can also damage multiple enemies in the bullet's path. However, the damage dealt is reduced by 50% each time it pierces an enemy. We hope that by adding this attribute, it can give players more room to showcase their skills. Players can also utilize this new attribute to achieve a double elimination with just one shot. Do keep in mind that landing a headshot increases the odds of achieving a double elimination with one shot, and the damage dealt differs between bolt-action sniper rifles. If you're interested in this challenge, let's find out which bolt-action sniper rifle is best suited for it. Let's start with the two most accessible firearms, the Car 98 k and the M24. When armed with either of these firearms, and facing enemies at full health with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to eliminate the first enemy while the next enemy receives massive damage instead. However, when faced with enemies not at full health with a level 2 and level 1 helmet respectively, you'll be able to achieve a one-shot double elimination. Hence, we strongly recommend the AM or AMR. Although the AM and AMR can only eliminate the first enemy with a level 3 helmet, but when facing enemies with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to achieve a double elimination in just one shot. And when facing enemies with a level 1 helmet or no helmet at all, you can use any of these four bolt-action sniper rifles to perform the incredible one-shot double elimination. That's all for the new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute. See you next time. In ages past, the golden moon cast a mysterious color upon Nimbus Island. According to legend, there was a clever adventurer that could utilize fog and terrain to defeat powerful opponents unexpectedly and obtain the reward of the genies and magic lamps, attaining the glory of chicken dinner. Indeed, this is Sky High Spectacle. Anyone can be the one.
weeks since these players' journey began. The journey of blood, sweat, and tears culminates to today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2024 PMSL C Spring Finals. Sixteen teams have proven themselves worthy to compete today. And let us see who will be going home as champions of the 2024 Sea Spring Finals. That's right. Assalamualaikum dan selamat datang ke PMSL Spring Finals. Sea Spring Finals 2024. Ha, nama saya Faizal dan bersama dengan saya Taj Bani. Kita hari ini ingin menonton dan kita nak tengok bakat-bakat 16 pasukan selepas 3 minggu telah pun berhempas plus untuk sampai ke Spring Finals hari ini ha, di Gardens Mall. Apa kabar Tropicana? Apa kabar semua? Okey, tak sihat hari ini? Yes. I love the energy. The energy is amazing. Jika anda sedang menonton di rumah, datang sekarang ke Tropicana Gardens. Kita boleh menonton secara langsung. Baiklah, Tash Bani telah pun bersama dengan tim-tim ni daripada day one. Apakah perasaan eh, Tash Bani dah dapat tengok 16 pasukan yang terakhir kini berada di Spring Finals hari ini? It's definitely a tale of we know who's going to make it. A tale of we did not expect for some teams to make it. And today, the question now is with this new teams, new blood coming onto the stage, whether or not our previous champions can defend the title. Betul. And kita memang nak tengok underdogs come back from below. Betul tak, Tash? Exactly. Ah, itu baru exciting gila. Tetapi macam inilah, Tash. Diorang pun tak nak tengok muka kita lama lagi. Diorang nak tengok pasukan-pasukan yang telah pun sampai ke finalis hari ini. Mari kita persilakan tim yang pertama. Dia persilakan, Tash Bani. The champions of the 2023 PMNC from Vietnam, Team X! Made of young blood, this is Voin Esports! Showing us that consistency is key, Team Flash! <laughs> A team that always shows us that they can make it to the top, Coming in at number five from Indonesia, PMSL C Fall 2023, Morph GPX. Always making it to the top ranks. Can they make it out to the top? D Xavier. Hailing from Indonesia, trying to move away from the shadows of the other giants. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for RRQ Ryu! Trying to bring back their glory days, making it to the PMGC 2024.
Made of insane stamina, these underdogs are going to show us they cannot be underestimated. Ladies and gentlemen, Talon Esports! These aliens are here to show why they are one of the best in Indonesia. Bigatron Red Aliens! New to the league, but full of surprises. This is Big Me! Sports. A team that is always surprising us in every tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, you do alliance. to the championship title. Making a bang, Boom Esports! of PMSL C Alter Ego Aries Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is your defending champions, Alter Ego Aries! Itulah dia tuan-tuan dan puan-puan. Selamat anda menonton secara langsung di Tropicana Gardens hari ini ataupun anda berada di rumah Ah, sedang menonton kita punya PMSL Spring Sea Finals pada hari ini Tonton orang perempuan itulah dia bakat-bakat daripada 16 pasukan kita Yang telah pun bertempur selama 3 minggu bersama dengan Taj Bani Taj Bani, ada apa-apa sebelum kita mulakan pertandingan kita hari ini? Not at all, I'm just curious to see whether or not our old veterans will be taken down by fresh blood And with that, we're going to toss it to casters Take it away And this is the grand finals of the PUBG Mobile Super League Southeast Asia Spring. And I uh, can't wait for it to get started. My name is Sir Cloud together with the wonderful Juju. It's great to be back at the desk again. Where we belong. <laughs> Where we belong. <laughs> Man, I'm in like, I saw the year with the old team system. It was maybe some of them giving uh, a bit of a dance. Especially the new team. You have to get ready for the new team right now. 
they are dominating the entirety of the movie, so far by public control. But also, you know what? When they actually announced Team Action, I, I remember like Team X and, and Team X and Seth were in the two. <laughs> when they actually announced the title, I'm like, is it fair? <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess so, right? but I guess if you want to talk about titles and bragging rights, well, it falls back to the premium itself, so I guess it's a key savior that has the right to live, right? Yeah, I mean, like, but at the end of the day, it's down to the first point, because you tell me who will take away the, uh, the safety issue, because we talked about Indonesia and Indonesia right now, and, and, and there's so many new black yeah, of course not at all. They ended up third in the league, putting a lot of a challenge to the other names that we often see. But uh, before we get into our teams, let's introduce the format for the Grand Finals. That's true. So far we've done with the league stage, which done like three or four weeks, uh, three weeks, uh, almost three weeks before now. Now we're down to the finals where we're having only three days long of the Grand Final 15 to 17, which is happening live at Malaysia in the Tropical Gardens. And here's the overview. Teams would have a amount of head start points depending on how they ended the league. So right now, the team that has the most points is Boom Esports. They got themselves 30 points as a head start point. And on the other end, Mock GPX barely make it through. On the final day, they managed to get one point as the starting point uh, for the grand final. Now speaking of the starting point for this round, it does actually provide quite a number of points, 30 points, and that's going to be one of the huge, biggest, humongous points to start off when it comes to the Grand Finals. When it comes to the point system, yeah, when it comes to the Grand Finals itself, it's still going to be the same provided in every single map where first place chicken dinner take away 10 points, where we give up to 8th place where 9 to 16 will end up to give nothing, but elimination points is for use, but it's going to be a lion's share of $200,000 in the back. And here are your amazing teams, ladies and gentlemen. Just to be specific on how many points will they be starting off with, as you can see here on screen, right now, Boom Esports holding maximum points, uh, 30 points here. So they do have an amazing start. But then again, yes, it might swing, but it also could mean that one round could still switch things. So if a team, let's say Mob GPS, is for that chicken dinner in Sanhok, they will go all the way up. That's kind of true, but Sanhok is just one map so far. You know, you did have this sort of conversation before, which is going to crack on afterwards, but we're going to talk about later since we're going to focus on the work right now. Now, personally, uh, now, when it comes to team-wise, right, like we mentioned about Team Flash, a bit un inconsistent, but also we mentioned about Indonesian teams here, Boom and Piggy. Now, if you remember flashback of way back, in the uh, last season's PMPL example, right? Room is one of the teams that's so confused who to put on the road, but when it comes to the season, they are number one. Yeah, um, and they still stopping in and other players. Even Coach Ken had to play at some point, so I was like, okay, I, I still don't know what the formula is, but whatever the formula is, they are topping it off. Now we're comparing them with Big Mai, the team that became the champion of PMNC Indonesia, also putting in a good performance. That's kind of true. Now, another thing that we should also look up to is going to be our OQ. Now, we do know there's a lot of Indonesian teams up here, including Talon as well, and BTR it used to be one of the legends BTR, but now they start to feel a bit of a struggle. But the buyers, on the other hand, always coming in at the very last minute. I don't know what is the real plan for the buyers. So far, it's working pretty great for this season. Yeah, it's working great for these guys as well. As always, Rosemary is always performing two times weekly MVP. This guy is carrying out the ego like nobody's business. But of course, let's not forget about Adi Luke, always the main man for Yudo Alliance. Tony K of the Vampire. And we've got Zeta, not a name that we often see at the Southeast Asia stage, showing it up for Void. Now, I have to keep my eyes on Sita for now because Sita has been incredible the entire league and this is going to be one of these hidden gems that's not been highlighted enough. Give him a couple of more seasons, he will overtake most of the legendary players, legendary players out there. But back to the side of top sun performance, not surprise, Boom always be the number one in the league. He's now standing strong out of four teams in Sunhawk. Three of them coming up from the league. Yeah, in fact, 
back. All eight Indonesian teams made it to the Grand Finals. Again, the region that is still showing they can be consistent even after so many years. But for me, Sports having this record inside of San Hall, there will be a lot of expectations for them. But check out the predicted drop locations and look at how many teams might drop in boot camp. <laughs> this is going to be a problem to watch, especially if the Soka comprises of all three islands. We had Arden, we walk, we have on the right side of Tom Alpha before. It's going to be anywhere. It's like we mentioned before, like so many uh, coaches actually mentioned regarding this map itself. Some of the lock percentage will have to be relied on when you, play, when you actually play in Tom Yeah, I mean, it is a tough map, right? Like, it's very circle dependent. If you go to a certain island, then teams who are not in that island might find it a little bit difficult, especially if it goes to Camp Alpha Island, in which, based on the predicted drop, there's only two teams there, but who knows, we might see an extra one. Now, starting off, when it comes to our maps for today, it's going to be the usual. Now, we talked about this between um, the other production crew and I was actually doing the next bit, right? What if one day right now, one day we're starting off with Murama, two Murama first, because that's the biggest map, so we'll make it as the first one. And imagine if we ended up with Sunbox as one map only at the end of the day. That's going to be super easy. Yeah, I can imagine it to be really chaotic because you put the most chaotic map <laughs> at the end, right? It will like, imagine like the players had to go through five rounds of like, you know, the bigger maps and then all of a sudden in the most chaotic map, you have to put 500% focus. Man, that is just going to be insane. Yeah, that's going to be fun. That's where everybody will be forced to a corner and like it or not, they have to push themselves over the limit. That's where you get to see the legendary players being honed into one of the best players out there in probably the world. But when it comes to our map as per usual, we're still going to have three maps. Uh, I'm hoping one day we're going to add one more because I kind of miss another map in the future. But so far, the it is what it is. But back to the society of Wrangle. Now, Wrangle will be one of the maps that have really been played by a lot of individuals. Yeah, they do have a good record. And Wrangle, as everyone knows by now, is played three times a day. And that's the most that they will be playing. So would they give them a good head start? Well, we need to keep an eye on that because maybe some teams are saving strategies for the Grand Finals. That's kind of true. But when it comes to the league stage, when it comes to the Grand Finals, it's going to be a totally different strategy because I, I did literally personally ask some of the teams before. Well, you Yeah, Ravenclaw, he has uh, mentioned intentions of kind of taking a chill pill. Probably this season, maybe we don't know next season or something like that. So that's why he himself is on the sidelines for now, allowing other players to shine. And he used to be the IGL for Vampire Esports. And of course, that's one of the most important roles in the team. Now that he's taking that sideline chill, unless needed, Stone is the IGL for Vampire. Yeah, Stone, I mean, um, back in the day, Stone hardly being rotated in when it's only, only crucial that we get to see Stone actually play. Now, this is going to be another team that's going to be a bit of confusing. Uh, how, will you, how would you pronounce the team's name? And I did ask them, and do you pronounce this Pigmy or Pigmy? Uh, they do always uh, announce themselves as uh, Pigmy. Pigmy is not wrong either. They just say it's something like whatever suits you, you can call them whatever is pleasing for you. I think it sounds a bit more cute in that sense, but I think that would be a big one. Now that you think about it, now that I think about it, right? Big Big doesn't sound too bad as well. I mean, it, rolled, it both of them rolls well on the tongue, right? Like, it's it's so hard to like kind of pick one. It's like, pick a preferred color, blue or green. It's like, pretty much the same for me. <laughs> 
shit. I worry for you right now because I don't think it's the same color for now. Oh, okay. Probably I need to get myself checked there. <laughs> I, I think you should. I worry for you, man. But we saw the audience. In case you guys still at home, you guys happen to be in Malaysia. Just drop yourself. I think it's near your place right now. Oh yeah, it's like, what, 10 minutes away? I can hear them screaming from here? I'm not gonna lie. I can feel the, I can feel the vibes happening across the street. No, oh, I wish I'm across that street right now. It's quite far from me, but that's gonna be Sam9 supporters. We do know you have been playing with Sam9 Boyn. That's gonna be Zeta. And I have a feeling if you give a bit more time to Boyn with this lineup, especially Zeta, something big is coming up very soon. Oh yeah, plus Boyn, they had Defiance as their coach. The coach who won Alter Ego, the championship. They have an award-winning coach and also this young talent. I mean, Boyn could be one of those teams that can come with a surprise in the Grand Finals. And speaking of the Grand Finals, the match coming up soon, which is going to be Sunhawk, let's fly away. Here we go, Sunhawk! It's the first game of the PMSL Grand Finals! Can't wait to see what's gonna happen in bootcamp because the predicted drop, there were four teams, so we wanna see what's gonna happen there. It's gonna be chaotic for sure, but the problem is always gonna be this first circle. Where will the teams want to go into the circle? How did they get into the direction of it? Because the navigation by the IGL is super important not to clash into unnecessary fights too soon for these teams. While well, RQ taking around Bantai on the southern side, a lot of team favoured in the centre due to how small this map is already are. And STX, Gig Fam, 79 might actually visit each other. While well, we do have Flash, Team Flash, Chuang, or Chuang, happen to be bumping into maybe two teams left and right there. Mm, okay, I'm looking at the uh, bigger screen right now and it looks like a team flash is surrounded by Pygmy. And Pygmy, they don't really have a house. You can't think about it. They are like right in the middle of the map. So they're looting in those small houses. So the question is which direction will they go? Now it would depend on the circle. And looks like the circle is not too far away from them. So not too bad for them if they want to move down south to the quarry area. Now speaking of the quarry, that's going to be around the circle down there. Kampung visited by STX, so was uh, Voin, Maxis on there then already spotted out Rosemary. Now mind you, at the MVP for the league week 2 and week 3 is still taken by Rosemary. Despite Alter Ego not really in the top 5 when it comes to the start of the Grand Finals year, but still Rosemary delivers whatever he needed to. And yeah, speaking about Alter Ego, we have to remind ourselves what happened in last season's PMSL Grand Finals. They did an insane comeback on the final day to become the champion. So if anyone's going to count Alter Ego out just because they're not in the top five, well, I wouldn't at this point. Now, another team that we haven't mentioned enough is going to be Morph. Now, I don't know about Morph for this season, right? It feels like they really lost their touch compared to last season. But still, regardless, they managed to squeeze into the Grand Finals as the last place down there with only one point. Not so much when it comes to getting the lead up there. But it's not impossible. Morph is known for when it comes to working out everything in the very last two days, especially tomorrow. Yeah, Mock GPX had a major roster shift, right? Only two original players from the uh, previous PMGC lineup still here, which is uh, Popoku and also Yoru. And uh, yep, they had to swap out three players that moved up to other teams. So I guess that kind of affected their momentum at some point. But we're going to put focus on to Audrey right now, one of the key players for GigFam. And he has one player from... Team X in front of him, but nobody's making a big engagement yet, except for now. Now well, he's breaking the silence for sure. Audrey greeted warmly by the side of break, but nothing's gonna happen. Snipes a bit alert towards his surrounding. Will they try to pick away towards the slopes of the hill? But I don't think they want to do so. Damn root will be the IGL. He will call for the shots, but still hold the position. That's gonna be damn root. 
probably going to be shouting over to a side of Cake Fam not to move so much. Not giving away the positions, not giving too much info to a Zach TX who's climbing next to them. Ooh. Jakey's going to follow up, but at the forefront, looks like they're going to go head to head with each other. Aizen is coming in from afar. He needs to back his team up, but at the same time, we got to check out his flanks as well in case anyone comes by. Damroon's on the other side, so Geekman's quite spread out. That could be a decent strategy depending on how things go. But speaking about engagement, looks like uh, it's not going to happen now. Both teams disengaging. And nothing's gonna happen for now. I guess this is where we get to exchange our greetings here, Cloud. How you doing? How are things going on for you? It's been a while. <laughs> I've been really hungry. You know, it's uh, it is the fasting. I know you're fasting one. as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, yeah, I haven't had anything today at all. So might as well join the bandwagon, right? Yeah, welcome to the party, bro. We might as well just break our fast individually later, but we try to make sure it's as merry as possible. I mean, in case you guys don't know, it's a fasting month for the Muslim around the globe here, including the players. Some of them are fasting as well, not pl uh, while well, they are not eating and playing at the same time, but actually fasting. I mean, everybody knows about intermittent fasting, right? It actually does and do increase your focus, especially in a tournament. But you know what else I miss the most? Mm -hmm. It's our amazing viewers out there. Glad to be <laughs> yeah. back on the channel. Yeah, like a lot of familiar people there. We got Cindy, we got Moes, we got tons of familiar names here. Glad to see everyone back at the uh, at the live stream and supporting our channel. And I know that all of you do miss us as well. I, I saw the comments. I saw the comments. Yeah, we definitely miss you guys a lot. I mean, a lot of uh, people actually ask us when we actually will pass, but. Now that we are casting as Parjan on his knees, Combit, quite aggressive move come up from Boom, early initiation, a Razor will back him up, but it's a bit too far now, and it's going to be unusual angle for Boom to follow up that one, I'm not sure what Combit really had in his mind, Boom happened to be um, missing out a couple of members, Freedom, and it happened Yummy? to be in vain as well, yep. Ooh. Nice follow-up there by Yummy though, but uh, now the follow-up has to continue on. Lamborghini is coming in. Looks like either one of these teams is going to be eliminated for sure. They're not going to let each other go as Levis goes in for the 1v1. And Ninja is going to be the DBS. Gameplay by losers to the DBS from Crazy. Oh, crazy finish things off. It's a bit of reload. is quite empty. The clip's there, but the blues are oh, happy to be arrived in front seat. And the rest of Boom have it been lost. Uh, their friend, which is going to be Pombit on the side of these Xavis, is not a great start at all. Maybe just setting the tone, just trying to warm up as the first map of the Grand Finals. Yeah, that's what uh, every uh, gamer always says, right? Like, if the first round didn't work out, you're always like, okay, that's a warm up round, that's a warm up round. But different than, <laughs> like, during the league stages, right? This is, like, only three days, and that's it, all locked in, and that's where the scary part is. I'm going to give them some, I'm just going to cut them some slack. They had a bit of a longer break than they usually were mm -hmm. back in the league days. Maybe, you know, the fingers start to harden up here. You just need to slowly, gently to let it down, the nerves and everything else. So, yeah, cut them some slack. This is just the first map. <laughs> yeah, you want to be positive, right? Yeah. Yeah, mate, positive, yes. Yeah. But you we got to think about it, like the uh, pawn bit moved to the high ground. I guess he was scouting uh, for the next uh, rotation location, happened to bump into to Xavier. But they won the fight despite like him going down first. That's so, kind of true. Yeah, great follow-up by Boom, I must say. I agree, especially even the Pombi who being eliminated early on, he actually gave so much crucial information that's vital enough for the side of Boom to take the whole team down. But we're not done with another fight here. Yuri Line scouted out by Gig Fam. And I think there's going to be also another team nearby. STX seems to be interested in this fight. Ooh, Team X monitoring the situation, probably going to come in as third party. But look at the elimination feed. You high from Sam 9 knocked down. And Loyu fights back. Oh, STX. Okay, I can sense a three-way water, including Sam9, STX, and uh, perhaps RRQ. You do lines. Loyu climb up to its idiot rooftop, trying to get himself a vantage point. So wasn't wrong. 
might not want to be part of this just yet. Waiting for the right to be the third party. Now, I think Dab is quite confused. Which one to pick first? There's too many options out there for the side of 79. Yeah, so many targets, so hard to choose, you know, it's like going to the bazaar Ramadan. <laughs> yeah, and you got tons of food in front of you, it's like, I don't know which one is that! Everything seems to be yummy, for now. <laughs> yummy shit, boom. The puns. The puns is just too much for words, <laughs> man. Morph, coming in with Alter Ego, this is gonna be the past champions, can they hold their ground as Okta? Managed to wipe down a boo-boo who, but... It's gonna be not the entirety of Morph is still oh. three alive, but they have some situation there. Lucky enough for them to make it back on top. Yeah, just when Alter Ego was on top of them, right? Now Boy Seal's face from afar, gets onto the vehicle. Lucky enough for them to even get away. Right around by Boy Seal. And they're okay. Back to us, Alter Ego. Playing alongside with the blue zone. Might just enter a bit late compared to Morph. Still trying to find himself a vehicle. I'm not sure if they do have any vehicles on their end. Well, we got to get a good visual now. But what we're sure is that Yoru doesn't have a vehicle. But lucky enough for him, Alter Ego does not know he's there. But the bad news for Yoru now. Alter Ego has this high ground. Where is Yoru going to go? At the same time, he's going to say hello to the blue. Hopefully you won't say goodbye to anyone just yet. Alter Ego going with one UAZ, three men squeezing into it and just leaving. No, it's going to be Okta and Rosemary scouting about on the outskirts while RRQ on top of Camp Charlie. It's going to be Asa spotted out. Some nine players a bit scattered between RRQ players. They're fanning out so wide between themselves. Oh yeah, they're taking different angles now, including Asa. Very, very off angle that he has here all the way across. If he gets knocked, it's going to be hard for him to recover. So he has to play it very safe as a support player from this distance. Well, we're about to be shown the uh, next stage of the circle. So far, all these teams, they are in it. But some teams might not be after this. There you go. Kuwari is going to be in the next phase. Right on top of it as well. The terrain's gonna be super challenging for the player. Extremely hard for them to just, you know, make it easy, chicken, not so easy at all. But we do have Morph coming in the latest so far on the north, uh, on the southern side. Might just tailing Alter Ego and RQ from behind while Sam now is squeezing in. A lot of team coming up from the southern part of them. That's gonna be quite hectic and quite concentrated compared to the north but some of them do prefer to play it quiet and safe for now oh but these boys are playing it quiet as big and red villains will open up their account take it on one member of boys but he's not done yet zeta goes down as well Lapa, here comes the course boy he Yes, next Lapar just gonna go in alone instead. He tried to scout out for the rest of the team, but they are quite busy at the back line as well. So Lapa have to actually hold this angle by himself. But Satawa give him eight on the right side. Maxif cornered up. Key found it out. But BTR, they're playing it and kiting as much as possible. Back and forth as a tug of war. Yeah, they are beating out the nades. At the same time, focusing onto the circle because they know they're on the outside of it, playing the gatekeeping role perhaps instead. They know that they have a compound below them to be in, and that's where they will stay. At the same time, Vorin only left with two players. They won't want to pursue BTR. With two players, it's quite a lot of numbers of BTR you have to fight again. So not just that, fighting BTR is one of them few challenges they have to face. They have to survive till the end for the chicken dinner if they want to make it to the top. is still taking the number one spot, not wavered at all. Vampire is still having full squad survive as well. We do have 79. You have to be on the 11th place right now, trying to take out the second place squad, which is going to be Vampires right across the street. Ooh, 79 playing with our depth this time. Since uh, he got eliminated fairly early, he's going to play a defensive stance. We're back on the Mob GPS. Yoru, nice long range to take down Asa. And Yoru, he has awoken the beast that is Snape from afar. Knocking it down outside the blue. His teammates nowhere to be found. The first week MVP, Snape. Happened to be proactively trying to find target by himself. Hexos. 
want to save us are quite far from him, but more fury also being knocked down. But the problem is they couldn't find the rest of the mob. Well, Voin struggling to survive with this smoked up vehicle. Hopefully they won't be charged down and ambushed because that vehicle will explode anytime soon. Got themselves in a crate. Not the best spot, but at least giving them some covers temporarily for now. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of playing inside of Huari because it uh, slows your mobility. And, and now the circle seems to be shifting away from Huari. It still has it in it, but look at this. This kind of position is very, very dangerous. Vampire Esports easily takes down Void from the top. It's going to be easy rain for the side of Boom as well. Look at the circle. Nobody competing against Boom. They are taking quarter or third of the circle by themselves while the rest of them still fighting on the southern side including Telom and Misery is knocked down. Red face bad can save the Misery almost being finished off by Shweps. He changed his name to Shepsi for no reason but Nudi and Tony K will try to back up on Shweps who try to march forward but the problem is he's been discovered by XTX surrounded vampires. Can they get out of this sticky place right now? Well, new name, new hairstyle, new mission, that is Shweb. And Alter Ego comes in with the same mission as before. Octai, the fourth round with the DBS, gets a knockdown to one member of BTR. Boys is gonna come in from the right side, Alpha is gonna come in from the left, nice flanking by Alpha. Octa coming in around the corner, a bit too late, BTR being finished off with the help of Talon on the other end as well. Now it's gonna be Alter Ego managed to survive, but they have to run away from the blue. Here comes another challenger. Sam9 is in the vicinity. And Sam9 spot them out in surprise. And you I take it as a present for the day. Happy enough. Secure himself a couple of knockdowns on the way towards the safe zone. Boy Tune gets taken up at the zone at the same time. On set for face plan on his knees. Zero as well. You high finding his way through. We have to be careful of the challenge onto the high ground. Kenny is there. Kenny with the spike, but now it's been countered back. Alpha from the other side. Still putting pressure on the Semna. You high gonna go in with a 1v1 against Alpha. Alpha finishes off low you, but you high is still there. Oh man, Alva down to himself, barely got enough to survive. Same goes for the side of UI. No mad kit, only bandages has been spamming around. Won't actually help him at this point. While well, Alva tried to find UI, then finish him off! And that's gonna be Alva secures the point before he goes down as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right. No first aid at all. And that is a last ditch attempt by Alva to secure the one extra point. And moves over to Red Face from Talon. This is bad, bad news for him. He only has one first aid right in front of him. Flash! On his knees. Secures two. Elimination points. At least one for now. Before he probably goes out. Managed to dipping his toes to a side of Tim Flash for Red Face, but he's not dipping any of the safe zone just yet. Wound T! Oh boy, managed to get a bit of a redemption in the very last minute, but he will go down towards the blue as Gigfan spot him out across. And Gigfan tried to gatekeep to his big me. Yuri Alliance possibly will be against vampires and XTX still busy with RQ. Surprisingly, Zay from Morph, the only one that's still passing through Cave at this point. Well, 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 Circle moved out of Kuwari. Pick me, pick my, pick me. Oh, we have a hard time of going up. Look at this, he's surrounded by Face Clan, Dig Fam, and also Vampire. And Yudo Alliance after that. I, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Now, Yudo Alliance definitely not moving at all. They got themselves a couple of compounds. They got the walls. They got what they need. That's the point. We have to try to pass by. A Gig Fan with the Watchtower on top of them. Taking on two Zane and Snipes. Taking such a crucial point. For the side of Gig Fam, this is going to be the turning point from the silence before. It will laugh with only two more players, with also Vampires breathing behind their neck. You do Alliance on top of Gig Fam. They have to be extra careful not to overexpose themselves when trying to nick all those players away just beneath them. Ooh, Aizen takes out Tony K. And our Vampire is for most swept. As well as being stuck at bottom. Take me. Having an issue of their own as well with snipes on the sniper tower. It's just knocked down and he was secured that point for Geek Fam. XDX still waiting on the other end, on the other side of a mountain while Big Me and Lass is only Jabranki. It's going to be one of the top frag for the team that remains on the side of 
Frankie and Big Me. But FaZe will try to stop him from pushing forward. There's no advance for Jabranki other than just playing around in the crate area of Quarry. Now, this is going to be tough for him to get out. But FaZe now quite divided their attention towards their back as well. Because we do have another team just crossing. Which is going to be Boom. Who being left by the circle. The circle shifted, pulled all the way towards the south. Yeah, and for some reason, boom, Mooney has two players now. They're tracking the circle, but it should be okay for them since uh, they should be able to go up to the high ground, coming back down. They should still be able to at least hold on for this phase of the circle. The next phase, we'll need to see how it goes. But uh, if uh, Team X comes in in the same direction, goes up to the high ground, then boom, we need to be prepared to defend. Theory, theory wise, it's doable. But can they execute? When it comes to the Grand Finals Cloud, it's always about the execution. Whether you have the guts for it or not. Where your instincts calling out the timing is going to be perfect or not. On the side of Onzos, he's quite not confident. A bit doubtful whether to go out while the Blues start to squeeze in. Now, when will they start to leave? Well, it has to be very, very soon. But there could be an opening now because one of the members of Boom Currently down. Snipes knocked down by Ventores. It's a different game in this round. But for now, SDX, we got Solas here. Managed to get its way into the circle. Frenzy is locked out. So was Gonna go in with the smoke. So our Frenzy tried to blind himself as well. The Molly's already burning him off live. He need to get out. Being flushed by Soas. Next is gonna be hand grenade. There's not gonna be flushed anymore. But Soas overexposed himself towards the other team. He's being shot down instead. But Jaiki just randomly sprays to a side of Frenzy while the rest of FaZe also actually going into one oh. different team entirely but friends have finally knocked down on xdx players so it was a bit too separated from trunk and jaiki but the problem is boom don't even have the circle to start with well i have to point out that i'm impressed with how frenzy defended his ground getting knocked down to soa somehow and because of that he could still stay alive and probably go for more placement points. But speaking about placements now, you know Alliance, they have the compound, they have the circle. Back on the frenzy right now, he needs to move. Time is on his side. 30 more seconds before the zone reaches stage 8. Oh, the blue zone and the help of Udo Alliance across all the way downtown. There's going to be from roofs up all the way. And Udo Alliance happen to be just playing the third part here while the players blowing their way up to a side of face. But the angle's not suitable for them to actually shoot from below to upwards. It's going to be difficult. But still, the Empire's managed to take down Mormon and Udo Alliance aiding from behind. But Faze still happened to be sandwiched in between down there, between Udo Alliance and also Vampires down there. Well, top three teams here, ladies and gentlemen. Who will score the first chicken dinner in the Grand Finals? Schweppes will be revived by Stone. Newsy keeps an eye out for the teams right in front of them. Stone makes a run for it, not able to pick up Schweppes in time. Because the zone is closing. Now they need to face off against Yudu Alliance on the right in the compound. I miss this traps, by the way. It's been a while we've seen 20-ish sort of elimination in this couple of seasons. So hard to actually reach there. But on the side of XDX, the two players remaining 25% when it comes to data. Will they survive or not? Compared to the side of Yudu Alliance, you have the upper hand getting on one. Look, my spot out, Jaiki. Here comes the nade that will finish the entirety of XTX. Oh. Wait, what? No? How? Wow, that was miraculous that Jaiki is able to survive that. But oh, Leo got it at the end. And now it's between Vampire Esports and Yudu Alliance for the first chicken dinner in the grand finals. Oh, Leo comes in, Newsy's on the other side, Stone on the left side, Leon on the high ground, looks like they have vampire covered. Going to two be three here. Ten eliminations in the hems on the side of Yudu Alliance, but Vampire's got a nine, one knocked down, Newsy. There's going to be one more player's left, but Yudu Alliance outnumbered the chicken as a host country as well. Yudu Alliance scored a big fat chicken with a huge number of eliminations. And they scored it in home ground, opening up for Yudu Alliance, opening up as a representative of Malaysia. And the crowd goes wild. You can hear the cheers there, supporting their home team. Oh, I wish 
with that. <laughs> We're supposed to go there today now. <laughs> but you know what? One thing that I really love about the players when they're having a bit of a downtime, they have this magnetic whiteboard where they pasted all the teams in a magnetic small button and just put it on the map. I love to see when they're discussing between themselves. But when it comes to the chicken dinner just now, you know, Lions setting the tone for the grand finals. The bars being set is going to be Anik Look with seven eliminations, over a thousand damage as the start of day one of the grand finals itself. Wow, that and also seven eliminations for himself. Adelu still proving himself to be one formidable fraggers in Southeast Asia. We've seen him for many, many years now, and this guy just ain't stopping. <sighs> I don't think he's going to stop anytime soon. Now, you do know, Lions are going to be one of the teams that's most consistent out of all the Malaysian teams down there, personally, for this season. They keep on growing. There's no limit for this team in the ceiling. They're breaking through it. And when it comes to Adik, look, that's... He looks, might, he might actually look very naive and innocent, but when it comes to the game itself, he's furious, he's ferocious, he's just hungry for more. Yeah, he's just a totally different person, yeah. And look at this, he only received 41 damage, so not only he's able to put out the damage to another opponent, but he's also able to evade or stay away from danger by himself. And look at the match recap here. Here are our top four teams from this round. Obviously, we have Yudo Alliance getting his chicken dinner, Vampire Esports, we have Team X, and we got Face Clan. Surprise, surprise, maybe no Indonesian teams in top four. It's a bit too early to mention that. You will see the rise of them. That's what's scary about the Indonesian team. Sunhawk is just one map. It's just the start of the day. But here comes a bit of a highlight at the start of a great fight. Yes, and uh, these are the best moments. And we started off. Hot and fast between Boom, Esports, and Xavier. And a look at the reaction by Boom, man. They ran into the Xavier first. The Xavier tried to put them out. And it looked like the Xavier had the upper hand because they were at the high ground first. But somehow the only one from Boom is able to counter back on the defense by the Xavier. Oh, uh, Gig Fam, surprisingly, they have a hard time to actually push through here. Well, a lot of teams do so. They love to take those high grounds at advantage at first, playing an open field with no uh, sort of a compound. But they do work out for everybody if everybody thinking the same sort of execution. That's why Ham's point is forced to take a bit of inside. Great, but didn't turn out so well. And this is where the circle went away from all these teams, including 7-9. We did not have Silka advantage, and at the same time, there were a lot of people stopping them from coming in. So it became a very difficult round for a 7 9. But then again, like what everyone said, it is, uh, it is, um, well, um, it is just what it is. That's true. Trunk, face, kick them. I wouldn't say it's a very action complex sort of map quite early so everybody's kind of tipping their toes or just dipping into testing out the water not being brutally uh honest about their skills just yet so this is going to be the first on not where there's not much actions in the early of the stage but we see a lot of effort being put in by you the alliance with that shout in the very ending but when it comes to the stats nothing can actually take away you the alliance when it comes to the numbers but look at the uh, circle here because there is a quarry there right so when there's a quarry like teams that are across quarry they need to cut across and it became very difficult so teams like a boy teams that pick mine had a hard time actually coming out of quarry itself Unless if like you're already on the right side and quarry is not an issue for you, then that's absolutely fine. But uh, let's look at the points collected in this round. So Euro Alliance collected 12 eliminations with the chicken dinner. That's 22 points in game one. Do you think it's possible for us to get a 20-ish eliminations once more in this tournament? It's so hot, it's so rare to see it these days. E yeah, even um, when I was at the PMCL, 
the the highest was also 17 we didn't make the 20 so far so far that is so i guess that's like the current trend right like the the high number will already be like a 17 18 if it's a 20 it's an extraordinary number i guess yeah i, I mean that's gonna be out of out of the world number entirely it, it comes to the 20 ish it's so different back in the day it just show how much pubg mobile has progressed for the couple of years now but when it comes to the second page not so great for Void who happened to be a one of the best teams during the league especially week number two but it seems like they're having a bit of a hard time to find a fitting when it comes to the grand final some teams are late bloomer but we don't have enough time when it comes to the grand finals it's like only three days all there is well now it's time to change your mind right about letting go the first round <laughs> This game, <laughs> this game flies by. Yeah, I mean, now, now we're like what? Um, let's see, seventeen more games to go. So yeah, um, it's going to be really, really tough. Not, I, I don't know if anyone can pull off an alter ego again like last season. Honestly, at this point, with this kind of gap early on, with the, the bonus point for the grand finals, quite a huge difference, I must say, compared to all the previous seasons before. And not just that. Um, well, we do know for a fact if you're late bloomer, you're gonna be doomed entirely with the league, this season's format, everything else, and it's just no, they work out for late bloomers at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that probably I would still put it as a, a, a one off or an outlier, but you know, in reality, is that you never want to be that team that. It needs to depend on whatever happens with the other team and also leaving it to the last day to really do stuff. It's really, really scary. But of course, if I were to like flip the table, right? We, we have seen in the past PMGC Grand Finals that you can do super well from the start until the last, I know, the last day, right? Like, okay, technically the last day. That was uh, Star Wars Esports. Uh, they dropped the ball at the very last day. So, um, I mean, it could go either way, right? That, that's the fun thing about this game and that's the fun thing about if you have teams that can switch in and switch out. I don't really have a present, preference for it, but for entertainment's sake, of course, if there's a, a team that does that super comeback just like Alter Ego last season, then well, it's just good entertainment value. I don't think this was sort of phase one. I think it was a PMGC where phase kind of uh, in having a bit of a last minute push yeah. all the way. Yeah, that happened to them as well. But the thing is, for this season, we do have PMG, which can be totally different compared to previous ones. You don't really have a lot of PMG before. There's only one slot, by the way, for Southeast Asia. That's, that's going to be highly competitive for these players and compared to even the players down there. Straps and Adik look now. I, I do know damage wise, Adik look don't really uh, kind of knack to knack with straps, but when it comes to gameplay just now, both of these players were remarkable. Yeah, both of them had their moments, right? And of course, uh, because the position that the uh, Yudo Alliance had, so that naturally would give Adik look the advantage of. Uh, putting out damage onto other uh, players, especially from the rooftop angle that he had. Now, uh, looking at the uh, Top Gun Slingers, obviously, Yudo Alliance with the Chicken Theater, they came up on top, Vampire Esports in second, but the interesting part is that Geek Fam put a lot of damage out there, and I believe a lot of it was because of Snipes having that sniper tower angle that he could chew off other teams by just poking them from there. It's quite risky actually coming up from the side of that uh, sniper tower just now. Huge gamble on the side of Geek Fam, but well worth it. But unfortunately, we do have different names this time for Irango. We don't have Geek Fam, but Sam Nine is where they're farewell. Same goes for the side of RQ, but for Vampires and Yudo Alliance, well, they are one of the top teams right now, currently hot in their seat. But can they keep their seat warm or finally have to give it away to some other teams down there? Yeah, I'm also looking at the fact that the Yudo Alliance has got the first chicken dinner and in Irango, they have the, a very good record here. Four chicken dinners in the league stage. Hmm. Could this be a rollover of a type of performance by Yudo Alliance? But uh, while we discuss about that, let's check out the predicted drop locations here. Not as compact as Sandhawk. 
That's kind of true, since it's a bigger map. Plus, there are a couple of uh, nearby, how, how do I say, team second drop spot compared to all the others, like Geek Fem next to each other. I think FaZe and Geek, they don't really want to play that wide angle too much compared to Sem9, definitely have more options and side of Void. But for teams like Pick Me, look at that, Juggle Pool, I have a feeling we don't really have a lot of Juggle Pool circle just yet, but yes, now we've seen it before, they might be happening here once more. Yes, and uh, Irango is going to be playing in the next three matches, ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap up the day with the two Mirama. It's going to be the same sequence if you follow across the uh, PUBG Mobile tournaments in, in even in different regions as well. But I also want to point out that uh, that was the predicted drop spots uh, based on like the league stage, right? But mm. uh, there is... Uh, I also did some research about like some updated drop spots that uh, probably teams might want to go for. Uh, it rang, uh, inside of Pajinki, it's not as compact as what they've shown according to the research I've done. Um, it's supposed to be only... Uh, it's probably going to be the Xavier from, from my books. But the area that could have more than one team is going to be mid the base island with Boyne and uh, Pikmi. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, this is not really an updated version of the map drop for the team so far because remember we had 24 teams during the league stage now only 16 remain so there's a lot of vacancy on certain spot that's not being touched by any team just yet if they are being pushed an example like they don't really have a good start in any of the early drop, drop points now i'm not surprised the next couple of wrangles some teams will start to change their drop spot quite early on just to get a, a tone of first day and try to make sure they're consistent getting all the points out there even though it's single digit or double digit you have to have a point every single day yeah so you cannot let go of points right at least you have points every round at least at least although we are talking about the championship though it has to be a lot of points ideally and also we are talking not only about the championship not only about taking out the trophy but you pointed out right the slot to pmgo that's going to be played in brazil which is going to be i think it's going to be like next two weeks <laughs> <laughs> and for, for, for the one that fasting right now, it's not even uh, Eid Raya time yet. It's not even the celebration of festive season yet. They already have to fly over to Brazil at that point. And now that's going to be so, so tight schedule for all the players down there. Imagine, if, I don't know if it, if it considered as a reward or punishment that you don't get to rest despite you winning this. Well, let's see if it's a reward or punishment that we got these team names predicted by us. So, mm. well, you got one already. Oh, okay, not bad. Not a bad start. I mean, I, I think uh, for both of us, like, uh, we, you got, who got chicken just now? I think it was you, you realize? Realize, right? Yeah, I, we got one. I have a feeling yours might hit very soon as well, especially when it comes to Rango. I have a feeling Vampire might actually hit it in Mirror. Yeah, I'm kind of hopeful for that though, kind of hopeful for that, you know, we don't we don't want to be branded as the casters kids, you know, we want to keep it, we want to keep it real here, okay, that whoever that we predict is going to be pretty good, but uh, of course it's up to the team to really put in the performance, right, and as we look back at the stage, the teams are getting ready. Now, uh, by the way, <laughs> one more thing about talent, right, now we're hovering around uh, Boom right now. Now, I want to speak about talent because there's two players. Lynx is going to be the veteran player. There's going to be Linux is another new player, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be... I'm not sure if are they brothers or not. But apparently, the names are so close. It might confuse us sometime. But another thing that I want to mention once more, it's going to be... I'm surprised that Boom is not rotating or changing their player roasts every single map this time. <laughs> Yeah, instead, Araki is making the swap, right? Hex us out, no mercy in. And yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe the whole swap a rule thing is only for the league stage just to like make people like guess what are they going to play and so on. Oh, that's what you high's parents, by the way. Oh, that's his brother, that's the mom, that's the dad. It looks Shout exactly like you high. I know, right? Especially the hair. And obviously, Boss Tommy, very famous on social media, especially when during week one and week two and maybe other weeks as well. <laughs> now I watched, uh, I saw Sly DV and remember the uh, one of the videos where Sly was super angry that one and tried to, you know, educate the players about regarding their decision making. 
what went wrong, what went right and everything else. It's going to be tough for the coaches. It's going to be back-to-back -back analysis for the team coaches and management on the coaching staff. It's going to be a lot of work for them. But speaking of Sam Nine Yihai, very promising play indeed. You know what? Whatever it is, it's amazing content. <laughs> whether, True, I agree. Whether, whether it's, I don't know, man. I don't know whether it's made for content or whether it's not made for content. It's still amazing content. That's Papa Moss, by the way. Shout out to Papa oh. Moss. Yep, he's and, the uh, dad of Snipes, supporting oh. his, his kid, obviously. So many, so many clans out there. We saw so many uniforms and jerseys. Also, Cairo is a. Host slash our Malay or BM channel caster as well. This is going to be the Tachibana twins, where so many drama happening between these twins. And we know they're going into procedure, leaving BTR now back to us. BTR, and where are they? They still play brilliantly, like how they used to five years ago. They still have those edges around them, but. When it comes to this new era, it's very different compared to 2019, 2018 South Pop Mobile. Yeah, I would say that uh, in general, a lot of the other teams are just getting better, right? So the competition is uh, getting tougher. But the, at the end of the day, the reality of a competition is that only one team can be the champion. And that is the harsh reality of it. So um, it's not only about individually being really good or able to keep it up but it's also about how the other opponents are doing because everyone tries to take out each other but speaking about taking out each other they do it in Irango Giving props to the production I love this season's production value especially when it comes to the map by the end of each post map uh, post match right where you get to see the player's rotation i think it's so valuable for me because sometimes you don't really keep track with all the team's movement but when it comes to our first wrangle of the day we do have a bit a bit slightly northern sort of a flight path but it's all down towards the circle a lot of teams dropping themselves quite early because we do know juggle pool happen to be quite famous in this map and i just want to point out that uh, for vampire esports they have Two different drop spots depending on the flight path so it's something that they actually have been doing for like a couple of seasons including the league as well uh, so if this kind of flight path they will drop it to sarki if it's like the uh, lower side flight path they will go to somewhere like a primos or even like uh, more like a primos i want to say very clear because you know there's a different drama to it but the uh, primos is where they normally drop and uh yeah they're going to stay away from everyone by dropping to sarki first uh, don't blame them since the leak stage itself a lot of circle happen to be on the northern side or just on the line of just now and now here comes again this time nobody happened to be taken stalbert quite vacant kamishki emptied out severely taken by morph but those happen to be on the northern side this is great news because they don't have to fight in the center of a map which is going to be the southern side of a circle they don't have to pass through those jungles yeah, the only team that uh, used to like to always take a stopper is uh, Playbook Esports. And in case oh, anyone, you missed them, they're on the other channel. They will resume next week, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, so no Playbook Esports. I guess no, nobody else really likes stopper for some reason. Sometimes, you know, when things happen to be desperate for some team, that's going to be a sort of a runaway point for them just to hide out for a bit. Just to, you know waiting for the right time to pick out and waiting for the war to come down outside down there if they need to just avoid those unnecessary flights early on that's where it's sort of an emergency exit for some teams but speaking of emergency xdx trunk don't really land himself on anything just yet yeah so stx uh different drop spot for them and i guess it's also because of the uh, flight path so they're going to stay out of uh, those long drops. And there's always this strategy about dropping early, right? That I kind of noticed with some of the teams. They like to drop like... They have different drop spots. Default different drop spots. And they will drop whichever is the closest. Because you want to save as much time as possible when it comes to looting. And making the first move to make the rotation. Wherever the circle is. So... So for the example, like uh, like Vampire, distance is one thing, but the advantage of dropping first is also another consideration. 
that's true, I agree, especially when it comes to vehicles, where it's kind of tough to land any vehicles for yourself if you happen to be dropping quite late down there, unless there's no more other option for some teams. But speaking of which, we're not having any casualty just yet, so I'm not just... As per usual, a lot of them taking their own drop spot and just taking their sweet time to loot up because the time is on their side. So everything happened to be very peaceful and calm. It's like everybody just happened to be playing a survival game. Just you're not building buildings and just trying to find things. Finding food possibly. Oh my god, not there. <laughs> oh man. I wish we can go to bazaar now. Well, take two hours left. <laughs> well, at, at, at least you have Mr. Manager to do the buying for you. No, I, I, can't, I can't ask I'm my cooking. cats to do the buying for me. It doesn't work that way. And we should train cats. What else cats useful, right? I mean, cats must be having a purpose in their home, right? Yeah. We can train them. Have you watched people train their cats to talk? I wouldn't want like, that, you know. I would rather train my cats to mop the floor. I would love them to pick up some rubbish, like, you know, just dust away all the stuff. It'd be great. If only we have a monkey. I think monkey is more useful than a cat right now. <laughs> okay. I know what Hi. you're getting next then. I know who's being sent off as a trade. It's like, I'm going to trade you for a monkey uh, now. I, 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 I got four to trade and I'm like, I wouldn't mind trading one of them. <laughs> yeah. Which one would you trade? Probably the, the one with the longest fur, but speaking of the longest, not the shortest time to survive just yet. Razy, the shortest time to survive. Boom! Happy to be sacrificing uh, their one member. It's sort of a ritual thing for them, but they managed to get good marks later on. Oh, that was a nice quick one by Snape. One of their young, new, amazing talent for RRQ. They brought them a lot of eliminations, especially when it came to week one. I mean, where did this guy come from? It's like he came from pretty much like, like, not from another pro pro team, not another A lister, but he came into the scene. He came straight into RRQ, and he has been showing an amazing performance for them. I agree. I mean, Snape out of nowhere just pops into the scene, just really take away all this high rex, and you have to be performing quite well the same goes to side of pygmy pygmy is like nobody knew them back in the day it's not even the last pms so they are actually tier 2 team back in indonesia and when i ask other coaches of indonesia team what they are curious about pygmy they all want to know how they made a turning point from second tier team suddenly one of the top five one of the top five best teams in this PMS, how did they manage to do that? Maybe the coach, but the coach told us it's all down to the players, and the players put a lot of effort in it. Yeah, I guess uh, one one thing about Big Me is that uh, they do have experience in uh, PMP Indonesia before, and uh, after that they joined like other international third party tournaments, so they gained a lot of experience there, and I guess that's what contributed to their success uh, so far. I mean, not too bad in the overalls. Uh, for Mob GPX, now uh, defending the ground against the uh, double PMWI champions of uh, Vampire Esports. And I guess uh, that's a signal for the vampires to not uh, come any closer. Yeah, but Yuri will chase their tails for it. He's not letting them go, not getting them any sort of room to take the leash off of Yoru. Still chasing so closely behind. The spot of stone. Tony K is there as well. Now the terrain won't hide them that long if they happen to be climbed up. Yuri is not persistent. He knows for a fact there are some fights that you need to back away for the better, but uh, it's gonna say different entirely for Morph. They're definitely hungry for kills here. Yeah, well, it looks like they're gonna play a defensive stance for now. Instead, vampire esports. You did mention a lot. Pick me. Now they'll meet up with each other. Vexi in trouble. 40% health and they were going for the pursuit because they know oh. he's low. Vexi goes down. This could be the first blood for Vampire Esports. Stunner has got punctured out in the very last minute. Drifting into the open. In fact, nowhere to be saved. Tony K finished him off with a mini 14. But Shrubs on the other hand tried to circle them around. Hoping they can finish off the entire team here. But Jabranki 
giving a bit of a warning sign. Don't come near us. We are ready to fight you despite we lost one member before. But when it comes to the circle, I don't know what happened with this season. It wrangled this map entirely. It, it laughed so much on Yes Nine Pliana. Well, looks like this time it loves to go up north in between Saverni and Starver. Mm. Of high ground elevation there on the side of Starver and Sam Knights on top of it to so the elevation advantage. We're back onto Vampire Esports within the circle, but they're still moving. Vampire moving a lot. Normally they have to play from the outside of the circle in, looking for fights, but this time. Uh, no clear target of uh, fights that they can take hit on. But Sam9 has one against RRQ. Around the Gondola area, Sam9 do have a bit of an upper hand. Since those elevations will work well for them. But it's going to be a third party possibly coming up very soon. RRQ and Peko try to shoot them from the side. Going for the uh, totally blind spot. But there's talent behind them. Rap faces shooting on top of Nepeko. This is not great. He has to be built by the rest of the team. At RRQ, no mercy. He'll be left stranded. But at least he got himself some days here to run away and get away from this chaotic situation. On Sam9, I do hope those buggy will still work because it's not the best place for them to just chill out for now. Well, at least uh, it is still an okay scenario for them since they managed to save Yuhai. But on the other side, Sam9 bumping into another team. Might see a skirmish here anytime soon as Low Yu starts to fight against Alter Ego. Take it up, Boys Hill, as their first or make that a second point for Sam9. Yu are pretty low himself. Don't have any sort of first aid. Rosemary might charge straight into a Thanksgiving Day because they are running low for Sam9. A lot of them being knocked down early on. Then Rosemary might just freely get away out of this. Maybe out of full squad here. He jumps down, he pop Ooh. over, and Rosemary easily got one. Spotted out, finish off. Penny, it will be next. He's giving away his position. But Rosemary will be backed up by the rest of Alter Ego. Slick move there by the double M weekly MVP during the league stage. And Rosemary might get you high. You high's in trouble. He got it. There's going to be another point here in the pocket of Alter Ego. Now, Sam9, only as Kenny, who will go as far as possible from this area to hold up for positioning points instead. There's Mary eager for more. Sam9 just happened really unlucky day and unlucky start for their wrangle. Happened to be bombed into so many teams in the process of migrating from one compound to the other. That's going to be left with only one player here. Get Fam and Lamborghini. Guy Zavis, Izzy make a bit of a U-turn, but the moment you U-turn, there's going to be another team waiting behind to be doomed. Long range there, by Gig Fam. And of course, we've got Snipes here, tanking out a little bit of the blue, but he should be okay. But what's not going to be okay, because the circle went up to the high ground of Stauber. Hiking out is going to be hard, but focusing on back on the side. Pink me, secures another point. From... And Jabranki, visited by Voin. Maxis is there. Here comes the Nate being tossed around, playing around the corner, ring around the rosy, drawn with a DPS, and hopes to make a comeback. But both happen to be open fire at the same time. Zeta and Voin just gonna finish off Pygmy, leaving only one more player left. Where is Zeta? Mm. I guess he's, uh, he's left behind. Okay, maybe he's together with his other teammates, uh, trying to save each other, providing extra cover while Key goes in to look for the next spot. And he found a good one here. The warehouse, elevation, kind of nice to be there. Uh, the for baseline, nice to be on top of RRQ. Speaking of RRQ, they don't really have to worry about FaZe so much because FaZe kind of distracted with Alter Ego from above. They do have a compound. On the side of face, not so much covers for them. They barely got space here. Quite in the center of attention. In the middle of a slope around the gondola. Where Mela only have smokes with covers. Mormon on the other hand. He might look playful. But when it comes to the game here right now. Things are a bit rough for face. Well, speaking about rough. It was a rough first round for DZ. And now it's redemption time for them. Up against RRQ. Taking the high ground is Levis. It's going to open up the space. 
trying to scout out information as well around that area, but no clear place to be at. Lamborghini falls to Yummy from Boom. Hansons. Tracking down the Savis, Levi. He's going to be in Taurus, spring around. Now I'm going to clip on one. Quite risky what FaZe is playing right now. Too many teams on top of them, but Levi! Oh. The moment he jumped down, out of nowhere, there's going to be Axel of Talon. Just shot him from a four. Ooh, another tough round here for the Xavier. Two tough rounds in a row. Cannot afford to lose games just like that. But look at this. Everyone's trying to get as high as possible. But the further they go, the bigger their risk of bumping into other teams. Axel being sneaky as he can be. Jabranki only got himself one small shack. Purposely leaving the door open. Letting people know there's nobody here because the door being open. Somebody somebody left here. And that's how he played mind games for the side of Jabranki. It is in the last play of Pygmy trying to play a survival and try to last as long as possible. But this is where the circle will shift again. We'll go to the side of Stalbert. Actually, he the only one on the northern side. But Vampires fighting the blue and taking out Morph. Last play at the same time. I have to do it quick right now because the soldier is all the way down south. Vampire Esports on the outside still. And more TPX is in front of them. They might be looking for revenge. Looking over the utilities of Vampire. Stone has five first aids. Should be able to take out the blue. But only game only has one. But whatever it is, he will want to secure that point. But unfortunately, no. Yoru went out to the blue. Oh, Shraps as well. Barely got enough. Zay Morph not happy when one of his teammates be taken out earlier on. It's going to be Shraps. Bit of a revenge shown by the sort of morph here. Straps cannot hang on. One knocked down. The other managed to escape in the very last minute, which could be Stone and Tony K. Also, Newsy managed to climb up and try to lead them at the front. They barely got enough here. Trying to exchange a couple of first aid and mat kits. Morph trying to tail out vampires about their movement. That's going to be Newsy managed to get into the center quite safely, but northern side. Boom. Face fighting all over the place. Oh, here we go. Zeta right in front on the high ground. So Franky taken out easily with the DBS by Zeta. Definitely not going to let that point go. Zeta might want to let his teammate go as well. Let's see what happens to Maxis, but Maxis being shot at. So Zeta does not have a good clear space to save him. He's going to let him go for now. Kenny will take the point. From the pan to the fire, now smoke our vehicle. The data will be shot down by Gig Fam. Izane spotted out Zeta on the other side of a map and it exploded by itself. Voin eliminated at 14. Will hurt them when it comes to the overall standings. They barely got enough points here. Yeah, now they're at second last place with Morph GPX still alive and able to overtake them. But speaking of Morph GPX, now we have them on screen against RRQ. Zero, 10% of health left the moment they landed. RRQ will stop them. Tony K, now try to save Stone. But problem is too deep in the blue and BTR just marching in from behind. Tony K have to leave. He doesn't have any choice now. And sucks his spot him out in the very last minute. We'll have to sacrifice Stone for the greater good. But the Blazers start to clip in. Alter Ego around the other way. And Vampires. Where do they stand? There's so many teams around them. There's almost nowhere to go. Just look at this. Because they came in later, like... Very safe enough for them. They've been circling around for the longest time trying to find a good space, but nowhere to go. But maybe they can find somewhere in this area. Yeah, that should be good. They can still use their vehicle as a barricade. Maybe only worried about the talent. And uh, probably even have no choice but to split up because there's not enough space. This mountain is so beyond comprehensive. Look at every corner. There'll be somebody hiding there somewhere. It's going to be a really slippery slope for the side of Rap Face of Turn and spot it out vampires. Vampires like, how did they, when do these guys actually came, how did they end up here? They saw nobody early on, just wanted to rotate around there somewhere and just happened to be somebody lurking around that corner. Anyhow, Team Flash on the other hand has not secured any elimination point just yet, they've been quite so far, trying to be safe in the circle. But they cannot stay quiet no more since they're big sandwich with the three teams out there. Wow, circle went down and look who's in it. Udo Alliance still with the circle with the compound at this stage. 
Alter Ego finishing off a couple of members of the Team Flash. And now it's their turn to move, but I expect them to need to fight even more as they're on the edge of the northern side of the blue. Huang. XTX is right across and he needs to get into the safe zone. He doesn't care about the rest of the team. It's all about survival as long as he can stay afloat and try to make sure he got himself the top five. That's going to be more than enough for him to provide and contribute to as a point for the team. But all right, you what a big nip from... What? That was insane. Stolen away by Austin as well. Oh my god, ROQ. That was such a tight position to start with. Man, but it's even tighter now for GK. Two players for Face Clan across him. Man, like Momo cooking up their own name. GK has nowhere to go. But yes, his other teammates still active and still alive. One of them managed to get into the circle. That could be a marker for Team Axe to move. Same time, Ventores on the other side. Trying to take down the members of uh, STX. Break. Got away. They should be fine for now. Quite greedy here for a moment. You can see all the views you can get from those vintage points. But Sem9 being eliminated next is not 77. Don't worry about that. It's going to be a bit of a number issue. But Trunk from STX, he managed to land one big grenade. But the problem with XT Act, they don't have enough people to fight against so many full squads and including Yudo Lance and Boom around the corner. Now Gig Fam and Boom trying to hike up their way into the safe zone. But XT Act strong spot him. Ow! He missed and whip on that. Oh, that's detrimental for XTX. But still Yummy secures that point and now STX. Break! Coming in. High ground advantage. Cooking up this one nade. Low toss, and they're coming in for him. You gotta be careful of that name. Break! Fighting back, not gonna go down without a fire match. He's good at one elimination point now, healing himself up and follow up from boom! So to make him go boom, boom, boom. If that actually a big clutch coming up from the side of STX, I have to. I have to say, we really need to fix that weapon. <laughs> Lucky enough, it didn't actually turn out how it's supposed to, but boom! Still taking the top three. Now, despite the starting off today as the most uh, points coming up from the side of League, but they've been pushed down by Vampires, so we're left with only one more play. Alter Ego still have a tree. Got himself quite a huge amount of eliminations up there. It's going to be six for them. You do Lions, surprisingly, despite they got themselves circle, still have zero points of kill. Time of a five shooting. Try to get a member of Talon all the way on the other side. Talent kind of squished between two teams at this moment. Misery keeping an eye on the rotation. Snipes just right below him. Snipes cooking up that nade. I wonder who's he aiming for. But the rest of Geek Fam, they're on the other side, so they're quite split up right now. Teams so, so close. But the zone will force them all to move to one direction. Geek Fam being gatekeep so hot, but it's not Talon. Boom, barely pumped in life. Look at the. Angles open up by the side of Vault uh, BTR down there. They are fanning out so what this crap. Quite risky, but they're taking the domination of the southern side of the circle. And it's quite smart if you ask me. Yeah, I mean the teams really need to maximize their intelligence now. Now that the circle has shifted and there's still so many teams locked out on the outside, like what you can see here on screen, including out the ego with Rosemary having three eliminations by himself right now, healing up. You do allies, not all of them in the circle too. They need to get out of here as well. Alva, barely playing around with the smoke. Mormon spotted out rat face. Talent didn't work out so well now since they lost one of their biggest frag out there. Rat face knocked down. Damn root spotted out news. If Empires, that's going to be one of the teams to be eliminated quite early. This fight he got himself first will be pushed down as oh. long as Boom survives. But a big nade out of nowhere hitting face in the face. Wow, face in the face. I like that rhyme. Let's see if another rhyme can happen here. As a talent still doesn't want to let them go. Face Clan, though they have the elevation, they do not have the circle. And they are right in front of the blue. And at the same time, the blue is closing in. Face will be forced to go down. And that's where talent will need to defend. Mizzy tried to pick up on Axel, but here comes Mela. He tried to force a push, but... Wait a second, who else actually is shooting against FaZe right now other than Talon? Mela straight on the ground on his knees. Here comes the, the awkward angle coming up from below, but can they land those shots? 
Linux spotted out Ventura's in a trouble moment. They didn't see this one coming from Tell them. They thought they can take it through, but things being ambushed. Oh. And it's done. The whole squad's gone. Just like that, active move here by Talon. Surprising face, man, taking him out at number six and one elimination point. And now Talon, that's it to move down. They should have enough space because now Alter Eagle is busy with Yudu Alliance. Leo from the high ground securing that point. Jimmy following up to his side of Okta, finish off the entirety of Alter Ego possibly. But down to only three teams left, which are going to be make it four. Gig still have a two. BTR still having a tree. Nobody's touching BTR at this point. Nobody's even spot out BTR. The only team coming up from the southern side and taking half map control of the circle by four. Talent on the other hand trying to open up and try to carve their pathway towards the center. But it's so difficult with a three way wall going, going on the northern side of the circle. BTR team to surprise others towards the later stages of this game. Gotta keep an eye on that. Aizen, looks like they're gonna start off right now. Zuxi getting Aizen actually, but they also reveals their position. Now, Yudo Alliance to focus on the BTR, but because they know their position is compromised, they're making moves now. What prepares themselves for stage 7? Oh, Randa taps in the smoke. It's so close to me uh, hitting on uh, Misery. Damn root leading out. Three eliminations by Lennox Saxel on the other hand, trying to spot the rest of you know, the lines who happen to be having a bit of elevations compared to the ground of Talon right now. Not so great. I uh, did look coming up from off angle entirely. Spot out misery. Try to just stop the rotations of Talon. Try to make sure they're debilitated for now where they stand. But Leon's have to actually open up the space for you to lines. BTR now finally showing up in the very last minute here when it comes to the top three. Well, you don't like showing up as well because they still have a full squad. The only team with all four players intact. Going up against Talon now. Axel on the other side. All alone. His teammates are right behind him. Going in cover five from afar. Gen Force gets knocked down. Taken out by Adit Lu. The audience really love this ending. This is going to be a fun map to watch when it comes to this top three because all three teams very strategic and it comes how to play a chance. Their brain will not actually disappoint you when it comes to firepower wise. These three teams are not to be underestimated as well. Now Olio will be spotted out but at least for the side of Union Lions they do have a full squad compared to Talon and BTR now. Oh yeah, their man advantage might bring them this round, but the let's hold our horses because they still gotta do the business. Axel still pinned down on the other side. Misery and Linux broke up for fire from afar within the circle. Uh, the circle is not within Axel's reach yet, but Axel speaking about him, knocked down by Jimmy. Nice jump shot onto the ground floor by Jimmy OP. A bit of trading done between Talon and also you did lines, but not done, don't forget it's a three-way war. BTR still well alive. Satara is still there, down to last tick of health. Well, Talon a bit busy with their hands occupied against Yudu Alliance right now. 2v3, Yudu Alliance quite having a very good ground. Those elevations will actually give them so much room and advantage and as well as the view. But BTR, they're back to two players. Satara managed to pick the, the members up. It's going to be 2v2v3. Two two but you do alliance, how much longer they're taking this reign? Ooh, how much longer that could be answered by stage 8? Let's see how far the circle goes. Not too far away from you do alliance, but they still need to track down. And the team that is in the circle right now is going to be VTR. They got one person on the off angle as well. So you do alliance, they have to gather as much information as possible to know who's the one on the other side. Enough. We can see those very high and low of the grenade almost hit the entirety of Talon. But it's all about the circles. Right now, um, when it comes to percentage wise, you do lies do have more data of winning. More percentage, more numbers of winning. But at the moment, the circle shifted away. It's going to be the end for them as well because these guys don't know when to stop. Jimmy managed to take down on Talon. It's down to BTR versus you do lies. Oh, this is going to be a fun one to watch. Oh, BTR 2, you do Alliance 3. Are they looked out now by Satar? BTR fighting back, making it 2 versus 2. We got Olio here with the high ground advantage. And let's not forget there's still stage 9 where the circle will close entirely. Now it's the time for both teams to really plan out carefully. 
Dave, that old Leo is on a mission to save Ade Luke. And BDI is aware there's only two of them left for the side of the Union Alliance since one of them being knocked down. They are fanning out. Open up the angle left and right. Try to just corner them at the same time. Now, synchronization and moving in unison is so crucial for this part for BTR. But the biggest problem is going to be them not having those elevation advantage while Union Alliance back to three. They can actually have more space here. But down to Jimmy. If Jimmy can spot out Satar, then it's going to be easy for the side of Union Alliance to close things up. Yeah, Jimmy's the quiet one right now. I wonder if Satan knows that he's there. It's going to be a crucial road for them to sniff out Jimmy. And now both Adelu and Oli on the duo that's going up against Zaxi all alone at the lower ground. Zaxi is stuck behind the stone. He has not much space to work with. Oli with an AK waiting for Zaxi to come out. The advantage is of course the Udo Alliance. Oh, here comes mid explosion. Zaxi still have the fire. Satan trying to just find any angle that's going to be working out for him. But Jimmy still being quiet now with a python in Zan ready up with Satar trying to just randomly toss hoping it will hit Jimmy on then he will actually decapitate one side of you to Lions point but Saxi ambush left right below oh. it's gonna be one to one trade down to 2v1 here oh here we go can the legendary Satar do it 1v2 but Jimmy OP on one side Adelu on the other side Satar has both of them to deal with M4 and DBS. This will be the two weapons towards the end for Satan for BTR. But yes, no much space to move again. The man of Adesh is really pinning Satan down. Oh, this rock. These rocks are making it so hard for the players to visualize one the other way round. Jimmy with the bison knocked oh. down. Satan still fighting. Uh. And he just switched it over from the DBS to the M16 in the very last minute. Down to Mono to Mono. What a classic fight. Ali Glick versus Satan. He uh. missed. Oh. Chicken dinner for you to alliance. The whole drop up is real for the boys from Malaysia. And they took it upon them to take out the last ever Sata who had a really, really tight fight. Incredible stop day for you to alliance. But Sata, it was almost a miracle clutch for him if he made it out for the side of BTR. But nonetheless, that was a close ending for both teams. On the side of the Union Lions, you have to give the credit to this team. They're so intelligently pushing themselves to the sites where nobody can actually pick a fight against them, got themselves those elevations, and trying to work things around, not being quiet. They're very proactively trying to gain information as much as possible. That's teamwork at its best just now in that Erangel. Yeah, but gotta give it to Satai as well. He made them work hard for their chicken dinner, not gonna lie, although he was all alone there. Uh, looking over at the team stats, this time around, the highest damage dealer is none other than Jimmy OP. The guy who was holding down the lines while the revival was happening behind. Now, despite I see Kuroza as a favorite for what it looked right, but it's so hard for him to, uh, to see him to actually land on any perhaps that he uses. But just now, I mean, like, that was incredible. I don't know where BTR stands right now, but Yudin Law is definitely going to push himself to the top one with that double chicken by the end of this map just now. And that's going to be a great start. What's stopping them so far? Nothing. Oh, yeah. And even before this stage started, the stats do favor to Yudo Alliance having performing well in a regular during the league stage. And uh, Jimmy OP, of course, one of those players who performed extremely well even back in the day when he was with the DBD. Exceptional performance by him and he's still bringing it in with Udo Alliance. Udo Alliance, desperate. Even having such a great start, it just shows how much they want the trophy to just be back home. That's going to be in Malaysia where the tournament is going on right now in the live venue which is going to be around if you happen to be there, don't forget to find Circle Out because his place is nearby. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the Tropicana, Gardens Tropicana Mall, by the way. It's going to be ongoing until this Sunday.
Well, 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 match ranking with nine eliminations. Yudo Alliance back to back chicken dinner. 19 points this time. Nobody not gonna complain over chicken dinner. Well, as long as it will contribute to its their PMGO points, which is going to be the overall points, that's really important. Only one slot for all the teams competing, by the way, for PMGO for this season. Now, for the others on the other hand, Tal uh, Talon and BTR. BTR, surprisingly, despite they actually got themselves second places and now being pushed down to the third place because of how they are lacking when it comes to those elimination points. But a lot of five and six here with Alter Ego Boom, a lot of Indonesian teams on the first page. Mm, yes, uh, looks like they are calling back from the sign out round, putting themselves up there. But we also got a couple of Indonesian teams on page two as well. Looking over on the other end, the sad thing is that these days we are two rounds in a row. Two rounds in a row. Uh, not a good start for them. They only got one point out of two games. That's kind of true. That's going to be rough for them. But <laughs> I'm sorry for that, by the way, guys, because. Uh... All the Indonesian teams from the league stage actually qual qualify into the Grand Final. So there's going to be a lot of Indonesian teams on the first and the second page as well. So they do have the domination when it comes to the season. But you do Lions push all the way down for all the teams that happen to be taking the top five slot early on. With 56 points in the lead. That's going to be less than 10 points difference with Boom. And Boom definitely is not going to be happy about this for now. Well, that's the advantage of having the uh, hit start point, right? At least they still have that gap that is still doable with one round between them. But for Vampire Esports, also not that far. You gotta think about it. 41, uh, with the amount of games left, it's like 15 points difference. It's still, it's still very, very doable. But when it comes to talent, uh, that's where the gap is start to show itself. Uh, but again, it's still day one. So coming back is still real. I mean, day one is everything. I mean, map one is like, man, day one is everything these days. I guess, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Because I feel like a lot of teams already start warming up when it comes to the first rank of map, yeah. And when it comes to the points now, Morph, this is dire for them because Voin and Morph not really budging as much. Well, Voin did actually push himself slightly behind him before, but coming up from DX and Team Flash, this is surprising for Team Flash to be down here and not progress as much as we hope that will be a bit disappointing for me yeah amazing uh, first week but uh, week two week three uh that was, it was okay okay but uh yeah i i it, it feels like they're losing steam after the the week one incredible performance by team flash so i don't know it's really something that uh, for them to try to figure out and if you kind of think about it like some of the players used to play with shine like diamond so if you remember that time when Shyla Diamond played? They played to the last day to secure the start into PMWI that time. So maybe they could do the same with the same mentality, with the same experience that they have with the lineup. Yeah, hopefully that, that won't be the case because one thing for sure, we know the moment you open up the gap so much, it's so hard to actually fill the gap in between because we have so many few maps and not just that. With this kind of opening, especially when it comes to day one here, right? Even the, the, the points, with 30 points in the lead before Boom as a start of, uh, you know, the Grand Finals points now, already are giving so much stretch with the bottom 16. Now imagine the gap even further more with only one digit point before the team's on the second page. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that's why generally I'm not a fan of, you know, meeting to the end. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break here, take a little bit of a breather. We'll be seeing you guys after this for round number three.
We're back, ladies and gents. Here comes our first day of grand finals for the 2024 PMSL Spring Split with me, Chu, and also Sir Cloud as your classes for English today. Now we're finally back on the desk, but so far I think there's only going to be one team for predictions that everybody know of. Back to back chicken dinner, you do a lion's on fire. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But before we go on to more of our discussions, we'll pass it on to our host, Tash Faisal. Take it away. At Tropicana Garden Malls. And for those of you watching at home, if you would like to watch live, come on down to Tropicana Garden Malls here in Malaysia. Okay, talking about Malaysia. Now, Moji is one of the coaches that bought You Do Alliance all the way here. And PMGC last year, Today, your team has had an amazing start for two, our first day. Betul lah, Mazji, right? First day, fantastic start. Betul. Two chicken dinners. So, our first question, Jungs, I hope uh, you can translate for me nicely. How does it feel to play on ground here live in your own country here in Malaysia? Okay, untuk Moscow Ku, uh, kau jadi coach untuk Yudo Lions and bawa pergi PMGC and now today, first day, korang ada game yang sangat-sangat bagus. Uh, apakah perasaan uh, Mosji sendiri ataupun Yudo Lions untuk bermain di tanah air sendiri? Uh, first kali, rasa happy and rasa bersyukur sangat sebab uh, yang datang pun ramai. Walaupun bukan fans yang pun semua. <laughs> Uh, tapi Alhamdulillah lagi. Alhamdulillah kita orang bagi prestasi baik untuk uh, orang Malaysia lah. At least orang tak ada datang tengok uh, tim lain lah yang jika dan uh, tengok oh Malaysia yang jika lah macam tu. Uh, of course, I feel very, very happy to play in our home ground. And yes, uh, I'm very grateful that there's a lot of uh, audience here, uh, Malaysia audience especially. And yes, I feel proud that uh, whether uh, when they come here and they watch like a Malaysian team that get the winner in the chicken dinner, not like any other country. Fantastic. Boleh tak kita dengar suara daripada Malaysia untuk sokongan You Do Alliance? That's right, the home ground crowd, yes? All right, so one more thing. I think a lot of us are actually wondering, we are now, uh, for the Muslims, we are in the holy month of Ramadan. And uh, can you share with us any differences uh, when you're playing uh, during Ramadan, you can't drink, you can't eat, does it affect your gameplay? Okay, uh, seperti yang semua orang tahu, ni bulan Ramadan, and uh, ada tak perubahan ataupun ada tak beza uh, ketika korang bermain di bulan Ramadan ni? Ada tak ada efek apa-apa sebab tak dimakan, tak diminum, ada efek dengan gameplay tak? Uh, kalau dekat gameplay sebenarnya tak ada efek apa-apa tapi pada player sebenarnya ada jugalah kadang-kadang rasa haus sebab dia orang kena terjerit-jerit dalam semua tu. Uh, jadi kalau untuk gameplay rasanya kalau pro player boleh katakan 64 pemain ada dalam ni semua ada pro mentality. Kerja-kerja, main-main. Uh, jadi dia orang akan fokus, dia orang tetap cuma dia orang akan still akan ada haus jugalah. So tak ada beza pun sebenarnya. Uh, of course, it will affect our gameplay. Uh, it's because of, yes, uh, they, they need to communicate and sometimes they shouting and of course they feel thirsty. But then as a pro player, uh, they need to have their pro mentality and yeah, in order to perform still. But then still, I, I doubt that they don't feel thirsty. They must be very, very thirsty. I can understand, you know, all three of us here are Muslims and all of us are very thirsty right now. But I think the thirst from Yudu Alliance has been shown, right? First two games, winner, winner, chicken, dinner, fantastic. Number one at the top spot right now. Anything you would like to say to the other teams here today? Uh, okay, ada tak apa-apa nak sampaikan dekat, kata-kata nak sampaikan dekat tim-tim yang lain? Uh, kepada tim lain, yang pada umat Islam semua, selamat berbuka puasa nanti. <laughs> and good luck. <laughs> Uh, to all teams, I, I just want to wish you good luck and to all Muslim, like, uh, Selamat Berbuka Puasa. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. Happy fasting, everyone. All right, so before we throw to our casters, uh, Mos G, do you have anything to say to all Malaysian fans here today? Ada uh, apa-apa nak sampaikan kepada Malaysia fans? Terima kasih kerana menyokong semua tim Malaysia. Terima kasih banyak-banyak lah. Itu je lah. Tak ada apa-apa nak cakap pun. Uh, I don't have any. Uh, I, I don't have much to say. But uh, thank you so much to Malaysian fans that keep support. Uh, please keep support our Malaysian team. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This is our coach from Moss G. Uh, okay. Dah okay dah. Dah. Dah ready. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with our next game. Let's pass it on over to our hardworking casters of the day. Bye bye. Faisal's your new brother, whether <laughs> you and Jay's new brother. 
<laughs> yeah, I I'm glad that we have uh, what, what, what do you call it again? B Something B in B common. B yeah. B B B. B B. Besat one botak botak besat. Yeah, that's a B P B B B. Uh, translate as the uh, ball people associations. Uh, ball, yeah. ball man union. Okay, we uh, can't we talk about B B U. Yeah, ball man union. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, sounds better if you say it in the native language. <laughs> hey, ball is a new sexy, by the way. Don't get me wrong. That was amazing interview, by the way. Uh, hello, said... Mr. Manager. You know what to do next? I thought that like he hasn't done it <laughs> He before. did before. Please no. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like Kidal. If you guys know Kidal, by the way, oh. I couldn't sleep at night. Please no. <laughs> we shall not go there, okay? We shall not go there. Let's not. Let's not go there. Uh, if you know, you know. Sorry for that, guys. But speaking of which, the interview just now, Moskoku. Super hype, super thirsty. <laughs> Everybody's like dying for just a droplet of water. But enough, but we're waiting for another hour to break in the fast. But imagine being them still managed to get themselves double chicken back to back as the start of a grand final. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's an amazing start for you to Alliance. And obviously, they will be at number one in the overalls right now. But let's check out our player comparison here, ladies and gentlemen. And we will, of course, be looking at the star started team right now in terms of performance you do alliance with the most damage in match two and uh, hopefully uh they still keep their head in the game because when we asked about most goku whether he wants to say anything to us a fan he's not going to say much because they know for fact execution is still needed for the entire three days now the higher you go up there the more painful you fall afterwards if your hat's not in the game but so far you do alliance still having their composed composition and just fully calm just trying to be cool as a cucumber as much as possible try to make sure everything their strategy being laid bare slowly unfolding as the days goes by but for the other teams on the other hand surprisingly a team coming up from thailand like other than vampires now face clan didn't say too much when it comes to the grand final so far yeah you can see them uh, working hard as well with the amount of smokes that they use so that is also a side of effort that they try to bring in into a particular round but speaking about a particular round we're going to play again into a wrangle after this uh, before we head on to a slightly longer break to allow our players to break fast after this so if you guys uh, want to catch time to break fast you know it's going to be after this game but you did mention it right right like uh, vampire esports we didn't see them in action but i think that it's because the circle was unkind to them in the two rounds that we have seen so we don't get to see the best of Empire Esports yet. Uh, speaking of the break just now, I don't know whether we're going to have a break after match 3 or after match 3. We're going to have to wait and see for that because I think it's a bit... I, because it's going to be an hour for each match, it's going to be taking one hour, right? So it depends on the time later on because every Muslim will have to break a fast first. I mean, the moment you have... The thing is, right, we're talking about fasting here. You do line still fasting the entire lineup. If the moment you put some some glucose in your mouth, it's going to be a bit of a rush of uh, the the glucose, the sugar rush in your in your blood. Imagine if they play in that sense, and then you have those adrenaline rush of the game as well. These guys can go crazy on the second half of the day. Well, then we'll be looking forward to see because the second half of the day, based on uh, what you mentioned earlier on, a boom esports generally does better in Mirama, and if. Uh, Udo Alliance wants to overcome that, maybe that will be the right timing for them. Hopefully it's not too late since Miroma do have less of that compared to Irangle, but it does actually provide more long-range fights and you can actually get more uh, elimination in that sense because of how the distance between you and the team, if they can actually secure for Boom example, they can actually secure 220-ish elimination in Miroma, it's possible, it depends on their mood of the day, but regarding Boom, you know, they are it's so hard to find a team that's so consistent in every single week and so far i have to give it you do alliance being actually one of the most consistent team in every single week for indonesian teams they are ups and downs rrq sometimes boom sometimes point sometimes who else uh big me but when it comes to malaysia i think it's just you do alliance by far they're quite consistent compared to the others yeah i do agree as well even though boom they were number one uh, after tabulating all the uh, Sunday points but week one before that Sunday they were 
really struggling. They almost missed out on the first Sunday, but they somehow made it through thanks to the uh, last chance qualifiers as well. And that was the rise uh, towards the end. But I do agree with what you say. We talk about consistent from day one to the final day to even the first two matches here. It's definitely you do Alliance. Now, other than the Malaysia Indonesian teams, we do have I like Vietnam and Thai teams, right? But a Vietnam team, um, I think best bet is going to be coming up from the side of uh, Team Flash. But it's just not really working out for Team Flash at all since the last week of the league stage down to the grand final. It feels like it lost their momentum entirely being put out when it comes to the grand finals. Yeah. We talked about Team Flash earlier on, right? Like week one was amazing for them. Week two starts to slow down. Week three, then you kind of don't see the Team Flash that we normally see in the early weeks. And uh, today, it seems to be on the downward trend for Team Flash. So uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not them, right? Maybe it's just other teams just stepping up the game and putting a bigger challenge to the members of uh, Team Flash. I agree. But when it comes to finding the perfect angle for a very beautiful lady, you have to give it to our, our cameraman. And I do know those cameramen, by the way, they are awesome people. I think it's called uh, Abisham for the Jimmy Chip. There's also uh, uh, Iman. They know how to play with the angles of looking, finding people that's unusual in the uh, arena right now. But speaking of the last map, damage despite alter ego don't actually have that much point compared to unit lines who's consistently playing as a team a look at the damage app we still alter ego rosemary taking the leap but will it be the same number when it comes to the next wrangle let's hop right into it Well, if anyone wants to know, the uh, lady's name is uh, Isa, and she's there to support the Yudo Alliance for, if you know, you know, obvious reasons. But uh, <laughs> flight path now, from mid to the base, going up to shooting range. Different flight path this time. Early on, it was like a way, a, a, a northern flight path from Jogo Pool towards the right side of Yastaya. But this time, because of this flight path, it's going to change some of the drop spots, including Vampire Esports, who will be going to pre instead. And if it happens to be a Yasnaya circle, again, it's going to be a rinse and repeat sort of uh, demolition when it comes to the early stage of a map. But hopefully that's not the case. We have different kind of circle, make it more interesting, make it less predictable. It's so hard to see SMB circle. Maybe I think around the leak, maybe once or twice, that's the only one that we actually got during the entire three weeks leak last time. But as the X point dropping vampires as well, this is going to be the secondary drop spot from, uh, for some of the teams. But as per usual, we have to wait maybe during the second stage that we're going to have to see a couple of team finds. But in the early ones, it's all about if you drop at the wrong time and wrong place, that's all. Well, what interests me is that uh, Geek Fam and Sam9, they have a truce now for the Fairy Pier area. So it looks like it's going to be Geek Fam sending Damroot alone, the rest of them splitting up and they're probably going to loot there again, especially with this kind of circle, you don't want to overcommit to go into mid to the base because it, it looks like to be a high possibility of it being in the main peninsula. Yep, but Snipes actually halfway through there, he's halfway into the SMB while the rest of Kick Fam already got themselves three of them. Uh, it's actually around the main peninsula for now. But this is where the circle gets really tricky. It's divided to SMB and the main island 50-50. Now, nobody can read this one out. We never have a sort of a bridge circle. This is a platform in implemented in the game. So I assume that's not going to be a case here. But if a circle did and will do shift towards the south side, there's going to be a lot of trouble for so many teams. We do know there's going to be a couple of bridge camping. Some even resort to swimming. Oh yeah, that's where it will be really fun for us to watch. So let's see how it goes and how these teams are fair. Now, uh, there was an interesting strategy with this sort of circle, uh, the military base circle that I observed uh, during the PMCL. Uh, and it's pretty unique, pretty different, right? So when the kind of circle happens, so teams who do not drop in military base, majority of them, that is, 
they just fight in the main peninsula and they don't mind getting taken out by the blue because calculatively they can potentially get more points than trying to swim over to the military base island at some point and just going out without anything at all i agree it's going to be pointless if they don't actually get away with something in their hands especially in this case a lot of teams already in the main peninsula might as well just get grab a couple of them down while waiting for you drowning into the blue zone as well but the chicken that time point still considered as something now it's not as much as back in the day how much was it was it 25 now and the first few ones it was a 25 right then reduced to 15 and then down to 10 for chicken dinner points if i'm not mistaken uh, depends how far you want to go you want to go the <laughs> the three digit chicken dinner back in the day yeah that is that is crazy if anyone was Ascension. watching from that era yeah you guys know how insane one chicken dinner uh, would give that's why everybody played camping that time that's kind of true it was like especially when you have your candy and your candy is just heavily compound places a lot of people just hugging corners nothing happening at all so i'm i'm loving this kind of new format especially when we do have the last chance a stage right before having into super sunday back in the days we have super weekend where two days quite making a huge difference for the overall league points but i love the fact they reduce it to one super week uh, super sunday it just make it so much better so much sense like everybody have to do the best of one in a day yeah it's a it's a very tough format not gonna lie right and uh well that's the challenge to the teams, right? They have to work it out somehow. Whatever format that they're given, if they want to be the best, they need to adapt to this sort of format. And the format has been changing like um, quite frequently, at least for the past year. And uh, that allows like teams to feel uh, a refresh of the game, at least from a format perspective. Until maybe we see Vikendi coming back in. I don't know. <laughs> refresh and agitated because of how many how many systems that we have to actually think about for next season like example they've been training for this sort of format and then ch suddenly change it for the next season when they entered in it's like what what is this not the whole point at all what we've been training for now that's going to be the challenging part of being a pro player you have to be adapt uh so flexible very versatile adapting so quick that regardless of whatever the system change or how the formats change in time in every single season, you still can do your best. But speaking of the best, RRQ Ryu, happy to be visiting you do a lot. How double chicken back to back do have uh, a bit of gas quite early this one. Yeah, they don't have enough information of how many exactly are in this house if they know there's only two from euro alliance then they'll definitely crash it but because they don't and that's absolutely fine because it's still pretty early they'll let that one go for now and find somewhere else and looks like potato here will be their next checkpoint I assume it's going to be more than one team, hopefully. We'll be clash on top of that potato heels. It depends on the next circle. We're still divided into a 50-50. But there's a high chance we might end up right on top of the main island. Kick fam on there then. I don't see it. Um, yep, Snipes already rejoined, I think, with the rest of Kick fam. So all four of them have to be nearby. I'm not sure where's Audrey with this vehicle. Probably just going to mark around the perimeters where they're standing at this point. Trying to get keeping uh get keeping this out of a bridge but nobody's passing by as well so nothing is happening for now i assume you do alliance don't want to stay where they're at after the incident being visited by a couple of teams so they can assume more teams will pass by later on mm, but uh moth gpx they're playing it fairly safely this time still around the area of school which is not too deep within the circle um, they have not really parked themselves yet, but wherever they are right now, especially on the high ground of school, I do like this position. I think it's pretty nice. You get the elevation, you get to see the rotation of other teams. But for other teams, you got Sam9 here in action against Talon with U high long range, and look at the spread by Sam9. They are creating a parameter of their own. They are boxing in for Talon. This is not great for Red Face. We haven't seen the best of Red Face just yet. Every single time we see Red Faces being knocked down, almost being knocked down, being chased, being hunted down with these guys, it's so different if we compare it with back in the days. How, like, yummy Red Face, one of the most fiercest guys when it comes to hunting people down, they are 
the the prey. Uh, they are the one that's hunting people. They are the predators. They are not the one that being hunted. But it's so reverse lately. Now, when it comes to talent, this is the the, the lineup. The under the name of Van of Talent be actually being participating, and this is basically the first lineup of talent for PMSO. So I don't know. Do they need more time to synchronize within themselves? Yeah, but. Even though with a major overhaul in uh, Talon, they still made it this far into the Grand Final. So I think so far so good for Talon. But to be able to challenge for the championship, uh, they still need to find that X Factor. But uh, speaking about fighting something, the Circle moved out entirely to the main peninsula. So only two teams left in the main base island. That was the same two teams from the start, which is Void and STX. The so both teams going to take uh, different bridges. They're not going to clash with each other but potentially might clash on the left side with Vampire Esports, Jake Bam, we last saw them there. They might gatekeep point. A crazy shift, at least from the circle, taken all the way towards a Gaka region, like you mentioned just now. And so heavily crowded so far. We saw so many colors right on top of uh, that circle. And a couple of teams, possibly around four or five, will be rotating a bit later than the others. They can take their own sweet time if they're coming up from SMB because it's not going to be fair very well for them. I'm going to try to rush themselves right into the center, which already over occupied by most of the teams. Yeah, it's going to be really tight though because at this stage, Stage 2, moving to Stage 3, we still got 64 players intact. This is so far the most that we have seen in this stage out of today at least, out of the games that we have played. Now, coming back to Voin, so this is something that we kind of expect, and I think Voin knows this might happen. That's why Zeta is playing the scouting role, try to gather the information, but the question is, you got the info, what are you going to do next? Are you going to switch bridges? Are you going to swim across? Or are you just going to bulldoze your way through the geek fam uh, the thing is speaking of geek fam i have a feeling that snipes do know where he stands right now because he's hovering at the same angle as zeta is standing here and this is not great for zeta he might actually be surrounded by audrey right on top of the other hill i can see if zeta is clear as day now if only he moved just an inch or so but zeta will be discovered by the whole lot of geek fam that's not gonna be great that's not pleasant at all i promise you that being surrounded entirely i'm not where i'm not sure how about the rest of the other void going through this bridge but it's not best for them to actually cross this right on top of the road they have to figure a way into the main peninsula without getting themselves involved with geek fam here well here we go said i waited for the trigger and he will want to damn root the ideal geek fam down on his knees but he can't secure that point just yet. That we can still be safe. But if teammates go, it be taking a bit of a risk. They'll need to prepare themselves with smokes and also a vehicle to barricade to revive a dam root. Quite open. There comes Izane, figuring, trying to how safe his teammate. But Void, mm. the moment they open fire for Zeta, this is Thanks. where everything just go down the hill for Void. Even a bit of a drift. Void, this is not great. Snipes taking two down and they lost most of a man already. Half team done. Oh man, it's so hard for Void right now. But they still managed to kill that one point out of damn route. But they will lose two players. Thanks to Snipes. Audrey keeping eye on to Zeta, still on top of that bridge. Zeta, nowhere to go, obviously nowhere to hide because they know that he's there. Oh, MZ. DMZ, sorry. Can he actually save his teammates? They're scattered about, blues and closing in. Sometimes you have to abandon the ship, that's the best case scenario. But pick me here, it comes for more of our Q as well. Wow, this is going to be super merry. Oh, beautiful knockdown at the start. And now Zero defending his ground at the same time. Coming up from the other side. Trying to get a member of Big Me on the other side. And he will with an M4. Secures that point in the pocket. DBS games as per usual. It's all about around the corner. Who will overcook that? Oh, speaking of timing! A bit of trading done between Morph and Big Me. But Boo Boo Who. Hazel! Oh, Hazel! <laughs> What's the World War Train there? Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. They still got all four players, so that's amazing. But what's not amazing is for Boyd! 
And I guess we kind of expected this to happen. Geek fam, take them out. Then they will move on with life. But they lose Gamma in the process. Back on the Sam 9 out against STX. Opening up by knocking down GK. But the fire comes in for the other side by Trunk. Taking out Kenny. But the nade! Where did the nade come from? Explosion. It was just at the end of the radius of it, but still gonna chip down the side of Axe Axloyu, on the other hand, will secure these eliminations easily. Just knock one, knock two, and splat it out. That's gonna be easy two points for Sam9. They're still having a f not really a full squad, down to three players, but STX. So, i uh, still gonna fight head on despite his being alone down there. Oh, so us uh, gotta be super duper careful. Probably gathering information, but okay, look at this. So us as company on the other side as well. But we move on with the talent. Now with FaZe Clan in front of them. Circling around, trying to gather information. FaZe Clan in the compound still. Talent probably saw the vehicles, so it's not the area that they want to go with first until they gather more information. But at the same time, they've been pressured by the team shooting at them. And this is a problem when you don't have any angles that you can hold on to. Tell on, they have to decide. Face, take it. You want this combo? You have to force it in. They will try to force them out. Red face with a DBS taking on one. A bit of a trade, but BTR is there as well. Uh. Sam nine versus BTR. Face on there and trying to push on the entire after not holding their grounds, actually. But Face on this have to save Mela, but the DBS is no. not going to be a joke. Oh, we got Alter Ego here! Linux has to win the fight! Octa with the DBS with the high ground advantage, but he does not have the help needed. Now they're gonna swap in. Rolls! Rolls, Mary! Knocked down by Linux! But the counter came in for the other side. Misery knocked down as well from the lower ground. How far will we get to the point? And it looks like Alter Ego managed to win the fight, but they're not out of reach just yet. And the circle's not on top of them. But they need to move fast because Red Face is still there. He could still take them out with the snake. Oh, misery definitely lost in the woods on the side of Talon. They still have to get out from the woods because Alva and Alter Ego will try to rush into this very small compound that's left on the side of Talon. Will they still gonna fight head on? Yeah, they take a bit of a pull over and try to force him out, but Red Face knew this one's coming. He just ah. managed to shot on one. Not gonna be enough outnumbered for Talon. Quick recovery there by Alter Ego to take out Red Face, and now they have. An entry into the next stage at least. And back on the same night, we got Yu Hai on screen against Soas on the other building. Lower you picking up a Satar by a grenade elimination. And Soas now comes in with the close quarters combat, but nope, he's gonna go in for the vehicle instead. Maybe try to make a getaway, or maybe not. Just a reposition, just a fake, just to bait out Yu Hai. You are just casually taking that one out in the last member of STX, but he's not having the easier road either because he's the last member for 7-9-1 on the side of RRQ, still fighting against, against Morph. Last time we saw FaZe around here, I don't know what happened to that team, but Team Flash not going to willing to make a move just yet, but Alter Ego definitely have a bit of a gist about somebody's going to be there. They have a bit of a knacking, you know, feeling that somebody's watching them from afar, but on the side of Morph, Boo Boo Hoo, Hazel will be saving one of his teammates, but RQ do have the high ground, but managed to land those nade either way for the side of Maul. Nice nade by Bubuho, and he will secure that point out of Asa. He knows that someone's on the high ground, tries to get a good vision. While the other teammates move front, Bubuho plays the support role, and now he comes in to clear his teammate into the circle. No mercy, he tries to get away, but no mercy, bumps into D Savior. Not the place that he wants to be in at this time, but he's gonna win this fight, and he will! He will show no mercy to the Xavier! I'm sorry. A Lamborghini is like super excited, trying to surprise No Mercy with those frantic gestures just now going around the corner. No Mercy is just. Compose his server, just hello. And just spray it over. Done. That's it. Deal's done. But back onto us in the mid in the midst of the smoke, in the middle of the field of gut car. We do have vampires, not just vampires, there's gonna be three teams fighting for the same same objective to be alive. Alter Eagle spotted a vampires, boom on the other end. DX might join might just join in any time for now. Oh DC we're monitoring the situation. See what will they do? You must remember they have no mercy as well behind them. Rose player comes in with the spray, gets the knockdown immediately on the stone, tries to get on the trunks as well. And swaps still a okay, 50% of health, but Rose is not gonna let them go. 
now with the scope six times trying to aim him down but the building is just not helping them being pulled away by moves of team for this side of a circle the x do have the center of it with airdrop in between that's gonna be in front of kick fam where they're being pressured by your lines at the back alter ego vampires and boom now this is gonna be tight for this three team especially boom and vampires both fighting for that number one spot where you do lines actually not being in charge of this anymore stone close to being knocked down shots barely alive Team Flash out of nowhere now suddenly start to make a move against Morph if I'm not mistaken just now. Well, Team Flash, they need the elimination points in. So if a Morph GPX is their next target to collect points, they definitely need them in the bag. Now for Gig Fam, knocked down by Adi Luke with a mini 14. Isaiah on his knees now. Trying to find a perfect site for some of the teams in the middle of the ground, but we do have those still fighting on top of the slippery slopes of this hill. So zero more bleeding out. They barely make it out alive for Hazen Bubu who as well. Just managed to reset for a bit, but Team Flash goes to try to take advantage of this, but then nobody there's nobody left down there. So they need to make a move as the blues and will close. Any time now in less than two minutes later on, but Hazel getting himself on top of the mountain. Try to have a better angle about what's happening around them, where everybody's super busy on, uh, in the middle of the field. Yeah, gathering information that what he was doing, relaying back to his team. Now, Alter Ego still not letting go of Vampire Esports. Vampire Esports caught outside of the circle. The Zobo will arrive for the Vampire Esports soon. Boy Sail putting a little bit of pressure on the Vampire Esports. Stone knocked down. Shrimps has nowhere to go. Vehicle blown up. The zone. We'll arrive on the Schwabs. This is going to be the last ditch for Schwabs. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Nothing to write as well. He's barely alive here. Barely got enough for him to actually just keep on putting those first eights on top of him. But his leg was sticks up for Razy. He definitely will actually see this through. There's no UAZ or any vehicle working out for the side of Schwabs. He has to run forward. The only way for him to advance. But nobody's letting him go by easily like that. Look at how the crosshairs of all teams boom as well as, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be Alter Ego the other side. Hovering around to a side of Empires. It's all about timing here. Shops will have to bow out quite early. Then the rest of the team still survive at 10th place. we zero point round for the WPDMWI champions, Vampire Esports. They might lose this spot to... Alter Ego, if Alter Ego continues on, because right now Alter Ego has one of the most eliminations in this round. You can get the chicken dinner with a good amount of eliminations, they could potentially overtake Vampire Esports. But we'll leave that thought for later as they need to deal with Boom for now. But unfortunately, for the side of Empires, they didn't manage to secure any sort of elimination. This is going to be really hurting their overall rankings later on. And some now will be Polo Pursuit. At least they still secure four elimination points, but the circle was fixed for itself for now. We'll favor those on the northern side or the southern part. Now, we do have more teams on the northern side, so if all the Ego Boom and Union Lions are going to be favored here, yeah, and they got a touch of Rainbow Circle, it happened to be on 50 50 in between, but boom! They have to take care of so many things right now. Alter Ego breathing behind their backs. They do have Team Flash hovering oh! across the cross. That's going to be Alva. Done for Alter Ego. Wow, you blink and you miss a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Frenzy with the Road Rage to take out the last member of Alter Ego. Looks like Boom me Sports. They want a big recovery this time around. They want their number one spot back. But Team Flash... Won something out this round as well. Two elimination points so far for Team Flash. And they have some of the players moving into the circle with Guang being the support player behind. Team Flash spotted out by Boom. Yummy make sure that he will actually knock them down. And Boom still having a full squad. Same goes for the side of BTR. Not anymore as one of them being knocked down early on. And BTR is actually taking advantage against Morph who are fighting against the Blues. And Hazel and Boo Boo who being cornered left and right. There's no way out for them. Gen Force is marching forward right in on top of them. And Hazel! And that's mm. going to be the end of it. Out of nowhere, Loppa just shits out the DBS. Yeah, again, it's a DBS gameplay that gave them the win. And for Boom right now, playing by the edge of the circle, Yami is being saved by his teammate Razy. Same time, is being monitored by a Team Flash on the left side. And let's not forget, Yudu Alliance is not too far as well. They have two players so far, so Yudu Alliance probably going to stay put for now. 
Tim Flash still being a third party at the sidelines, while Boom happy to be hammered down between two teams left and right as well. While they're trying to fight their ways from within the smoke, just to try to get themselves in the center in the middle of the open field, how just everybody can see here. Now, UD Lions still consistently getting themselves in the top six. Now, can they score a hat trick chicken in day one of the grand finals? Well, if they can score it at this stage with two players, it is going to be insane. But of course, UD Lions. It's utilized we're talking about. What the players are they look, I believe, is still in the game. Can pull off wonders. We've seen it before. Okay, alright. So it's Leon and Jimmy OP. But think about Jimmy OP. Knockdown. I did look it's out of the game as well. So now only Leon attack them and BTR is onto him. Lapa have to fall back for a bit since the force coming out from the side of Boom is quite tremendous. While well, they try to distract with this buggy, making sure they will try to divide the attention of Boom, making it confused and managed to pick up the last member of Yudu Lions. Now, despite we talked about them being a hat trick, but still quite consistent in the top six in their third map of the day. But back to the side of Boom, can they come back taking a throne at number one by end of this map? Yeah, the big thing is that Boom is still here and they got five eliminations already. Looking good so far for Boom. And they are now collecting placement points. But Yami knocked down by Zaxi from afar. That's the signal for BTR to move. Then Force going in for the rush. Oh, did they spot the boom? They're actually trying to revive each other out. It was unfortunate by BTR. Lapa spot out. Razy frantic going to shoot down on Lapa. DX fighting against Team Flash. Seems like the Vietnam team are fighting against each other. Same goes for the three Indonesian teams. Just going to spot each other out. So nobody putting any interest towards Team Flash who's happening happen to be behind them. A boom. They're going to have to revive so many times. These guys working like zombies. Unwillingly to go down as easy as wow. we've seen so many times. Oh, look at this. Dominating. It's BTR. 10 elimination points already. Now, boom. Like what you say, the zombies are back. We got Razy here tossing a nail on the side of BTR. But at the same time, he needs to be aware of the circle. He's making his move as well. Together with Frenzy. Frenzy. Low. Razy low. Knocked down by Quark from Team Flash. Out of nowhere, Team Flash now happen to be showing interest towards the side of BTR. And boom. They're going to put a hole towards the side of their fight against these Xavier's. But... Young having a bit of a problem. The X do have this rooftop. They got themselves quite a wide range to cover themselves. Where the cross air will place for now. Lapa trying to steal away Kwong. While taking advantage of somebody else's hard work, they will try to make an effort to steal it away in the very last minute. Gem Force in the center. Happens to be, I'm not sure who's going to score this chicken. Full score on beat. Young by Boom taking advantage as much as they can. Yeah, boom! What's the advantage? How much do they have right now with Brazy down? They have only one active player left. BTR, so far it's the best chance of securing this chicken. They have almost about 60% chance of securing it. Boom is on the number 4 6 elimination points. Not too bad, but for BTR, this should be the chance to lock in the chicken. Dinner. Duo's working on the inside of Team Flash, make it solo for Flash for now. One being knocked down by the Blue Zone will not give more time for DX taking that rooftop. They need to push forward, advance towards the rest of BTR where they're at. But the thing is, I don't see the rest of BTR where they exactly their spot is. Because that's the only one that's revealing himself. Satar, out of nowhere, ambushed from the sideline, taking them in surprise for DX. They're walking straight into the trap where BTR already sets it apart. Eyes on his knees. No way for him to be safe at this wall because everyone's just so close to each other. BTR still has the circle. And then one player at an off angle on the outside. Zaxi keeping an eye on to Gosu. Gosu has nowhere to go. Parajin fires back on the Zaxi. Gets a knockdown. Uh, Parajin pushing forward to the side of Team Flash. The ones winning big here is going to be BTR. Only one member knock and they will revive any time now. And Parajin on the other end, trying to Ooh. crawl the other way. He looped that one big and nice. Straight on top of Lapa. Now Sata is calling out for Lapa to crawl over. Come over here, buddy. I will revive you. But at the same time, Levi is doing the same thing. And Parajin is screaming to a side of Levi. Come over this side. But the one that have nothing to lose is going to be Gosu. Which one will he pick? The left or the right crawler? Man, lucky. 
fall apart that this is still the previous patch, not the new patch in this tournament server. If not, if you crawl, you will bleed out even further, and you might not be able to be saved. So he has a second chance, but he got a chance, and Saxi will take his chance against Gozo. One more to go. It's 3v1, and they know where Paragin is at. All in on the Paragin right now. Paragin fires back, but Pachinko compromised, and obviously, it's going to be hard to fight again. Big Dodge, Red Alien, 50 chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, 15 eliminations. Now that's going to set the bar quite high for our day number one. 15 eliminations, total up the score, rounding up with the chicken dinner. That's going to be 25, the most for today, if I'm not mistaken, because we had 13 early on by the side of you, the Lions, double chicken back to back. But BTR, they are, they are just literally ready to go for the next one. They are warming up for sure. Yeah, Pikachon, a red alien, a rebrand from the red villains before, now back to the red aliens, the legendary name became the uh, PMCO champions back in 2019. Now, looking over at the stats of the players, when it comes to damage output, it has to be still Zuxi, the man himself. We do have the twin still play, Luxie as well, but it feels like they rotate in and out depending on the situation because I have to give it Lapin has been amazing here today. Look at the damage output coming from Zuxi and as well as Lapin. Same goes with the side of Gem because this is teamwork guys. Look at the average amount of the points, the damage being dished out by each of the players is like average at, at 500 or 600 each one of the players. Oh yeah, everyone's pulling their weight. Absolutely mm. right, absolutely right. Even when it comes to eliminations, right? Like, uh, everyone got eliminations for themselves, and like, even Lapa, who probably played a little bit more defensive role, that's why he don't get as much damage, still got two eliminations. So everyone's pulling their weight to bring in the most eliminations so far in the Grand Finals. Now, <laughs> I do know some of the chat. I have a bit of a battle between Saxi more than Rosemary, whoever more than this and that, but this is their time right now. I have to give it Saxi. The one of the OG players since like six years ago to maintain six years performance and still have the edge of it. This guy, I mean, this is incredible still. Yeah, not gonna lie, as an individual performance, definitely up there. It's a matter of winning a big big title again so a lot of fans are still waiting for that but while you wait for that to happen of course we we'll check out the uh, best teams from this round we got btr d xavier with parjim being the second last uh, player to stay alive we got a boom they're up there because they got a lot of eliminations and then followed by team flash with gosu play for placements towards the end oh i didn't well, I was hoping for more actions coming up from Team Flash and Diaz. Kind of missed them for that. But Boom, on the other hand, starts to climb up, back up. Now, where do they stand when it comes to overall ranking right now? Will they finally stand, stand at number one for Boom or BTR now slowly creeping into Yudu Alliance's spot? And will Yudu Alliance being pushed down? Because by the end of today, I mean, like, day one is not really important for them to whoever gets number one. But it's all about how much a big of a gap between the first and the top five but before that checking out the highlight what really happened in case you guys missed it
Well, 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 BTR breaking the streak of Yudo Alliance to get this chicken dinner and they bring here with us the uh, most elimination so far in a single round in the grand finals that is 15 so that's a golden number to beat now oh. Well, I'm still waiting for the 20-ish which is going to be a bit far-fetched but when it comes to DX and Boom, a lot of points are very similar tied up including for more than Alter Ego where Team Flash managed to score an 8 I'm not sure where are the rest. If the bottom at the first page just scores four, now that's going to be a lot of zeros possibly at the second page now. Mm, Got to keep an eye on that, right? And of course, the overall is where it matters though. But uh, so far, other than uh, BTR, uh, D Xavier, this is a good comeback for them. After two disappointing rounds, they scored 10 points in this round. So it's 11 points so far for the grand finals for D Xavier. A lot of force down there as well for Pygmy, surprisingly, when it comes to Grand Finals, have been shaken about that the battle scores any. And FaZe and Vampires, Vampires a bit of up and down, maybe we have to wait for Mirama, which is a bit risky for the sort of Thai teams, but Voin to be down here, this is surprising. Mm, yeah, with only one elimination, mm, and that came fairly early in this round as well. But uh, you put up a good point there on a vampire, and it kind of reminds me of uh, their previous performances as well. Like during league stages, vampire can be very good, but in the grand finals, they always have this—I don't know—some sort of a, a a poor performance when it comes to grand finals. But uh, are the points too far? Not yet. Vampire 19 away from Yudu Alliance. Oh, look at the overall rankings. Look how big a gap for now. Yudu Alliance. If you compare with this first, this is the first page on the first half of the first page and the second half of the second page here. The gap already half between these teams you do lines and talent already scored himself almost 30 points in a different in difference well boom not so much i have a feeling boom and btr anybody can just switch up and down here but it's down to vampires now that's going to be really painful for them not scoring any point just now for vampires they need to redeem themselves in the next map and looking over at the uh, page two looks like we have more gps coming out of that uh, dreaded number 16 to be at number 15 at least so that is obviously improvement the Xavier because of their 10 point round so they bring themselves to the first half of uh, page number two now at number 11 still 80 points still a lot of uh, points to catch up to but it's the Xavier that we're talking about they do have the experience of being the C champion Oh man, this is only the first half of the day, Cloud. We're down to like map number four of the days, but the gap between the first and the last is just so big. It's just a huge margin. But next is going to be hat to hat between these two players coming up from these savers. It's going to be Levi versus Zaxi. You're loving legendary players, but when it comes to elimination, not so much of different damage wise and contribution. Still, to it's more towards Levi, but unfortunately, it's just them caught up in the process of in the middle of a war soon did work out quite right for them hmm yeah and it was an open space towards the end right so it was kind of difficult but yet still BTR got the chicken dinner at the end and coming up with 2615 damage as compared to the Xavier this is a whole lot and of course that comes hand in hand together with their 15 elimination round sense of theme here set for the first place is going to be full red logo the rest of them do have a bit a tint of a grayish red i don't know why but it seems like a theme for the gunslingers at the top four when it comes to the match number three just now but so far still indonesian taking the dominations here yeah, well they do have all eight teams advancing towards the grand finals but when it comes to the back-to-back chicken -back still to give it over to you the alliance the standing strong still at number one spot still not be shaken but close enough be chased by btr and the other teams just beneath them but next is going to be a wrangle once more now this is where most of the teams especially the indonesian teams want to score this one yeah guess what looks like we're gonna go in for a back-to-back -back now we're going to go straight on to our final a wrangle right after this obviously it's going to start real soon now 
is it going to be a BTR back to back? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, right? Because all these teams are just so amazing. But what I would personally like to see is at least every country having their flag up here. That's kind of true. I mean, it's not impossible since we don't have the World Cup with us, so we don't have that much options, right? We do have only four regions. So it's not impossible, but it's just so hot for us to see any Vietnam team to score themselves a chicken. It's just it happens when it comes to the final day, usually where even though they can score chicken dinner, but the point won't be affected as much for the overalls. So that's usually the case in in that circumstance. Well, at least if you want to talk about trends, it, based out of the last game, we've got Team Flash and the Xavier towards the end. So maybe, maybe, maybe they can bring that momentum forward and finally score a chicken dinner for themselves. But I'll be a little bit more worried for the Thai team, to be honest. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't worry too much because it's still first day. They're always known for a bit of warming up to do when it comes to second day. But I do worry about Vietnam team more than the ties because it feels like they're being I don't know it feels that they, they, they're drowning in their own pond because it feels like they are they're not progressing at all when it comes to during the league stage down to the final grand finals itself here you don't see that much of a growth coming up from the side of Vietnam team it feels like they've been overwhelmed by the other team's performance mm, and I guess this is where teams are really stepping up the game right um, and you can see a lot of really really good fights whether it's close quarters long range or even nades so everyone's really stepping up the game so it doesn't matter which region you're from whether you're from the thai region indonesia region, malaysia or even uh, vietnam like if you don't step up the game then it really becomes difficult and i'm sure all the fans would be looking forward to see at least a team from their respective region to come up with chicken dinners for them to celebrate of course of course and that's the thing about PUBG Mobile, the beauty and the bane of it. In the moment you cannot adapt, then you'll be falling off into the dark abyss with literally no way out. You don't want to be there. Now on the side of the damage, Elivai, Rosemary, we do have a lot of very repetitive names up here with even rescues. Even though Spot Hazel did bombard one of his own teammates but because of due to the angle, but it's still one of the most rescued down there. But um, we do have in and out a bit of a swapping of a player for Voin. Yeah, Keenan is coming in. Transfer to Voin back from BTR. So it looks like they're going to switch things up. We got Alta Ego switching up as well. Boysil and Hans for you making the switch. Uh, Boom is the only one that has not made a switch yet. Are you surprised by now? They have not made any switches. And this is, this is, I mean, this is a bit awkward and funny at the same time because they are the ones who have been famous for the last couple of seasons. They've been famous for swapping too much in every single map. Now, surprisingly, they are the only teams not doing anything for this. It just shows that maybe they are quite confident and comfortable with this lineup because this is the best version of Boom that we've seen for the longest time. Wow, it almost feels that RRQ is now being the boom in terms of making substitutions. <laughs> now, Hexas is coming back in. Okay, okay. But I could kind of understand RRQ's position as well, right? Like, they haven't found that spark from week one yet in the grand final. So they're probably still trying to find that spark in and even switching out one of their young, talented, high fragging player Snape for an experienced player like Hexas. So finding the formula still is RRQ. No, the thing about RRQ, right, is despite like we we don't see a, a lot of flashy plays coming out from the teams, like especially RRQ, but they are just there. They are annoyingly just there. They're quite consistent still with every single map still contribute a sort of points they still got themselves the top eight now you cannot just disregard this team despite they're not showing some flash and move they're always gonna be there but how can they push themselves beyond just being there because we're heading to our last irangle map for the day keep your buckles up ladies and gents Well, speaking about RRQ, this is going to be the final Irango for today. And if you just join us here, ladies and gentlemen, here's some stats for you to go through. 
BTR now has the highest average point in this map with 18, followed by Yudu Alliance, the only two teams with a double digit average. And of course, it is helped by these two teams are the only two teams to score chicken dinners today. Well, for all the people who love numbers, well, for the people who love circles, then this is something that you should watch out for as well. I mean, the numbers sometimes, well, the numbers are numbers, but when it comes to circumstances, you cannot predict what will be, what will gonna happen next. But so far, still Zaxi, due to his last performance, I think pushed himself quite up there, quite a lot of BTR players, and still got himself in the top two players in average damage in top four. By the way, Cloud, Cindy Clover actually say hi to you, and he, she doesn't have your IG, surprisingly. Well, I thought uh, I'm, I'm not so that I'm being a find. postman, yeah. I'm just being a mailman in between you guys. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I mean, if, if anything happens, you know, it's going to be the circle. You didn't expect that, uh, right? Yeah, if anything happens, it's going to be the circle <laughs> all the way up north. So burning again. All TPX will be the happiest. Well, how much longer they will be happy? Because usually the moment you feel a bit of sense of relief, that's where somebody will try to knock you down. Hopefully, some of them will still stand long enough. I think some of the players from DX still hovering around mid-air. Still not landing down. Well, Yasnaya has been super popular in uh, this PMSL, so a lot of teams slowly try to approach Yasnaya as much as possible, at least try to be at the rim of it. So we have around two to maybe four teams sometimes on top of Yasnaya quite early on. Hmm. Now will be the question, right? I wonder if teams would want to go. How many teams would want to go inside of Severny since we have this kind of circle? And how many teams want to go outside of Severny, which is the shooting range high ground? And I think that's pretty nice as well. Uh, we need to keep an eye on that. And of course, like I think we have a consistent wish list, right? Is that we don't want to see an urban finale. We want to see an open fight. We're not contra here. Man, don't jinx it, bro. <laughs> the moment you say you don't want something, you know... PUBG Mobile will just give it to you right in the face. Like when we ask for something, they will give it, but a bit later than per usual, maybe in the last day, the last map or something like that. But in the case of the circle, I agree. I have a feeling everybody just want to be on top of Severny. That's the best spot for now. But the question is, it's a very limited for the spaces for the team. Just to have a lot of houses, couple of compounds here and there, but not all the compounds are strategic enough for them to oversee what's coming up and coming onto into their path. So I have a feeling everybody wants to be on top of Savini right now, but it's the matter of time. Can they get there soon enough? Yeah, I totally get that statement, right? It's the it's one of those when you say that, oh, I don't want my future husband to be so and so and so. You will end up getting I didn't know, it. I didn't know you into that. Well, I'm just giving an example, right? <laughs> and I mean it is uh it is a free a, a free world to give examples and thoughts just saying yeah, I, I agree i'm not judging you come on you're my buddy i won't judge you come no of course on, you're not I'm, you. I'm just <laughs> retorting to that triggered mention <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> okay but yeah back to the game guys there's nothing gonna happen definitely nothing gonna happen as per usual i mean like if you expect us to say something wow that's remarkably insane helmet on the ground which is gonna be level one no nothing's gonna happen but the thing is we're gonna talk about a bit more regarding the rotation of the teams right you mentioned about boom not being rotated for the players i have a feeling this is gonna be the best the best lineup for sure. And we did mention about vampires before Ravenclaw and Fluke is not playing at all. So, um, I do know the entire season for, at least for this season, they will not be playing. I'm not sure about Fluke as much, but Ravenclaw definitely will not be playing during this Grand Finals. Now, do you miss a bit of those uh, lineup, Claire, or do you feel like this is going to be the best of Vampire? Well, I think Vampire. Um, I probably don't have a direct answer to that, right? Because uh, they used to be the team that switched things up. But I think Vampire is planning for the future. So Ravenclaw is one of the more senior players, even in terms of age. He's been playing for quite a while. So I guess this is more like a succession planning for them. And if I think from a perspective of succession planning, I do like what they're doing right now. I like the same goes for side of versatility, and but 
it just shows that something's big gonna happen very soon and the fact that a lot of coaches taking um some turn when it comes to big choices and big options or big decisions regarding who's playing and who's not but we do have a bit of skirmish between Morph and also FaZe Clan here. Yeah, speaking of FaZe Clan, they do have a bit of a rough start before Morph as well. They're at the very bottom compared to FaZe. They're not really in the sweet spot just yet. But 79 versus DX in such an open space due to the circles the transition and shift the in between Savani and Yasnaya Poliana. Mm, speaking about shifting, looks like a FaZe Clan is shifting around right now. Mela finish out by Bo Bo Ho. Not the player that they want to lose. We have seen it time and time again. How important Mela is for FaZe Clan. How many clutches he has pulled off for them in pre previous seasons. And to lose him this early on. Man, it's hard for FaZe Clan. <sighs> it's fun. I think it, it's kind of hard for all of us, not just FaZe Clan. Because we haven't seen the Mela like how he used to play back in the days, right? We all missed him. When he was in a different team entirely, when, when the chemistry was so different, trying to get that still and same goes for the side of Newsy. Back to a side of more than XT ass, a bit of skirmish, just exchanging bullet, a bit of greeting done, that's it. While well, we do have some teams start to move away from their first initial drop spot and just go straight into the second or third checkpoints here, there's going to be a flash, team flash now. The did team that's so not consistent. It's going to be super high and super low for Team Flush. There are days they are very quiet. And some days are super loud. Now, I don't know what's going through the player's mind. But we do know Kwang is going to be one of the veteran players when it comes to this lineup. And the same goes for Gozu. Well, I'm, I'm with the thought that the super loud is like week one. And that's about it. But uh, Boom is definitely still loud. And now they are being loud against Sam Knight. Oh, not the first time they fight with each other. And it's again Yuhai in trouble. Last take of hell. One bubble on the Yuhai. That was a close one. Now, I'm trying to be honest here. I'm sorry if there's so uh, there's some hate comments out there if you guys disagree with my thoughts right now. Now, Sam 9, from my opinion, cannot even afford to lose Yuhai. Yes, they do have Dap and Kenny in Remarkable the Duo as well. But I feel like the one who actually tried to push everyone forward, who initiate all the moves just to get into the spot or objective that they really want to, it's going to be Yuhai. He's the one the most daring of all the players out of the four of Sam 9. Well, let's take out this replay. Nice spray by Dap. Oh, okay. So that's the uh, that's the first blood in this uh, entire match. Dap getting it. Take out a member of the Xavier. Nice spray. Nice tracking. But uh, what's going to be not so nice maybe is for these players. Because a lot of them need to move to the right. And this circle feels familiar. I mean, like, why do people hating on Stalber? Why does nobody there every single time? It's going to be Stalber right on top of the circle as well. It's quite fake, and I have a feeling Alter Ego and Talon, both of them, having the same mindset. We want to go to the south of Stalber. We just wait, wait, it, wait it out. While well, the circle might shift towards Yasna and Pliano once more. But there are teams that are super late in this one, including Vampires. Look at how deep they are in the blue zone. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they came from uh, Primos. So it's, uh, it's quite a travel for them with this sort of circle. It's like the same theory as if you drop in Saverni and the circle is in mid to the base, you will be one of the later teams to come in. So Vampire, they have to go through this. But that could be a good thing as well because every team might be distracted with each other. Vampire comes in, they could have an opening. Well, trying to flatten the tires of STX vehicles. Might actually got him punished in the face with that kind of shot uh, right into his crosshair. Into the scope and into his eye. Now, BTR on the other hand, they will try to work things around against STX because they know for sure that there's going to be more than one team that's going to be around this vicinity. Same goes for Pigby. That's why BTR just relocate themselves in a different position entirely just to make sure they are safe first. Their safety comes first compared to, uh, you know, the eliminations of the other teams because they're going to work their way through the bunker. Now, we do know this bunker, we have another team on the other end of the tunnel. Hmm. I wonder if any other teams will go there, but it's on the outside circle, so maybe not. It's probably going to be just a short stop for them. But for Void, just passing by, happening with BTR there, Zeta tries from the long range, tries to pin back BTR for the most part, allowing space for his other teammates to retreat back. 
and I wonder if they really want to go for it. I mean, time is on their side, so if they want to go for it, it's going to take a while. Definitely going to take a while. Look at the pistol now, please. Put it out. Oh, whoa, Satar. Not enough room or ground. Barely got any cover. Only one tree for them to take covers for BTR. The moment they step out from the tunnel, it's going to be straight one. A bit of a exchange of nades. A bit cornered for BTR. This is not great, but Key, unfortunately, he's, he's stopped pressing on them. I think Void should just pressing on BTR if they really want to go in for the kills. Well, I guess they, number one, they don't have the opening. They, number two, they might not know where the members of BTR are at, like the rest of them. They don't want to take that risk for now. They're afraid of perhaps the off angle and also the zone consideration. So they're going to take their rotation down south, back into the circle instead. So the second stage, but still not going to be enough for their first eight. I guess that's why they decided we have to move early. It's not worth investing too much time. Just something that's not quite confirmed for them to get those eliminations. But Nolte Ego, he got himself quite in the center singers for Talon. But look at the southern part. Whoever tried to cross your sniper, you had a good luck. Have fun with that. Oh, Tua has to get away because Udo Alliance is on top of him. Udo Lions coming in this time around, they do not have to circle on top of them. They fight their way through. More of GPX still on the outside, locking up BTR. This time it's a tough round for BTR as they must win this fight because more of GPX not leaving them. Oh, they're going to meet in the blue zone for more versus BTR. Zero is not happy about how they're being picked from afar. But BTR don't have a care in the world. Look at that. Happily just shoot it away. Zuxi taking a bit of a tap. What's the top? Oh! Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Wow, but a nice trade there. However, Sata, he has backup. Gen Force together with Lapa together with him. Hazel's on the other side with Bobo Hu and Zero out in the blue. It's almost impossible for Hazel to save his teammates, so he has to let them go for now. Zero as well on his knees. It's gonna be Hazel still alive on the outside. Gonna save himself for placement points. And we're extending some fights. Oh, sleepering down. No. Wait, what? Wait, it's still alive. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, the water broke his fall. But... Oh, okay, he can probably climb out on the left side. But it's going to be obvious for Sam9. The tragic fall of Snipes caught in camera, recorded and alive. And Sam9... I'm not sure that's going to be worth investing too many people around this side of the lake just to make sure they will secure that fallen member just now. Oh man, Boyne is coming in as well. Okay, we might see a Boyne versus Sam9, perhaps, depending on where they rotate, but there's still enough space on the right for Boyne to avoid it still. And they can go up to the high ground of Star Wars still, at least last we saw. Um, making a long rotation ain't too bad for Boyne, honestly. Oh, oh, oh! That's the thing, oh. they're not alone! Parajin oh. spotted out Kin, that was an easy shot! They didn't even break in a sweat for Parajin, that's serving him! Straight in the plate! That's gonna be Parajin secures on one, even though they lost Levi quite early on, at least they secure one elimination points. For now, now let's leave, because the blue zone is not that well for me. Oh! Nade on the Zeta by Hexas, the new sub in player! And Hexas gets another knockdown to Maxius! Could this be the super sub that they're looking for this round? Hexas! What a substitution to take down three members of Boyne! And speaking of having a bit of a, f a fresh air, that's definitely a bit fresher coming up from the side of RQ, dropping themselves the secret weapon early on. Now, they are dis uh, despite they got themselves quite a clutch just now by Hexas, but they're split it up into two, two spreading across just now, Pollyanna. Half of them inside of safe zone, the other half is not really in the safest place. While BTR, Team Flash. Now, BTR, this is going to be last player, and that's going to be dumb. There's going to be pulling them all the way down since they're letting go of their third placement up there. Well, Team Flash now is the one, it's the villain to take out BTR. But the next challenge is probably going to be Face Clan as they need to fight their way through. TK from SD went out somewhere else. STX probably caught in a fight as well. A lot of reds 
red ball on the right side of a bracket just now. Ooh. And then overall rankings, another one bites the dust. Alter Ego knocked out. Sem9, you are again on his knees. Lou, you're barely alive. What is going on in the middle of your Snaya Poliana? Yeah, always the early one uh, to be eliminated out of the Sem9 lineup. And now he's taken out. But now we got Candy. Nice break. Gets one. Gets a second one. Candy! Double on that play on the two members of Boom Esports. Sit down, Candy. Boom. Whoa! Candy, the Boom Slayer! Look at this. The Boom Boomers. He's going to be Vampires and Sam 9. Just sitting down, Boom, in the center. And Boom barely got any air. Any... Space to breathe at all. You know, lines untouchable, and this make up uh, the gap for you know, lines even the margins even bigger. We don't see any you know, lines anywhere now. Absolutely not to show where they are, but what we're sure is that sub nine is out. But they bring themselves seven eliminations together in this round. Vampire Esports, three eliminations. They are still in this as a full squad, so anything can happen with the double PMWI champions. Looking over at Alter Ego now, they are on top of a face plan. And nothing can go wrong. They have been super quiet. They try to open up and stretch over the points even further more. Now, vampires could find them early on. Now, this is going to be tough for the other team to catch up to their lines. But STX spotted out face clan. Phase, they're losing two members. Heavy casualty on the side of Morph as well. Hazel and Yuru, what can they do? Two versus one, left with only Mormon. Yeah, uh, and GK, what is he gonna do? That question is to him as well. Outside the circle, locked in by Phase Clan. Unless he can get a knocked on the Mormon, he got it! He got it! He answered the question of what he's gonna do. Take it up, Mormon, and now he can come in. It's gonna be tough for FaZe, but we're gonna have to wait and see. It's too early to judge FaZe. I know you guys are gonna be saying like, Why is happening to FaZe? It used to be so good. What happened to him? And this is a wrangle. That's the thing. When it comes to Murama, that's their specialty. If that's not gonna happen later on, then you guys can say whatever you want to say about FaZe. For now, we're gonna focus back to his XTX with that clutch, leaving only Jaiki left. But look at how many teams they're still having a full squad. Talent got himself in the center, full squad. You realize the only team that actually taking one team finding on the right side and then nobody else. Well, I'm not sure if our audience sounds like that, but okay. <laughs> I'll take that, I'll take that, I'll take that. Just like how Mob GPX will want to take out Outer Ego, border on the outside of the circle. Now Nay onto Outer Ego. Rosemary still alive. DBS at that range might not be as effective, but he will switch over to a Star L to make sure he puts a lot of pain back on the Mob GPX. And speaking of pain, it's more painful to see Rosemary once upon a time. One of the most highest ranker players still is. Now have to hug around this loops. Just to make sure he opened up some space for Alter Ego members to push. And they got Yoru. This is crucial. Head down to only Hazel. Hazel only have 30% of HP left. Now can they backstab him? Rosemary trying to take it around the corner. But FL Tim Flash. Selling it away from a fool! Oh, you mean, mean wound! Man from the inside, but Rosemary! Like what you said, he doesn't disappoint! DBS and the leader of Mesh, he will take out Hazel, the last member of Mom GTX! Vampire Esports now in action, we got Tony K, 20% of health, moves further forward, but needs to win the fight against the PMNC Indonesia champions, pick me! Now, give me time to shine now, time to wake up. But Bexy got clipped quite a number of damage. Vampires coming out from the off angle as well. Now they're being surrounded without their realizing. The moment they leave the mushroom tower, that's gonna be everyone hovering around the cross air just to take them down. Vampires, this is not safe for them either. They have to find some covers for themselves. Ooh, okay, this is pretty much the only cover here, I guess. The sniper tower. Vampire Esports knows where the two members of Pygmy are at. Put the focus onto them. We can see Tony K prepping up the molly. But he's being shot at. I believe it's from afar or at least from the high ground somewhere. Speaking of high ground. Tell on Pygmy. Vampires sliding down. Noozy back in the smoke. Stone. Can you find any opening for Pygmy here? Yeah. Shrapt's coming out on the uh, different angle entirely, but Talon is so thirsty for Vampire right now. They want to actually run them down. 
But boy, they are quite the center of attention right now. Straps trying to climb down. Drone level one on fast and helmet at this stage is going to be troublesome, but he needs to find some resources around there somewhere. Wow, you're right. You don't often see that level one helmet fast at this stage. Hmm, interesting. But uh, yeah, I guess that's what he uh, needs to go through right now, unless he can uh, loot up other people's boxes. But for now, because they're stuck inside, um, unless they win this fight against uh, Vampire Esports, looting won't be an option for them. Vampires got five eliminations. But Alter Ego left with two, with Blue Zone pushing their back. And by the way, happy Iftar for all the Muslims out there. That's actually having the same time zone as Malaysia. Hope you enjoy your drinks and food right now. But back to us again. Talon, red face. Digging his own grave right here, right now. Talon did not save either. They tried gatekeeping v uh, vampires and rosemary down on the ground. And vampires might bring down their neck as well. But still, Talon tried to hold it strong. The red face finished off Rosemary. This is going to be a problem for Alter Ego. Ooh, Okta now is going to be the last man standing for Alter Ego. Without the circle, 20 more seconds before zone starts to close again. Whereas RRQ is going to come in from the southern side and they have Talon in their hands, just right above them. And RRQ, they do have an idea that Talon's up there. They have a vehicle, so that gives them a little bit more option for them to navigate through this circle. Oh, what way? It's like a pinpoint up top circle and it's just so hot to play around with this terrain. So uneven. You do a line spot at RRQ. They, were th they thought they were chilling for RRQ. Not so much. You've been backstabbed and surprised by these guys out of nowhere. And also Ego just quite running down on men. Yo. Still dominating and Jabranky. What? What does that shotgun sound of nowhere? Well, there was one swoops and Vampire Esports. Looks like they're waking up this time. Seven eliminations are ready for Vampire. Now RRQ and Talon! No Beko! Watch out with the DBS! In front of face of Red Face! Exos cooking at the perfect angle for that nade to toss on Linux, but he got it right first. Linux got it faster. This is going to be difficult for Exos to just... Roll to a side of Nebeko because Axel's going on that side as well. Misery taking on RRQ. On the side of Talon, they are fighting two teams at the same time here. Oh man, Talon managing two teams. Like what you said, as Judo Alliance is going to come in closer and closer onto them. Nebeko is still alive, but Hexas has been nailed down by Axel. Axel was not finished on Nebeko. Jumps down! Jump shot to finish off the last member of RRQ. No time for a breather, they need to move fast because the UDA line is just hovering around that corner and waiting for them to be taken down in a pot. Leon with the DBS ready up, but they do have Linux on top of them and Misery waiting for the DBS. Here oh. comes the DBS fight! Who got it first? It's gonna be on the side of Talon. It might be Talon's game after oh. all. Nice backstab by Linux. What a position he has in the shack to take out that one member of UDA Alliance. A Udo Alliance, two of the other members on the other side. We have Oleo together with Jimmy OP. But Schwab comes in with a surprise to knock down Linux in his house. With Newsy to play alongside here. Talon, didn't see this one coming. They thought they had the top ground by themselves. But like we mentioned before, they're not alone, not anymore. Because so close, it's going to be Udo Alliance, Vampires, and now Team Flash joining in the free as well. Alter Ego have that one last member. Going to play as safe as passive as possible. But Jimmy and Udo Lions, they want to save. But they look, the only way for them to save him is just take the fight head on. It's going to be 3 way war down there. It's going to be 2v1 on top as well. Oh, circle time. It goes up north where Team Flash is at. So if I was towards them, but you don't realize the two members that's still active right now, not too far away from the circle as well. Jimmy OP keeping out of misery, looking for revenge. Now Talon will find it hard to get into the circle, especially with this kind of terrain. Young, not tossing any nades, I was hoping he will be. Actually, just tossed a couple of smokes of misery, got only one rock, that magical rock, the very small rock to take covers. Oh man, that rock won't last long enough. And Jimmy finally get a knockdown on Misery. Here comes Axel trying to smoke up and save his teammate. But can he make it happen? He got a very small timeline here to save his teammate or not. 
Yeah, looks like the answer is uh, answered by uh, Jimmy OP to take Misery out. And now he's all alone. Udo Lions time to get into the circle and they managed to save that teammate. Now they're back as a trio. Udo Lions trying to score a triple chicken in a day. Still consistent, got himself in the top five this time. Last time he was top six. Other than that two chicken dinners. Now this definitely will keep them themselves at number one for quite some time now. I'm not sure about vampires. Got an eight and nine animation for Talon as well. But when it comes to numbers, they did not actually add up so well compared to you, the lines. But the problem is, they're quite close to each other. Teams are getting close to each other right now because of stage seven. Uh, moving on to stage eight real soon. We still have a number of players on the outside, including Vampire, including Axel. Axel focusing on the Vampire now. Gonna go in for a mano a mano. UMP in hand, cooking up the stage, but he won't be using it. Switches back to UMP, trying to win the fight against two. Gets one, can he get a second one? No, Zay will not allow that with the DBS gameplay. Can he save his teammates? Probably not. Time is not on his side. He needs to get it by himself. I have to give it to Talon. That was a nice clutch all the way just now until the very last minute, but unfortunately, they are, come, they are they're just running out of man, just outnumbered when it comes to the last few circles. Yeah, no more circle. In fact, down to two more stages and it's done. Young spot out on Vampires. Newsy, you're trapped down there. There's no way for Newsy to go up and just even pick out at this point. Yeah, unless Young gets distracted by a Udo Alliance. Look at the circle. It's still kind of famous, a team clash. Maybe a little bit on the side of Udo Alliance, but mostly Team Flash at this time. As Young, with the circle still, he can still pin down Newsy, but Wunti is going to come in from the other side. Try to take off a Newsy, but at the same time, now Udo Alliance is coming in. They want a piece of Newsy as well. They're spreading out, open their angles wide for the side of Udo Alliance, knowing the fact it's down to only three more teams left aside from themselves. And they know they outnumbered all these teams, except for just by one number. If they can take out one more team, that's going to be equal grounds for them. There's no problem for the side of Udo Alliance to score that chip triple chicken. It's so, so close for them to get a triple chicken in a day for Udo Alliance now. I know, right? They do have the best numbers, including the percentage thus favor them. But it's a matter of them wrapping it up right now. Olio cooking up the snake and knocked us behind, but oh, back on the newsy. Young team, the one to pick him up. Young. Still gonna take himself cornered up, hugging this angle for the longest time. And surprisingly, nobody tried to flush him out of here. Okta. Spot out Young. He knows exactly where he's at. He can see those nades flying over right on top of him. But they do have to worry about Wound. Nobody realizes where Wound is right now. You do lines try to gain as much information as possible. And taking the map control. Half of the bottom circle is theirs to take. But the problem is the terrain, they are actually do have a bit of disadvantage. They are on the low grounds. Hardly can see what's going on on top of them. Man, Wound still has four first four nades last time we saw them. But let's not forget about the final member of Outer Ego as well, Okta. Could be the uh, game changer here, but he's closer to Team Flash. And if he pulls the trigger first on the Team Flash, then you know Alliance will have the biggest advantage possible. 2v1 with you do Alliance at 62%. With the trio at that point, they lost Leon, but they do have I did Luke, Olio, and Jimmy. And these three players are crazy when it comes to firepower. All they need is just one small opening to know exactly where the players are flashed because right now the math don't add up right. They can only see one or two players. They can't see it at turn. Oh, no, he's Okta. Okta take it out just like that. And the point where we give it to Team Flash. Now it's with the Yudo Alliance and Team Flash for the chicken dinner. Will we see a triple chicken dinner for Yudo Alliance over Team Flash? Take it out for Vietnam. And we'll see sprays on the Jimmy OP. Down to 40% of how he is. A bit of drifting down by the side of Jimmy just now. Giving away wound position. UMP Woo! running low. It's down to one more players. They will score that triple. They want it so bad. They will finish up strong. Young fighting for his life with the DBS. He's trying to hold. Yeah, Make a miracle clutch. Down to two more. Can okay. 2v1 triple for you do. Oh man. Triple chicken for you do alliance. This is the whole problem we're talking about!
the crowd is pouring. It's cheering for Udo Alliance. Give them the buff to take on three ticket dinners today. Still not celebrating, you know, for a fact it's a bit too early and just not the moment for celebrating just yet. It's still the first day, we still have two more Miramo maps to go. And this is where you get to see FaZe or even the other teams like DX will actually be better compared to your Wrangle map. But so far you do Lions, I have to say, two chickens on the side of a Wrangle. They almost got the third one as well just now got himself in the top six but now they're coming back as the number one team imagine the gap cloud this is gonna be a lot of catching up to do for the teams down there oh man i can't wait to calculate the scores because the teams below you know alive they got eliminated fairly early somewhere in the middle of the game so the point gap might be at least significant we need to calculate the scores later on but for now looking over at the team stats how they look again for the second time comes up with the most damage in their chicken dinner rounds there's no limit for other look it's still it feels like it's still growing some players we've seen them grow for a couple of years and they they hit that, that stagnant they're out of plateau they're not moving forward anymore but this kid this boy this man now he's a man now i think look he just keep on going on better and better for how many seasons now it feels like you do a lines still not reach their best efficiency yet i feel like they still can grow more from this point i don't know for how much and how drastic it can be but this is like one of their best performance in any grand finals yeah, the only thing that the uh, Euro Alliance is missing ever since the Far On Legend days is that they have yet to win a major title yet. I know it's still day one, but hey, they're looking good so far. But look at what the match recap, other than Euro Alliance, we do have Team Flash up here. Vampire Esports, a decent round for them, I must say. They got a lot of eliminations. They also survived long and Anuzi pulled off a good fight against a talent at uh, some point to bring them this third thing. But let's check out the best moments from this round.
Now, is it a cause of celebration or should they put on hold with the celebration just yet? Well, they did score a hat trick for you to alliance today. Triple chicken in a day. Now, can they score another two? We've never seen any team get score a full day chicken by themselves. Oh, well, hopefully they will be one of the first few. But just now, Talon was close enough with that clutch as well, Cloud. Yeah, Talon. I mean, they are showing persistency in this round. Not gonna lie, right? Uh, it was just that towards the end, 1v2 against a Vampire Esports. Newsy had to show up, and obviously it's Newsy. So, yeah, they, they, they won it. But it's also uh, a positive thing for the Vampires, right? Because for the past two rounds, they haven't really been showing up. This is so far the best round in the Grand Finals. I agree, and this open up for their spot, maybe in the second place, if they want to by end of today, if this keeps going for the side of Vampires, because Boom just open up a whole opportunity for Vampires to catch up to them, because just now we saw Boom being made quite early, I'm not sure how many points they managed to take it away before they went out, it was only one point, but Void, this is going to be, oh... I don't think they they scored that much, right? They haven't scored a double digit yet for the entire day for Void. Yeah, I believe they scored like maybe throughout the day one or two points. So it's definitely not the the point that uh, we have seen the potential of previously. And I guess uh, partly maybe it's because like um, sort of like a refreshed lineup as well for Void. I mean, we got um, the older players coming back into the lineup and they got a new coach and all that. So perhaps it's one of those adaptation periods for Void. But they need to adapt fast because the entire day almost gone by now. We have only two more maps to go with Yudu Alliance caught so much more with 20, over 20 points between them and the second spot down there. And they got the most chicken out of all the teams up there as well. Vampires, no chicken, no problem, but they do set a tie with 54 points and boom. The only thing that's going to make a difference is going to be the placement points, which Vampires do have a bit of advantage there. Mm, 22 point gap to be exact between Utah Alliance and Vampire Esports. But now Vampire is at second place after that decent round of a performance. And because of the tiebreaker against Boom, so they will push Boom slightly down. As for Team Flash, also an improvement for them. Welcome to page one, by the way, Team Flash. Hopefully they can stay up and going up because right now Team Flash slowly building up their, their momentum and consistency but po point for Void is like the only team with a single digit and surprisingly across how many maps we have today? Four I think, four maps barely got an average, like it's gonna be an average of what, one point each map? I get 1.5 around there somewhere? Hmm, yeah thereabouts, thereabouts, thereabouts. But uh, what we can, what we, what we're sure is that in the grand finals, if we look at points, the stats, right? They have not gotten any place from points, and they're the only team. I wouldn't say the only team though. But uh, you being number sixteen without place on points is a little bit tough. A seven nine, no place on points as well. But at least they kind of trade it off with the eliminations. But speaking a little bit of seven nine, and coming back to your point about the the whole U high thing, right? Uh, I think it's quite apparent right now that almost every round U high becomes the first one to be eliminated, and uh, that like lowers down their firepower by quite a big, uh, quite a big gap. I say around 25%, I agree on that, but they, they have to have a bit of refresh for some nine because things not working out for them. Same goes for the side of Void. I mean, Void, where did the Void that we know during the league stage gone? Because it's entirely, poof, gone, disappeared, and no, nobody can actually see them like, like how they used to play anymore. But you know what? I'm famished and I need a drink. I think we need all a bit of a break, especially for Muslims out there who's still not breaking it fast. I think, including Cloud, let's break up fast. See you guys after this trip. Oh, welcome back to the big stage. What's it like playing here on the big stage in Malaysia once again? Yeah. Ditanya Zuxi, apakah perasaan ketika bermain di stage besar seperti ini dan uh, di depan para para penonton? Uh, perasaan aku sih biasa aja sih sebenarnya sih. Udah uh, PMSL Grand Final ini uh, momen yang aku tunggu uh, selama liga kemarin. Uh, if you ask me, yes, I feel uh, I just feel normal. I don't feel uh, too overwhelmed. It's because of I already waiting for this moment since uh, league stage.
Waiting for this moment since League Stage. I think, I believe I had an interview, interview with you last year where you mentioned the same thing because you're so used to playing on the big stage. So who am I to ask this again? So let's talk a little bit about our conversation we had last week. I had an interview with you and BTR's approach to the game that prioritizes kills. And you said that you had the mindset why you guys play high risk, high reward is because you always feel that there's always going to be another game to catch up. Now that we're on the grand finals, has that mindset changed? Uh, ya, kalau kita lihat di interview minggu-minggu lalu, uh, kita sempat interview BTR dan BTR merasakan yang kill point itu lebih penting daripada placement point. Apakah mentalitas itu masih ada ataupun ada yang berubah semenjak grand final ini? Hmm, untuk playstyle seperti itu kita nggak akan ubah sih sampai tahun ini, bahkan tahun depan masih di Bigatron pun nggak akan ubah sih. Kita bakal main seperti ini terus. Yeah, we're not gonna change uh, on this grand final. We're just gonna keep playing with this gameplay. Even though until end of this year or maybe next year also, we won't change any gameplay. We're just gonna stick with this gameplay. I love this gameplay and I love this style. So kudos to you for sticking to that. Now let's address the elephant in the room here. We saw today we had three chicken dinners from Udo Line starting off very, very strong. Were you expecting this and what do you think about uh, Udo Lions right now? Uh, Oke, okay. kita bisa lihat performa Yudo Alliance sangat-sangat bagus. Uh, menurut Zaksi sendiri, apakah tanggapan uh, tentang Yel mendapatkan tiga kali WBCD? Uh, pertama sih, aku kaget sih. Uh, pertama kali ya, uh, tiga kali chicken dinner secara uh, berturut-turut. Walaupun tadi uh, tim aku chicken, teman menurut aku nih kaget sih. Tapi untuk secara apa ya tanggapan aku yang sebenarnya ya mungkin emang lagi dapat aja sih. Karena kan ini masih hari pertama, masih ada dua hari lagi. Jadi ya, uh, good luck, have fun. Uh, yes, of course, I feel a bit shocked. It's because of uh, this can count as uh, three consecutive times for Yudo Alliance got a uh, winner winner chicken dinner, even though my team got uh, on the second match. But then, yeah, I feel a bit shocked uh, since today is only the first day, but then they managed to get a three winner winner chicken dinner. But then, it's too early to judge. It's still first day, uh, and I just gonna wish uh, good luck, have fun. All right, speaking of good luck, have fun. What do you have to say to your fans over Indonesia and even here, actually? What do you have to say to them? Uh, ada yang mau disampaikan kepada fans-fans di Indonesia ataupun fans-fans Indonesia yang berada di sini? Uh, dukung kami karena ini masih hari pertama dan insya Allah dua hari lagi kita bisa bermain yang terbaik. Uh, keep supporting us is because today is only day one. We still have another two days and we gonna give our best. Giving their best is definitely what we are expecting for. So bombastic day number one already. And we might just go for a quick break. But before that, a chat with our casters. See you guys in a bit. Legend. What else can we say? And not just that, right? I think he got down with the flu just now because it seems like he's not very energetic like he used to during an interview. His eyes are usually like super big and like always smiling, but this one is like he's holding his. I feel like that's not something. I'm sorry, but it does look like he's struggling for quite a bit. And I like his answer saying that quite surprising that uh, you know, lies. Uh, not really, they're more stunned. When it comes to Triple Chicken in the first day of Grand Finals by Yudu Elan. So that, that feels like a challenge for them as well, but I really want to eat something right now. Uh, well, before we get to that, uh, since we were on that topic, actually, we got it off right, you know, just by looking over at the uh, footage. Because uh, insider news is that uh, they have been unwell for a few days, uh, the players from BTR, including some of the management stuff. So they're probably in the recovering phase, but uh, they still manage to score a chicken dinner. Who knows? Maybe later on, when they get better after this meal, they will score even more. And speaking about meals, we're gonna head for a break, ladies and gentlemen. So do not go anywhere. We'll see you guys after this one.
Hi everyone, in this devlog, we'll be introducing the all-new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute, Bullet Penetration. Shots now not only penetrate vests and bodies, but they can also damage multiple enemies in the bullet's path. However, the damage dealt is reduced by 50% each time it pierces an enemy. We hope that by adding this attribute, it can give players more room to showcase their skills. Players can also utilize this new attribute to achieve a double elimination with just one shot. Do keep in mind that landing a headshot increases the odds of achieving a double elimination with one shot, and the damage dealt differs between bolt-action sniper rifles. If you're interested in this challenge, let's find out which bolt-action sniper rifle is best suited for it. Let's start with the two most accessible firearms, the Car 98 k and the M24. When armed with either of these firearms, and facing enemies at full health with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to eliminate the first enemy while the next enemy receives massive damage instead. However, when faced with enemies not at full health with a level 2 and level 1 helmet respectively, you'll be able to achieve a one-shot double elimination. Hence, we strongly recommend the AM or AMR. Although the AM and AMR can only eliminate the first enemy with a level 3 helmet, but when facing enemies with level 2 helmets, you'll be able to achieve a double elimination in just one shot. And when facing enemies with a level 1 helmet or no helmet at all, you can use any of these four bolt-action sniper rifles to perform the incredible one-shot double elimination. That's all for the new bolt-action sniper rifle attribute. See you next time. In ages past, the golden moon cast a mysterious color upon Nimbus Island. According to legend, there was a clever adventurer that could utilize fog and terrain to defeat powerful opponents unexpectedly and obtain the reward of the genies and magic lamps, attaining the glory of chicken dinner. Indeed, this is Sky High Spectacle. Anyone can be the one. PUBG Mobile's 6th birthday is just around the corner. A merry 6th anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful 6th anniversary celebration. In the Sky High Spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. 
The night island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island. Harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7mm ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90! Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use drying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
All right, everybody, once again, I would like to wish everybody here today a very good evening. And before that, Taz, uh, I would like to wish to every Muslim here today, Selamat berbuka puasa. Happy breaking fast. And now that we've broken fast, everyone looks so happy. They look energized. They look great. And you know what that makes me feel like? What? So you feel like I want to dance. You want to dance? I want to dance. You want to break it down? Break it down. All okay, right. You show me your best dance. My best yeah, dance move? Yeah, your best dance. All right, all right. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready for a best dance move? Yes, I'm ready. All right, you ready? Show it to us. Okay, I can see the cameraman going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Guess what move is that from? That's Michael Jackson. Fantastic! Ah, of course I know. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's all I know, man. <laughs> all right, but I'm I'm pretty sure that because of our 16 amazing teammates here today, they've got the talent. And I'm pretty sure everybody here has that talent. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. And with that, what we're gonna be doing is we have Mr. Genie on the stage with us today and Mr. Genie is going to choose someone to share with us their favorite dance moves for five seconds. All right, that's right, Tash Bunny. And you know what? Let's find our first. Now, we've got our uh, a big, beautiful camera up there. They're going to find our first contestant. And trust me, when you dance, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise for you, yeah? Yeah, that's right. And it's going to be anyone in the crowd. Either you're going to be sitting down inside or outside. It can be anyone at all. So, Mr. Genie. Can you show us our first dancer? Oh, wait. I see a wall. Okay. It's a man in a chili suit. In a gilly or jilly? Jilly. Jilly? Jilly? I call it gilly. Gilly? Gilly suit. Gilly suit? Gilly suit. All right. All right, gilly suit. Gilly suit. Show us what you got. You got five seconds. One. Oh. Two. Three. All right, this looks like someone yang sakit perut baru uh -huh. nak buka puasa. Yes. Oh, sakit perut baru buka puasa. Yes, I, yes, thought, yes. I thought I call it, I call, I call the move the lalang actually. The lalang. The lalang. The lalang. Yeah. Ini jili suit, perfect. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The lalang. Oh. There right, we go. That, that was an example, yeah? That was an example. We're going to take now a random person from the crowd, okay? We're going to take right. a random person from the crowd. All right, cameraman, are you ready? In three, two, one. What do we have? What do we have, oh. Oh, oh, it's a start. Okay, 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 okay. Whoa, he dropped it. Do you know them? I do not know them. They look fantastic, amazing. I'm good try, good try. Okay, hey, so about Koran 2, what is Kelly? Hey, so about Koran 2, what is Kelly? What is Kelly? Ah, that is Kelly. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. It's a start. It's a start. I like it. Suddenly, okay. yeah. All right, so you see, they got a free T-shirt. And if you're watching from home, jika anda sedang menonton di rumah, sama ada live, pastikan anda datang ke... Kita ke mana ni? Tropicana ah. Gardens. Well, you guys are here in Malaysia, near KL. We are here live from Tropicana Gardens Mall. That's where right. we are here looking for you guys to show us your best dance moves. And you know what? Let's, let's do more. Let's do more. Let's do more. Let's, two's not enough? Two's not enough. I agree. Let's do more. Let's do more. Okay, Mr. Genie, who's the... On the screen, we are looking at... Hey. Oh, there you go. There you go. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, oh, sama sama oh, dengan gini oh, suit. Oh, oh, dia belakang. Oh, ula oh, juga, oh. Ula juga. They have snakes? They have snakes? I got see, a I see. Like All right, that. fantastic. What do you do? Tasha, what do you think? I think that deserves a t-shirt. I think sebab bulan puasa kita bagi pas ya. Kita bagi pas ya. Kita ke macam ada macam tak ada tapi okey. All right, thank you. Thank you. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Oh, there we go. He gave us a heart as well. There we go. Oh, everybody loves okay. it. Everybody loves it. Like that. Love. Like, that's a new thing, right? Like, hearts, hearts, hearts. Hearts. You know, I think that's a new thing where like, okay, you do this. This. Oh. <laughs> She broke my heart. <laughs> she broke my heart. <laughs> All right. All right, Tash, I think the next game is coming up, right? Yeah, the next game is coming up, and I know that you guys are really excited to see it happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we're going to touch the casters for our next match for the night. Well, that is a very interesting new segment. I don't know what sort of dance I would do. I will probably ask you to. Welcome back to the PUBG Mobile Super League Southeast Asia Grand Finals. Two more games to go. So, Chu, if you were to dance, what sort of dance would you do? The dance that I'm watching you dancing. Like my eyes dancing, watching at you dancing. Because I know Circle is actually used to be a break. Boy, we got the B boy, the B boy dance. You I'm, do I'm the now, headstand and stuff like that. I'm now good boy. Yeah, so 
<laughs> you so good that's boy done. Now. Yeah, good Not boy. bad boy anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've done with those days, you know. That's why Re I'm really single. the one with your gloves and everything. Come on, you still got the swag moving, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Age has caught up, you know. That's why, you know, people like the bad boys, but I'm the good boy now, so that's why I'm still single. I don't think you're break dancing this point. I think you break, break back sing. Oh, your yeah. back's gonna break at this yeah. point. Age definitely does play a role there. Not gonna lie there. But you know what else takes a role? Is of course the beginning of our next match. Of course, before we go on to that, we do a little bit of a recap. Yep, just in case you guys missed what really happened today, we have a triple chicken coming up from you to Lions. And also, when it comes to other teams, BTR managed to score one. That's the only team that do have a different flag and different logo in Dongli, but next, it's going to be a different map entirely. Which gonna be Mirama. Talon Axel has been performing splendid today. Seeing this from the side of Rose Mary always deliver. But also don't forget about Sam9 Kenny. Now can they do it again when it comes to this Mirama map? Yeah, I mean Talon, they put up a good show earlier on. It was just too bad that the uh, circle went away from them. And uh, um, it was almost a 1v2 clutch against a Vampire East boss. But then again, it was uh, the brilliance of news it coming with the DBS towards the end. Now, since we're switching up the map, so we got to look back at the stats again. So far, the best performing team in the uh, Mirama based on the data from the league stage is RRQ. Same goes for the ties here, Face Clan and Vampires. Now, we, we did mention early on, this is the map where they should excel for these teams because we don't see a lot of them in the wrangle. Same goes for the side of DX, but DX do pop here and now and then. But when it comes to damage wise, average still more towards the side of RQ and Phase in overall. But when it comes to Chicken, I have to say DX do know how they place themselves in this bigger map. Yeah, and speaking about maps, these are the uh, predicted drop spots for Mirama. So if we look at the predictions here, San Martin looks a little bit crowded with Hacienda not too far just beside it. And we got two other teams there as well. So it looks like it's going to be quite a party there, including Lost Donors potentially housing four teams. But I doubt so. We'll probably end up with maximum three. But usually Lost Learners is a bit easier to segregate between the teams since it's a bigger town as a start. So we've seen that before. It's shareable to house four teams in that particular uh, vicinity or that particular compound or Lost Learners in that case. But when it comes to Miroma, will we have a name that's still going to pop up here again? As a fourth chicken, we we never do we ever have in P P uh, Southeast Asia grand finals or league to have the same team having four chickens in a day. I think for, yes, we have before. I think so. I once, think so. right? Once. Yeah, yes. probably once. But uh, let's see if we can get five, maybe, which is still in the running. Uh, is it? Yeah. But anyway. But uh, looking over at the uh, teams to focus, right? So, Udo Alliance, obviously, done a lot of it. Now, BTR is not in our prediction. But for the others, we got Boom <laughs> together. But Boom has... Uh, they've been okay. They just haven't been booming. They're just so close. Every single time, you're just so close. But, you know, sadly, none of us actually call that for BTR. We score themselves one. But Udo Alliance, I mean, might as well just put all three Udo Alliance for today because they scored a hat trick, right? Yeah, uh, I know, right? I know, right? The Udo Alliance one, that even caught uh, Zaxi off guard. So, yeah, doing good so far. Gotta give it up to them. Probably a little bit of a home ground buff there, and it worked out for them. Uh, but what is the advantage, right? If we kind of think about it, Udo Alliance, we normally don't see them at the early stage. We see them at the later stage. So it means when it comes to rotations, they know how to make their way into the circle first, stay out of early fights, and show themselves second half onwards. It's kind of true, it's a big map, and by the way, uh, but the problem here, we do have a very big margin between the teams when it comes to the first place, where you do Lions got 76, which over 20 points compared to second and third place. Now, all the teams that really want to fight here when it comes to the only three days grand final, now we're only left with two maps. Like it or not, they cannot play as safe as before because they have to chase down the points. The only way to do that is going to be getting those elimination points because those chickens will not be enough. Yeah, but so far they have been fairly balancing out. And if you got three chicken dinners, well, I guess yeah, the numbers do add up and they're still pretty okay. But also another factor, what uh, 
allowed them to remain on top is if we based on the last wrangle, three or four of the teams below them got eliminated somewhere in the middle of the game. So that allowed them to have a bigger gap when they scored the chicken dinner. That's kind of true. Now, can they just stretch the gap even further or not for some teams down there on the other hand? Now, deep, deep down inside, I really want to root for Voin. Look at how happy it is, guys. The moment they just iftar. You know, sadly, we don't have iftar in this grand finals. If only Turtle plays, it's a good pun to pull out every single time. <laughs> yeah, that would be the daily meme there. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still waiting for that one moment where Boom makes a substitution. Um, because nah. it's still, till now, they have not made a substitution yet. So it's not the boom that we used to know, but for the other teams on the other hand, they do have a lot of swapping here and there. It's going to be Alter Ego, they're having fun showing all their strats, uh, what really they discuss for. Is it aiming for Alter Ego? Here comes Space calling out the shots there as well. They're going to go for this team. Okay, we're going to have to wait and see will that really happen, Mormon? Really, you're so happy with that. Mm, he's always one of the happier bunch, right? Oh, okay, yeah. who's who's he pointing at? All right. Who uh, is that? Let's That's see. Sonics. Okay. Who? Who? Okay. Base Clan. Who? Okay. Oh, but oh. speaking about Sonics. Oh yeah, he's making his debut, right? He's like pointing here and there. It's like, guy, dude, make up your mind. Okay. It's like all of the above. <laughs> I guess that's the case. All of the above. And then, okay, who who are you gonna put? Okay, we got Bobo who out taking a break. Say he's gonna come in. And Yoru, come on. Oh Be man. Nice to you. But you know what, Yoru? Um. Oh, okay, okay. All right. A little bit of an MMA there. But you know what, Yoru? He used to have this green hair, right? Yeah. So he says that if he qualifies to PMGO, he will color his hair again. I really? The last time I, I asked him, he said, uh, no, I don't have the money to color my hair anymore. But then I was interviewing Yummy at the same time. And Yummy mentioned that this guy got more hand, uh, sorry, more money than he his hands can actually hold. And they were joking about Yuri's actually just saving up money to possibly get engaged or <laughs> get married. I don't know if that's the case or not. When I asked Yuri, he said no. They're gonna have to wait and see. You're waiting for the big news in the future. I guess that's the correlation, right? If you say that your excuse is no money, obviously if you go to PMGO, you're the champion of PMSL. You would have money by then to color your hair. So, yeah, money is not going to be an excuse by then. So I'm going to claim that from Yoru because uh, it's caught on camera, by the way. He already mentioned that. But for the other players, Team Flash. Okay, I, I actually never really got what that really means, right? Like, except for just a one plus one becomes two sort of thing. Oh, you're pretty good at math. That's what I can say for now. I'll be chill. If you look at the veteran players, right, they are pretty chill. They're used to the camera, and Stone's like, yep. And guys, I love his stats, by the way. That's a new one, I think. Because last time we didn't see that much before. They always got something creative on their side to just express themselves or kick them. It's not, ha it has not been a great day. Singles for Boy. Now, the only team with a single digit. But they have very huge potential players in their lineup. Now, waiting for them, can they actually make a comeback when it comes to today? Okay, okay. Who's he pointing? He's pointing the water. <laughs> are, are you sure? Are you sure that's what you wanted to point? Dude, come on, man. Come on. Uh, Yami, yeah, nope, nope, nope. Let's not show the wrong stuff. No, no. It's a family friendly show. Just saying. Uh. <laughs> I was a little bit worried there, you know. What was he about to show? <laughs> oh, me too. But yeah, but it seems like they're just gonna get just r randomly pointing out the map. So there's a lot of pinpoints on that map. Who is, who printed that map out? Wow. Who is that? DX, okay. I guess. He's aiming for Xavis. Okay, okay, okay. So in case you don't know, those um those points on that map is uh, the potential spawn of vehicles. True. Yeah, but cause it's RNG at the end of the day, right? That's, but that's the potential one. Dude! <laughs> I know it's already break fasting, but not that way. I can't even. These guys, I mean, like, they're still boys. Boys will be boys. <laughs> they're very cheery. That's a good sign. I mean, everybody looks so positive after they 
I ate something for after fasting the whole day for most of teams from Indonesia and Malaysia and they're a bit more hyped up but if you overeat at this point it's gonna be troublesome because you'll be super sleepy later on yeah hopefully they are not uh, sleepy <laughs> now it's the case exactly the case yeah yeah they they're down the road down the road probably the high will bring them through anyway but of course we are going to a whole new different map let's see if anything changes there and uh, when we see the players putting on their earphones you know it's going to start real soon hey this is Tipai and the coach of a boy by the way yeah uh, he, he can't stop reminding me of top cars uh one of oh, the no. malaysian <laughs> malaysian uh, analysts as well as, as as a caster for bm but he does have a top cast like like a just a buffier version and plus the way he talks his height very similar as well i wonder what that means <laughs> can you explain further how does the voice and the height comes together no, the way he speaks like like the his the way he is bringing himself to the public is so similar just now he got so ten years when he's enjoying some ice cream i'm curious about what kind of flavors it actually take that's a very nice time. segue but <laughs> 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 you got you, you got away with that you got away with that oh, I'll, I'll let you off the hook i'll let you off the hook Thanks, now in case bro. you don't know these two guys they are the uh, content team from thailand um, mm -hmm. seen them around since pmtc and oh they're all getting good ice yeah. cream my god oh, everyone from thailand is getting ice cream we want ice cream oh. too Oh, I love this. I, I it kind of make me wonder is Sunsquare is there because Sunsquare always lead the cheering team. Now this time we do have Malaysia cheering team from Sem Nine. I don't know who's leading because we can't see the face exactly. Look at that. Very cheerful. I love this. Yeah, I just need the guy to turn around at least, right? Okay, okay. Oh, almost there. Oh, yeah. Have to. Oh, man. Not enough. Not enough. We gotta identify the person here, okay? We gotta bring him on stage. So Tash, if you're listening to this somehow, we gotta bring that guy on stage to interview. And let him do the five second dance, please. You need that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Give him the I 10 love that second. Yeah, make it 20, why not? Oh, now it's like yep. beauty cam time. Yeah, 30, 30 minute dance, let's go. <laughs> now five more seconds to go. Let's fly into our first Mirama of the day. Ooh, Mirama it is! The first Mirama of the PMSL Grand Finals! And we're gonna get the fly path from the left side all the way down to Puerto Paraiso. So teams they like to drop on the northern side, teams like Boom Esports potentially, teams like Mob GPX, teams like Alter Ego will need to travel quite a bit. Now imagine if the circle ended up right on the northern side around water treatment or center of the patron, it's pretty usual. Even on Creator Field, we did actually do have them back in a couple of days before, which was during the league time. Now when it comes to the big map like Mirama, we can never predict the circle down to the very last minute. But it's always fun to watch if it ended up on top of Lost Seagulls. I don't think we have that south, very south circle ever in, in, in this season yet. Well, yeah, this season, no, not yet. So if we do get it in the Grand Finals, I'm not going to complain for sure. It's either that or Impala. So, oh, just to add on as well. So some of you might be wondering like, oh, is this going to be the new Mirama map, the new patch and all that? The answer is, by now you can see here, obviously no. So that new <laughs> patch might come in next tournament. But for this tournament, we're still going to stick with the original patch or the previous patch. Still the old school one, so nobody get culture shocked in, in this season's PMSL. It's too early for that. But we do have an older circle quite right on top of Chris Deville as the center of it. But for the others, uh, not many teams going to be up there uh, at this time yet due to the flight path down south all the way just now. But whoever got there first is going to be big advantage for them huge humongous because it, there's nobody there there's a lot of vehicles there's a lot of loot still on top of the northern side so everybody trying to rush as soon as possible now if they don't land any vehicles now they might as well want to resort to late rotation because it will be too much for them to handle if they came uh, they come in a bit late 
Yeah, we need to look at like the uh, confidence of this team, right? And since this is the grand finals and the first Mirama, some teams might choose to change their strategy. Uh, so, for example, Vampire Esports, they normally like to come in a little bit later and take fights from the outside. But this time, uh, based on the few runs that we have seen, it does not feel like they intentionally want to come in a little bit later. It's just because of how the circle is and they don't take too many fights on the outside unless they are forced to or locked up by other teams but intentionally looking for one maybe not so we can see like the shift of changes of some of how these teams prepare for the grand finals differently mm, it's kind of true especially when it comes to um, the season a lot of teams not really wanting to play as late as possible you always have this debacle between playing the inner circle or the outer circle is way better at a certain point maybe back in the days true it, it, that's going to be divided into two but nowadays everybody wants to stay inside of a circle now even if the latest you're going to play at the rim and the edge of a circle not really that late deep into the blue zone but for gig fam one thing they realize somebody's tailing up from behind you might actually having a bit of a chase here but maybe just gonna be dropping themselves in the second drop spot but so far they don't have themselves that much of vehicles couple of them yes but it won't be enough still best one person per vehicle because we've seen the worst case scenario before yeah, speaking about Geek Fam, there was a small rumor that uh, Mika might play in the Grand Finals. But if really? you look at this, yeah, I mean, uh, this is like community rumors, right? But uh, I'm going to debunk that, right? I think that uh, Mika is not going to play in the Grand Finals, though. They're going to remain the lineup that they have now. But uh, Nebeko is definitely playing, has been playing all the rounds, and hopefully he survives this, and he will. Yeah, he did actually play earlier today. Um, maybe they had a bit of swap early on, but Nebeko. We played one or two games for today, but for Drone Pygmy now, Pygmy, we don't see the best version of it yet. I'm wondering what really happened to them that they, they're a bit quiet these days. Is it the jitters of the grand finals? Because since this is their first PMSL ever, uh, but they are quite strong when it comes to offline tournaments because they're known for their strength when playing offline tournaments. They're not really a big fan of online, so I think this should be no problem for them. Well, it's like the NKT case, right? So, mm. um, probably it's like, okay, at the start, you finally get that new guy momentum, but towards the end, maybe that kind of, you know, slows down. But uh, what's slowing down is, unfortunately, Nepeko circling around, and now he got caught up, knocked down by the Mini 14. But RQ all pulled over to this side. I feel like there's going to be a big clash coming between these two teams. The first few, in fact, in still stage number one. We already have one Nepeko knocked down, but can they save him? Do they have enough? I don't see any players of RQ have a couple of smokes to just open it up in the center of the desert where Vaxi cannot see them. Vaxi, despite he got a level one helmet, so already start firing towards the side of uh, RQ just now. I don't think anybody can save Nepeko at this point. Uh, it's very likely to be a confirmed first blood there. But the uh, RQ, they have been circling around and round and round for quite a while now. From a minute quickly and now to the savior. If Parji gets a knock onto Hexas, then RQ better go back to drawing board in terms of rotating in Nirama. And this suppose they are forte here. This is where the RQ is actually the overall the best team in the Rama. Maps surprising. They're having a rough start here. And we thought they might actually make sort of a comeback when it comes to, you know, their performance wise. Do you have uh, maybe because of the buff of the players, uh, sorry, the supporters, look at that. And they're waving around so much energy from these guys, cheering about. Oh. I wish I'm there right now. <laughs> can we just go there already? <laughs> well, yeah, you can leave the broadcast and, you know. Goodbye. Okay, uh, we, we, we just let it go, okay? <laughs> okay, so you guys just watch, okay? We'll, we'll see you guys tomorrow, okay? But uh, it's, it's nice to see this side of support, right? So, 7 9 has one of the biggest fan base in Malaysia, among all the other Malaysian teams. So, yeah, that's why they got this side of support and they're so cheerful. <laughs> And sometimes they become like the fifth or sixth <laughs> man top team, depending on how you count it. You do lion supporters like no, not this one. Me, me, me. Yeah, this is this is uh -huh. us. And then I can the see more who is just in front of them. <laughs> yeah, and a 
of course, of course, you gotta have the BTR supporters, right? Like, arguably one of the biggest supporters in the world, and you still, and, and, it, and it's still a Friday. Imagine if it's like the weekends, right? I think there will be a lot more of this fan club supporters here. <laughs> the one that holding the phone is like, my God, if you know, you know. <laughs> I missed it. What was written on phone? The people behind me got lost, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> These are stranded people, I don't know what it means, but yeah, you do know, Alliance, I'll take you, having a go. Now, can they score another? Feels like you do know, Alliance, despite they got themselves 76 points by now. They're still aggressively trying to find for more, but a bit too greedy, a bit too reckless. Might cost them quite a lot in this map. Mm, Jimmy OP is in trouble. Okta hasn't pinned out, and Leon is on his way. Jinyobi has a buggy, so he's still able to skid out. But can't say the same for his teammate. And this one the uh, earlier eliminations for Yudo Alliance. In uh, today at least. But circle-wise, all the way up north. So, so hard for the traveling teams. Extremely challenging. I'm not sure why this Mirama map is so angry with the circles. A lot of revenge here. Yeah. All the way up north from down south before is a flight path, but at least RIQ got the best compound there is. You don't have to worry so much, except for Voin, who happened to be just next to them. Imagine Sem 9 will have to go through BTR, have to go through Voin, and then RIQ. There's so many layers of gatekeepers. Ooh, speaking of gatekeeping, could Big Me gatekeep Face Clan? Well, at least they're on the other side, so they will skip pass by. And uh, that's a good move that to not follow the usual road. But for Satar, knocked down, finished up by Maxis from Boyne. And now they're on the hunt for Zaxi. Lapa went down, Lapa shoots, Lapa scores on the Keenan. Well, Lapa is not that hang uh, hangry anymore. I guess it's full from eating all those meals they just had for their dinner. Maxis Voin with a DBS. La Pa being surrounded left, right, centre. Zeta is here as well. No way out, no exit. And it's done for the day. Now that's going to be VTR. Despite we see the fans cheering for them, it's a bit disappointing then for all the fans out there because they are the first one to be out. Well, they're not over yet with the fight. No mercy taken out by Face Clan. Point given to them. First point picked up in this round. And we got uh, Audrey on the other side. He probably heard the gunshot, so he's good, not going to go anywhere close. Mormon, they don't play inside of a compound. Face Clan hunt and gun right now. Trying to find for the next victims. Who will be their next target? But definitely not going to be. It's, it's not going to be the accent team flash. RQ taking on point. Now, apparently, they are saying what they just said before. I'm not sure if DX and Team Flash will fight because they did mention about fighting each other before. But apparently, a lot of teams, when we're having a pre-interview session just now in a bit of a player's camp, a lot of them pointing out to Alter Ego, but it seems like Alter Ego is still in one piece. Yeah, so far so good for Alter Ego. And they already picked up two eliminations fairly early on. Uh, let's see if they can roll it. As of now, points-wise, they are equalizing a talent and the fact that BTR eliminated before them, which was just now, this gives them the opportunity to go up further. And if they can overtake BTR, they can potentially overtake even Boom and Vampire. That's kind of true. But they have to secure at least one chicken and double-digit eliminations by the end of today to just overcome that because... I, I do want to see the gap in between is so minor that it's so hard to predict till the end of the day, but right now that's not the case. But for our next circle, we do have a Christopher circle, and those coming out from the north will have to come down for a bit. Talon, on the other hand, split it into two, two. Well, the eagle will approach them from the back. Now, misery, if it actually be at the right time and at the right place, they can actually take advantage of what's around them. Well, what's around the Team X right now is another team that might block their entry. At least we're still at stage 2, so there's uh, still a good amount of space for them to rotate. But for Yudo Alliance, rotated onto Pygmy. And now they will be sharing the same area. But look at the minimap, there's so many teams in the same area. And other teams coming by as well. Six teams right on top of each other in the same building as well. Oh, this is not great. Pygmy being bombarded. Yudo Alliance on the other end. FL Team Flash on the other end. Pygmy lost. 
Now for things, that's got, I think that's going to be the last place. Oh. Hey, so where did that need came from? Oh, from across from the other house. And now Jimmy OP will need to save his teammate. Back onto the other city. RRQ and D Xavier locked in with each other as well. And we have Rosemary from Alta Ego up on that high ground church overlooking all these teams. This is overcrowding. There's not many space for all the teams to squeeze in here. Misery already tossed the nape, tried to flush out vampires. Stone a bit departed, a bit splitted from the rest of the team that are giving him so much angle to just damage control and just try to fight Talon. It's going to be down to only Stone here to make the play for vampires. But back to his point, you know, Alliance, they're down to two, but Max oh. is great to defend it strong with the help of Alter Ego from above them. He landed just by the side of that window, giving the opportunity to Leos to shoot him down just like that. Straight angle. And uh, that is how Vaughn got eliminated. So it looks like they'll end this round still the only team with a single digit. Oh man, he barely got any points for today. That's going to be Vaughn. Hopefully the next Mirama will hit them a bit more than just this. Because it's hurt, it's painful. To watch the, the only team to ended up the day with only single digit. I think by the end of today, at least it got a couple more, right? It should be double digit by the end of today. Yeah, I mean, there's one more round to go. They only need to score one point. And I guess a team like Voin should be able to do at least that. Not to be left out with the other teams. But uh, speaking about leaving out, uh, Lo Yu was left out hung to dry as now he's knocked. Whatever is okay, but he's bleeding out fast from what we can see. True. Some nine losing a lot of members down there. I'm not sure who and what teams are they facing against because too many teams happen to be crowding over the same place of Cross the Vale. Everybody won the same thing here. And that's a problem where there's only limited compounds, the good ones, on top of the circle. Now on the northern side, more for fighting as to axe kick fam still playing around the outskirts, not really getting the safe zone just yet. They know there's too many teams in the center, not worth investing their time. And in case you guys want to know why the teams are fighting so much, because we had earlier flight path was on the southern side just now, and the circle flew all the way towards the northern side. So like it or not, a lot of teams will have to clash with each other quite early. Oh, I noticed Drang from Team X got knocked. So it looks like they're up against more GPX. So what tries to save him, but time is on his side. They need to defend the ground as GK was not off by taking out one of the top eliminators of Mob GPX. Yoru say comes in from the other side. Together with Zero to crash onto STX. STX now only GK left. Now uh, this is gonna not gonna be our producer G K this G K, but G K playing around with the smokes. Zay and Zero try to relay the information back to a side of Hazel, but so hard to clip them down. Might as well just secure Trang, but will eliminate their teammates as well if we keep tossing those grenades like there's no tomorrow. G K now still all alone though, worried about picking out his teammates. Will he go for the pickup now? Trang is towards him, but he has to take out Zero. If not, the information will be relayed back to Hazel. Hazel now with the high ground. Nate being cooked up. Hazel got to be careful! Ooh. Surprise one, Nate man. by GK! GK just playing so well with the terrain, blocking their view from below. And not just that, he tossed it perfectly well. Towards the players just now. That was an insane play by GK, but it's not going to be enough just yet. He needs to revive his teammate while we're hovering around towards where everything is so crowded. Vampires in the center of Alter Ego, Team Flush, DX, RQ, Pygmy. I think there's more talent even in the fray. Woo, more teams to come. Look how colorful it is within this city. It'll be interesting if the circle goes away from the city but since the city is somewhere in the middle there's a very high chance that at least the next stage or maybe even the sixth stage the circle will still be there some nine taking on break alter ego still playing around on the top side here got quite a view GK managed to revive on break but couldn't stay much longer sem9 already stopped in being so intrusive they have to leave that's leaving GK alone, but where to run this point, lad? Look at how crowded it is around him. There's no 
vacancy at any point here on you have to play in the center and just in the middle open field here yeah no entry point at all now the good news about him being alone is that you know all this space is all for him it does not need to consider about these other teammates do they have space or not will they expose themselves now nah. so as long as he stays put there it should still be all right since there's a lot of focus into getting to the uh, city how to get in there's very few buildings that's not being exposed that much and the one that actually got it is already there early that's gonna be team flush and vampires taking it but it's down to the next circle if the circle just shifted upwards Ooh, boom alter ego this is gonna be a rough journey for them to get into the center how to just get past that crowded place well, I'm be interested to see if the next circle goes towards Sam Nai because they have a good spread. And if it goes towards them, everybody from the CD has to move out towards Sam Nai. And Sam Nai, with that sort of spread, as long as they don't get knocked, they can farm eliminations. That's kind of true, especially with those elevations they had on their side. Plus, they're already there way before everybody else. So it's been looted up by them already. It's quite empty when it comes to resources, not so much. On a sort of face clan, this is where the map they should excel on. Can they execute this time? Ooh, Geek fam, speaking about execution, they really need to pull off a good execution now. They've been falling off the charts, but their competition is not going to be small. It is face clan. Despite face clan below them in the overalls, but it is face clan that we're talking about. Now, let's see who will get the first advantage. Sonic's almost knocked by the name. Okay, how Vintori is just watching them like a hawk from behind. Trying to gain as much information as possible before they start to move in to the side of Gig Fam. Now Gig Fam, they're not aware there's going to be somebody else watching behind. The two focus on Boom, but now Talon start to move. They're making their way into Vampires, trying to flush them out. But will other teams take advantage of this? Ooh, Axel! Double knockdown with a single day. Taking out Shrubs and Tony K. Rosemary, putting pressure from afar. But as long as they're in the building, they should be away from Rosemary. But for Schwabs, just next to Stone. Stone is going to let him go. No chance for him to pick him up. And Stone, knocked out by Red Face. Now Vampire only has one active player left. We have multiple teams fighting at the same time. Boom as well, still hailing as a four. Gig Fam on the other hand, only Lafoon, only Audrey and Snipes here. They barely can hang on, outnumbered too much as an ambush. And Boom just swiped them off the floor clean. There's nobody else from Gig Fam that actually survived, I assume, but they're still not done yet. They're not out of the wood for Boom because FaZe Clan do want to take them down as well. And Boom tries to lock up Mormon. A Mormon tries to move away. The safety race, even play on the Mormon, almost getting it. The shots did hit by Mormon. So far, safe and sound. He returns to the hands of his teammates. Trying to get onto that buggy, but Face Clan trying to stop them from advancing. Pretty difficult for the side of Boom to reassess the situation since the terrain itself is just so difficult to visualize what's happening on the other end. A Pombit trying to just gather resources with whatever death boxes they can find around laying on top of that ground. Uh, we do have BTR Eliminator a bit later than we expected to be popped just now, surprisingly. Now back to as a side of boom. They need to reset, reassess, regroup and have it go again. But next is going to be Face Clan. Face Clan still not budging, but the next circle will call it out. Ooh, it's because the next circle is going to come real soon now. Will it go out of the city? Somewhat, somewhat. There's still a good percentage of the city, but the Sam9 waiting on the outside in case anyone shows themselves. But I guess the most interesting is what is Alta Eagle going to do? Are they going to pass through the city or are they going to make a rotation from the outside? I mean, the best decision is going to be from the outside, but do they have any clue or information? Who are the teams that are actually on the outside as well? You want to move, you have to make sure the line is clear, but it's not as clear as it can be right now. So I guess Alter Ego try to farm eliminations as much as they can on top of those about, uh, those area where the buildings quite open up for so many views. But at the same time, they're really closing in. So I guess they're hopping to their vehicles and start to figure out maybe they're going to take the outer rotation here. They have to cut across straight. It's quite too risky. They even got stuck within themselves in this building. Yeah, it takes a bit more precision there to navigate through, not gonna lie. 
But they got it through. Let's see what they're gonna do now. But we're sure that Boom is moving in. Whoa! GK! Splat onto the base. Take it as yet. The hero of XRG GK brutally slaughtered by the Rondo and Boom just now. Just seconds. And he's gone. But for the side of Boom, they're taking one step at a time, but still got himself quite on the northern side, taking the upper hand there. It, they need to spread out if they want to have the map control for the side of Boom. If not, they're just sitting ducks in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so now we have the answer of what Alter Ego is going to do. It looks like they're going to go through the city. They're going to come in from behind, but they're still on the outside of the circle. We are talking about stage 6 coming to stage 7. It's going to take a little bit more out of them, especially when they spend time in the blue. Octa knocked out by Nuzi, so it looks like they're having a hard time coming in, but Misery actually steals the point away. Eight teams on top of this area right now on the southern side of the circle. Only one will remain, but I have today from this side only. And eight minus uh, eleven minus eight is going to be four. Three remaining. There, sorry for my math. I'm not really good at that. But Rosemary spotted out Linux. Woo! One HP left. Ooh, that was a real close one there for Rosemary as well. Now how are they going to get in? They've been locked up. They know the talent somewhere shooting at them. So, unless they can solve the problem by knocking down a member of Talon, it's going to be real hard for them. But look at the Elimination Feed. Farmbit getting into action, knocking down somebody with a nade. And on screen right now, we have RRQ against D Savior. Both of them in the circle still, so they can still kind of hold their position. Boom, fighting his face. What is happening? Alter Ego happened to be stuck there. Down by Talon and Alva, the last remaining members couldn't make mm. it through because Talon is out of nowhere. See everything that's going on. Yeah, I mean, it was a tough one for Alter Ego. So they had to bow out at this stage. But look at the Elimination Feed. Boom is still with the fight with uh, Base Clan. Ventores takes out Pombit and Razy. Lots of fights happening up north, and it looks like Boom took out Base Clan. What worrying is going to be. Ooh. 7-9, despite their spreading out, just open up their angle, widening every way possible. It's just circle shifted way away from them. Boom still got a bit of a circle on the top. But the rest of them, this is going to be cluttered. So cluttered. There's no room for... There's no breathing room at all for these guys. Yeah, I know, right? That's the thing about urban warfare, where the circle moves away. Everyone's just like unwanted neighbors at this moment. I guess the toughest ones will be the teams on the right side. We've got three teams there. Not only they need to get into the circle, but they're also next to each other and they have to cross the road. No, you're wrong. The toughest one is going to be the observer. They don't know which team they should focus on. There's so many teams fighting right now. So confusing. You don't know which one to, f to focus on because everybody keep open fires and just keep tossing the nades all over and just you hope for the smokes to cover you for a bit but the moment you step out of that smoke where to go next there's literally everyone everywhere yeah not gonna lie the hardest part for an observer is when we have urban warfare like this but is it gonna be hard for Euro alliance as now they will take the fight probably against boom but they're gonna play it defensively popping up the smoke Hopefully they'll be able to hide themselves well enough because Boom is just across them. Tim Flash trying to shut down on Pygmy. Left with only two players for Pygmy. It's going to be 2v4 for Talon. Nobody's actually touching them, surprisingly, despite they're actually in the center. But nobody actually giving them enough attention. Guang take it on Pygmy. One knockdown. It's going to be Vexy drawn left. Now Talon take it on Team Flash at the same time. Linux take it on one. Now finish off the job. Team left. Flash. Oh! Ooh. Nice follow-up though, not gonna lie. Gosu is still there so he can save his teammates and they happen to be inside the circle. Boom, me boss, they know the presence of Yudu Alliance on the left side. Now only Leon's his left. Jimmy OP is currently down. Boom with four players. Just need to manage Leon's. Back to a sort of boom. They have a bit of a blunder before but managed to reset themselves. One, two, three, four. I love that. Scores right now all secured 10 eliminations with uh, numbers accordingly based on where they stand their names on the left hand side just now. A boom finally open up the angles now. Can they finally land one as they try to take down on you to alliance? 
down to only 10% less than that HP in the smoke. You do alliance, leaving only one person behind, Jimmy. Mm, there you go, the follow up from the rest of Boom will take up the last member, you do alliance, eliminating them. And now, boom, they are in prime position because they're not in this house. If they're in this house, it's gonna be chaotic. Like what's happening right now, RRQ and D Savior. We have Hassan, the last member of RRQ. Can you pull out a big, big clutch here? But that talent has survived as well. RRQ need to bail out. He's backing off for now, trying to open up a different angle entirely. We have three teams in the same compound, the same building. Assad, the only person coming up from RIQ alone up there. Levi on the other end, trying to shoot them away with those nades. But we have more people coming in instead of actually keeping them back at bay. Lina is going up, but it's just going to stay on the rooftop for a bit longer. Yeah, stacking up a lot of teams now in this building. We got four different teams. With the same area, but the name of Levi's. Take it out, red face on the outside. Asa will be the one to secure that point. And looks like Asa now, he's still holding his ground. He's running our utilities. That's not great. The Blues are start to close in. Talon and Norik have to move, but Lamborghini, my god. That particular angle with that kind of toss, he's the furthest away from the rest of the team here. Managed to score it anyhow. Boom! Can they finally land a chicken dinner? Or oh, Vampire's Newsy can make a bit of a comeback play with his clutch. It's in the very last minute. Oh, Asa? It was the right. There's something. Opens the door. Opens the door again. Asa takes the first shot. And now at the same time, the blue has arrived on Asa. He's forced to move further forward. He has four first things by his stage that They were talking right. There's no way you can take out the blue. Newsy will be taken out. Asa goes outside. Asa shows his side to Frenzy. And Asa! Take it out by Razy, my bull. Oh, feels like this certainly a boom chicken. There's no way these things can go wrong at the end, right? But DX still have a trio. Now down to 3v3 between boom. We have two. Oh, sorry. Oh, never mind. The other one being eliminated. Down to boom versus DX here. Yeah. yeah, fighting back right now is D Xavier. Boom, e spot three active players, so three v three at this moment. Bombin, no time to pick him up. Yummy takes shot and fifty percent help. But Yummy gets the knockdown to power again. That could be the opening. Now they have the man of violation, just the savior. Now boom, wanting to shut down. They're desperate to taking this chicken away from the fingers of the axe. But the axe, this should be the map they've been waiting for the whole day. Frenzy with a mini 14, scat up the entire club of the X right across and Porridge is still bleeding Woo! out. Down one more, down to only one last person. Can Boom close the deal? The chicken is secure and Boom got it this time. Boom, oh, please God. The lineup that has not been changed. This game number one. Right, right. Comes up with the chicken dinner now in the first Mirama match of the grand final. The only team that actually stopped Boom for closing the game just now. They're a bit later into the party because of Yudu Alliance. Have been open up. This, you know, seeing this for the set of same nine, they are spreading out so wide. They tried to stop Boom from entering as well. But Boom, despite they almost lost the entire team before, they managed to resuscitate all their teammates, have it another go, regroup, and try to fan out as much as possible, making sure. They won't make the same mistake. After a long day here today, finally, Boom scores one for themselves. Yeah, what I really like about the Boom is that they took the rook less taken and it worked out for them by going out. Out in that space, just outside the city. There was somebody there, but there was only one person. They cleared out that space and it, they made them dust instead of being part of the party inside of the city. We saw what happened, it was really, really tough. But look at where the numbers. Well, no doubt, Yummy, D-Man, with the thousand over damage in the sound for Boom. I think mean, one of it is, might be actually his grenade as well, because when it comes to throwables being used, his utility will be the most being used up here. But Razy and Fenty, we saw how they actually work out as a duo. It actually works well. Pombi and Yummy come up from flanks. So I think Razor and Friends are always being fake for the team here. They always work as a duo, try to distract all the attention to it this side and try to dodge all those um, bullets flying onto them. But 
Well, on the side of uh, PMSSA far, we still have to give it for MVP this time, which could be Yummy. Well, he's smiling and he definitely well deserving of this. Yeah, and uh, interesting enough, the uh, favorite weapon wasn't a DBS for once. But uh, the tradition M4 is back in his hands and he can he's showing that, okay, no DPS, no problem. He can still put on a performance here. And overall, the amount of eliminations that they got is pretty nice as well. So boom, scoring a chicken to death, not only just the chicken to death, but they took back a good number of eliminations with them as well. Now, surprisingly, we did mention earlier on, this should be the ties 40, right? We talked about FaZe as well as uh, um, a vampire example, but surprisingly, they're not showing up up here when it comes to the top four. Talon, on the other hand, has been very proactive today, keep popping up in the top five and top six for the entire day. But before we get into the last night later, let's just straight into the highlight in case you guys miss all the action. And now that I look back at the replay, the fight between Boomy Sports and Face Clan, that was a crucial one. And now, 15 eliminations with a chicken dinner brings them 25 points. No record broken yet, but it's still 25 points. With D Xavier coming in second, 11 points. Talon, 11 points as well at third. A big hole coming out from a side of boom here today. That's 15. Again, the magical number as the most eliminations. We had earlier now another team just putting out the same golden standard when it comes to the most elimination points. But when it comes to the points here, the axe and talent they actually secure quite a number, but I'm not sure so much about the teams on the second page. Should we be worried about the teams on the second here, especially at least Void secured three points, so hopefully by end of today they manage to secure a double digit by kick on the other hand. Mm. Mm, the only team without any points this round. I mean, overall today, Gig has been having a tough day. 
I wouldn't be surprised uh, with this uh, zero point performance. The the overall charts they would slide slightly down. Oh, I don't know, man. With the room is about Mika thing, and um, I don't know. At this point, if they need to pull up Mika, I mean, like, be welcome to do so because it feels like they are. Hitting themselves with a wall right now for Kick Fan barely actually find themselves the momentum that they need. Now this is where everything that really matters. One point Ooh. different and boom! Push down you to alliance with a one single map. How big of a difference with that chicken just now? Well, 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 I guess uh, that's what you get if you have a very good head start with 30 points to start of the day. And now they push down Yudo Alliance above by one point. And then you have Talon, who's 20 points behind Yudo Alliance. I don't know. I know it's still day one and all that. But if anyone were just like passing by and just tuning in, it's like, whoa, is this a two way race? But if you look at the each of the points as a tiebreaker example, the head start points from the league really being so extremely helpful for Boom at this point here. The only one that actually have more than you do alliance at this stage is gonna be only the head start points if you compare with all the others. Eliminations wise it's just two point difference. Placement points, you do alliance has been consistent. But who will get there's only gonna be one one team to go for PMG. Oh, but these two teams are so tight right now yeah i know right that is the uh the thing about competition there can only be one winner for the most one winner for sure and so happen to be only one slot to the pmgo and we're gonna talk about geek fam slightly sliding down and uh, yes they went down to number 13 uh, they were on the first half of page two but now they are on equal amount of points with base clan so only the tiebreaker um defining the yeah, the difference here but if the next round face can just scores one geek fan scores zero then that's pretty much it uh they will overtake but for boy with one more round to go please join the double digit club oh, speaking of a double digit club there's gonna be the four digit club so when it comes to damage dished out by each of these individuals the axe the xavis levi and boom yummy when it comes to eliminations you have to give it to yummy but damage wise it didn't tally up for levi it just shows that they're being actually interrupted by a lot of the party in this case for the xavis yeah, and I guess because they were fighting an urban fight, right? So they had a lot of targets in front of them. That's why there were a lot of opportunities to shoot. But still, Boom has slightly more damage. Less action, slightly more damage. He's able a lot more action, but slightly damage. But yeah, it is what it is, right? Like targets come to you, you need to defend. And at this area, like what we saw early on, they uh, they got a second place finish. So that was pretty nice if you ask me, considering they, they got out of that that city that had every other team there. Now there's gonna be a recap for chicken dinners. Three from Malaysia, it's the same team, but two from Indonesia with two different teams and banner. It's gonna be both starting off with the alphabet B, BTR and boom. But who will secure the final Mirama of the day? We have yet to see any uh, Team Flash DX or Face Clan or Vampires in this case. Oh yeah, we won't get uh, every region to get a chicken dinner today. So maybe we have to wait <laughs> for that tomorrow. But we got one of our predictions right. Well, you got one already with uh, Yudo Alliance. And I finally spot by, so yay to Boom. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Okay, Getting the caster's your... prediction right. I, I, we're going to bump this here because oh. we got it right this time. We didn't jinx any team, man. So yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a trophy separating us, so... Yeah. Really? Nah, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't mind if it's cash, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> I mean, like, wait, not right. Uh, we got the most points when it comes to predictions. Hopefully, we're actually winning whatever the competition behind the scene. But when it comes to the last map, uh, Cloudy, do you think there's any chance for a team coming up from Thailand or Vietnam to score this one? Honestly, if I were to look at the, like, the uh, track records of like today, between the two, looks like one of the Vietnamese teams has a better chance of scoring. Especially the X, right? And Team Flash as well. I mean, like those two teams, feels like they are almost being eliminated at the same time. It's just, the circle just now was quite intriguing. We were talking about a very different flight path and circle, and a lot of teams have to be in, in, in the middle of everybody else. And Sam 9, 
there's a lot of arguments in the chat. I, I'm watching you guys as well. Uh, there's a lot of them are saying that the split, they're flirting with danger zone if they're actually splitting way too far just now. But at the same time, those split, in my opinion, did actually open up so much um, map control coming up from the side of zone 9. But yeah, you cannot deny the fact due to how they separated themselves into two pairs. So it's just so hard for them to eat each other out. Well, yeah, there's a there's always a pro and con to it, right? Like if you open up that, then obviously you cover uh, a lot more space. But the risk is that because you open up like that, if one person gets knocked to save that one person, the effort is going to be quite a bit. So it's the the pro and con that whether the teams are willing to trade off or not. Well, it didn't trade off quite right as they expected, uh, but it's still not too late for them to have a bit of a redemption, a bit of, uh, you know, trying to rectify the mistakes they made for today. It's a lesson. It's a learning curve for all the teams down there because some teams just very frustrating to be a myself. Some veterans still in the learning curve to know what's the best for them, how to work with their teammates and such. But there are teams that really just keep on going strong. And in this case, you can see the rise of Alter Ego slowly here. Hmm. Could it be the quiet ones here? Ah, gotta keep an eye on that. Gotta keep an eye on that. I mean, they have done it before. A miraculous run in the last PMSL, the final day. Um, it could probably come again, but uh, we'll need to keep an eye on that since it is still day one though. Oh, Keenan wow. is uh, out. So it looks like Keenan only played like one game before they sub back in. Right, it's gonna try. I think the play is probably gonna need a bit of a break. Maybe Dimsy is just, you know, I'm, I'm a bit tired. I just need one map break and I'll be jumping back in. So probably that's the case for the other teams. I don't think there's any more swapping happening. Hmm. Uh, looks like the answer. Maybe not, maybe not. But you know what's the best part? Boom did not make any swap at all the entire <laughs> day. Now that's a big improvement. That's a big thing, by the way. If you guys just new to this scene here today for this Grand Finals, that's, that's a big improvement. And that's something we should all be proud of because today and tonight, this is going to be our last Mirama map of the first day in the PMSL Spring 2024 Grand Finals. Will we see Vietnam or Thailand filling up the uh, final chicken dinner or will it still be someone from either Indonesia or Malaysia? Let's head on to our final game for today. The standard fly path is going to be slightly different. It's going to start from the right side, just above Impala and end just on the left side of Valade Mar. Ah, just now we starting off the reverse and it's more towards the southern side where Chris De Valley actually ended up as a circle but will this be a creature fill circle then or maybe the generous Paul Gritz and Martin and Picardo for the end of day number one but so far we do have early jumps from the teams for their initial draw spot um, nothing unusual just yet but just now really when it comes to the last Miroma I have a feeling it's because of how contradicting the circle and the flight path was that's why a lot of teams happen to be clustered in the same compound yeah and uh, happen to be cruise valley that one city very attractive i understand because at some point like it was in the middle of the circle so a lot of teams went there but uh, we got rosemary here caught off with two members of rrq but the good news is that at least rosemary he managed to loot um he managed to loot some weapons so he should still be okay well, of SLO, I guess, and then the Pekko, on the other hand, will be his next contender. But the bad news is Reeves Mary being cornered by Hexas as well. Not just that, it's going to be an entire crew of RQ. Now, I don't know how he can get away from this, but if it's possible, he's the supreme ninja if that happens. Oh, circle time. Looks like it's going to be on the right side. Impala. Impala is the middle of it. And if it goes all the way to Impala, I'm not going to complain. One of my favorite uh, places to play. Oh. But Rosemary, that's definitely not his favorite. Asa took him out from afar. Wow, with the VSS. Uh, make me miss Matt Toy for a bit if it's VSS in play. 
It's been a while somebody uses VSS. It's like this non-existent weapon is there, but nobody's using it. Well, if, uh, if aside somebody, then yeah, he just used it. But yeah, I'm pretty thanks. sure after this, he would like swap it off if we find something else. Please no. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Bring the uniqueness of the game by you know, using something else. Like, thanks also for bringing back VSS in play. We kind of missed that a lot. But some of you guys did mention about not having Tony K. He's actually playing here today, but... Just so hard to find his footage because there's so many initiation coming up from uh, sh like shrubs usually in this case here today. But Tony Ko is playing around the flanks. If you guys want to watch for Tony K, happy to be your idol or really love his gameplay, he always the one that coming up from flank and trying to execute whoever being knocked down or being punished by his teammate before. But that's the only accidents we have in the early one, I guess. Rosemary. Cannot score anymore on this map. Yeah, and uh, losing the key player of Alter Ego doesn't put them in the best of situations. And uh, they are somewhere in the middle of the uh, overall charts. And obviously the gap, like what we saw early on, is kind of big. And to lose Rosemary is rather detrimental to Alter Ego. I'm going to check out the replay again of how Asa did it. And pretty straightforward, I must say. Oh, yep. Rosemary didn't know what hit him. Yeah, he, he didn't got a clue that somebody's watching behind his back. And that's the beauty thing about Battle Royale, right? You thought you were safe for a bit, but there's always going to be somebody's watching you, stalking you like you're next to his, you know, just something that I don't want to say. It's so nasty now. I want to say it out loud. Never mind. Forget that. But back to a sort of morph. Morph. Well, Morph is being Morph, I guess. Um, Morph is like, I feel like Morph last, was it last two season or last season? Feels like a bit like a pick me situation where nobody actually expect them to be outstanding and out of nowhere, they suddenly just exploded. Yeah, it was a, it was a straight run for them from uh, PMNC, uh, I believe last season and then to PMPL and then straight up to the PMGC so it was a very straight run for them very very good run and obviously they went to Istanbul in the in the finals as well um of course there was some community saying as well that uh, mm. could it be a one hit wonder after their amazing run last season uh i guess it's going to be hard to compare since they had a major overhaul in terms of players only two original players uh, remain in the lineup so if you ask me it's not a apple to apple comparison that's kind of true it's so hard to even compare this season and last season or the any seasons to be compared with any seasons at all because we do know for, for every single season even the circles pattern is going to be so different and not just that the teams competing are completely different as well maybe not entirely different but that one and two teams do make a big difference by the way for the rotations of all the teams involved in the tournament so that's no really you can you can't compare from one season to the other yeah i would argue uh, yeah i guess i guess if we talk about circles then and that's a lot of it is like theory and also observation obviously like when it comes to patches like it will never tell you about the circle so you can't like okay how much of this is different <laughs> as compared to that yeah you just need to make like a kind of like a guess and kind of like a feel of how things happen and just like how Voin is probably feeling geek fam beside them and that's why they're avoiding the lower ground and geek fam is not going up to challenge morale might not be the best for geek fam now now on the side of Alter Ego, they're playing around the shoreline. I'm just gonna walk past Impala at this point. They lost Rosemary and just gonna play it safe because it's too early. I mean, if they want to fight for somebody, they already lack off one person, one firepower, a tremendous one at that. But back to the side of Geek Fan Boy. Hello, Snipes. Ooh, all in of the Snipes right now. Three players in the same building. Max is almost knocked down. But uh, that just gives away the information that Snipes is on the other room. And immediately knocked. And nobody else is close by to save Snipes. Samrud. Spot out key. Maxi is in trouble. He couldn't overpick himself outside of the window. Well, 
Dimsy just jumped down. He's quite a far apart from the rest of the team since it's not inside of the building. But we do have another team behind Voina. Who will that be? Hmm. Where do we get a vision? Uh, I believe that's like on the higher ground. So Voin gathering information and not sure if they know that someone's there or maybe they are focusing on to geek band for now which is fine right because if we look at how rough the terrain is it, although like on the minimap we see that like, okay there's another team there on actual ground it's not that easy to spot just because of how bumpy the area is not just that players don't actually see circles like we do so they see like stick figures running around, have no clue who's actually running there. Back to the start of VTR, Lapar taking on the high ground, roofed up Gem Force, very separated. I'm not sure if this is a good separation or not for VTR in case somebody actually walks into their line of sight here. Well, I guess if it's like the early stages, it's fine. So that you can cover more of getting information of people rotating. And if you can take the first shot, sometimes you can blind your opponent to think that, oh, maybe there's a full squad there. And they might not want to take the risk. And plus, we are still at stage one. So that's probably what's happening through their mind. But now with the information that they've gathered, they have to get into the circle and the circle shifted to the right. So there's still the possibility of having an Impala circle at the end. In fact, that just now was stage two and previous one was stage one circle. It's already hard enough and tough enough. Imagine it happens to be on the fourth one, how crowded it may be, how small a place it can actually get with some portion of the circle actually covers a bit of a water ratio in it. But Sem9, they are trying to figure out which is going to be the best path for them on the Ego. Despite them trying to run away and avoid all the fight they can, they just walk straight into one in the middle of it. Oh, three, four teams on the minimap as we can see here. Point. Lucky enough, they have this area for them to play with for now. Uh, Maxius needs a bit of an adjustment. I think it should be alright. Or maybe he's just going to give up at some point. Not too sure. But uh, what's sure is that at least they have this compound. So it will become the fortress for now. Until maybe the circle goes away. Pombit. Pombit. I have to be extra careful. It's always the first one to be knocked down a sort of boom. But XTX Twang. And GK. We saw almost like a huge clutch from GK before. His staff is still on the adrenaline rush. Not willing to give any sort of information whoever passing towards their building. And that's going to be Talon if I'm not mistaken. Hunting people down. Couple of shots fired. But we don't know which team happened to be engaging with the other. It feels like a bit far. Maybe it's Voin trying to take down a Razi or just Alter Ego again. Oh, here we go. Alpha 7 knockdown hunt for you. We need to counter back. He managed to get a knockdown to Yoru. But the rest of both GPX fires onto him. And now only left with Okta. Alter Ego without Rosemary from the start. Looks like they are having a very, very hard time. Speaking of hard time, the terrain defying the gravity. But Alter Ego after one. Now it's done. I don't think there's any more players left for Alter Ego. Unfortunately, for their last map of the day, they will be the first one to be out. But I think there's one more person, possibly. Still have 16 teams in I don't know who's the last one, but more. Spotted out by Audrey. There's going to be Mini 14 tapping it out at the slopes of the hill while Hazel is trying to make a run for it. Morph scattered with their tails in between their legs, running away from Gig Fam. And they just want to advance towards the safe zone. Ooh, and Circle went up, and there's no longer going to be an Impala Circle. Now, up north, we've got a good amount of teams in the middle of the circle, including Vampire Esports, who is playing with a different strategy, not from the outside of the circle to find fights, but instead they try to get in as early as possible. And uh, now, the main thing they need to be aware of is BTR from the high ground on the top left might come to them. Okay, spot it up, boom bit of answered bullets flying to its side of XTX right now but they're attracting too much unwanted attention across this map. FL Team Flash having a bit of a standoff between BTR boom 
That's going to be the last player of Altiga. The first one to be out, Altiga. This is going to hurt them for their overall rankings, which we're waiting for the points still. But I don't know where they actually stand by the end of today for Altiga. Last time we saw them, it was on the top six. But I have a feeling they dropped the stairs down. Well, speaking about drop again, an early elimination for Yuhai. 7-9 losers. What a key fraggers. Seems to be a trend here. Hopefully, Sim 9 is able to work out something because it's quite apparent that it's always you high, the first one to be eliminated. I don't know who's cheering at the back. It's definitely got a very, very sounding voice. That's very energetic from the audience on the live stage. Go back to the side of Boyn. Zeta barely can get any sort of opening for the side of Boyn. We don't see the best of Zeta just yet. And Boyn trying to hold this as long as they can, gatekeeping to its Talon, who literally just try to bulldoze any team that tries to stop them from advancing. Ooh, Boyn, at least it's somehow, after going round and round, they managed to get themselves into the circle. By the edge of it, the next stage will be big for Boyn because we have 15 teams still. And Boyne is now by the edge of the circle. And if we just look at the minimap, there's like so many teams close by. Coming in is going to be hard for Boyne next. Probably some fights they can't avoid. Speaking of avoiding, Lapa is not avoiding anything. He's trying to take people down. Spot out Team Flash. Team Flash, they have been running, not engaging as much. They're trying to just poke any team that passed by, but not really trying to execute them out. Sam9 on the other hand, I don't see Yuhai anywhere nearby. Did they lost, yeah, they lost Yuhai early on just now. It's down to only three players. Now the circle speaks for itself. Will it be Minas Generalis or Le Pendita? Or entirely an uncharted territory in between these two places. Yep, this is going to be two heads in the center. Quite generous for whoever's quite far to get into the circle, but a bit more tough on the right side. As per usual, Cloud, the southern part is going to be super crowded, except for RQ on the northern side. Ooh, but speaking about the northern side, BTR is one of them, well, more like a north uh, west. And now they need to take this fight against Team Flash, a team that potentially can get the chicken dinner. But let's move over as well to Big Me versus both GPX. The fight for the high ground, here comes. Drum taking the front line. Hazel hardly can pick out. Drone is just giving them so much pressure. Even toss out Molly just to scare them away. You know, Lion is taking on Linux of Talon. Morph taking on Gip Fam. But now Morph is a bit busy on two sides. Not just beat me, but there's another team behind them. All you do, Lions defending their compound against Talon. FaZe, on the other hand, Ooh. seems to be interested. Misery just rushed in to his Leon. That was insane. Oh, here we go. You know, Alliance defending ground against a Talon. Managed to take out one player on our talent. Defending so far, so good. Red base on the other side. Misery in the building, all alone. He needs back up quickly. As Utilize circling around, they're very confident now to flush out their opponents. Oleo from the other side. Misery goes down. Talon losing the plot. A lot of teams happen to be taken down by the blue zone where they're trying to reset themselves in nearby death boxes. They don't have the time. You do lines have to save Jimmy, but Talon giving them so much pressure they cannot do a thing. Cannot even try to approach him at this point with so many corners to cut around. Now Adik look will try to figure out how to take down Redface, who's already ready out with his DBS while Semna taking on Sonix. Redface trying to just play around with Adik look, corner him all the way around, but Vaughn might actually step in here. Oh, here we go. I didn't look. Tries to cover his flank because Boyne has arrived. They have to find the advantage. They have to cover as much as possible. Focus on the one by one. But Boyne is not going to allow them that space. Red face comes in. Fights up with Boyne. While you do alliance. Stay chill. Let them cancel each other. It's going to be Voin winning this one here. Yeah, the last one to stand in here. But you do Alliance, they still want to defend their stronghold. Red face, he has to just march in there. But they are the one who's coming up first. Leon, you do Alliance, take it on Voin. They're not willing to stay quiet for you do Alliance. And Red face, take just the initiative while they walk straight into the bait for you do Alliance. And Red face, patience is a virtue and just shows it well worth waiting all this while. 
red face almost taken out. That was a really close one. But Yuta Alliance again, the defense master is working its magic now. Axel comes in, knocks down Adiluk immediately. Axel still holding down this line, goes up to the second floor, reloads, resets himself, takes a breather. We're coming back to the lower ground to finish off Adiluk. My Axel, quick to think on his feet. Witty enough, playing around the smoke, not to overexpose himself to give away to his Yudu lines. But the circle speaks for itself once more. Face Clan, we've been waiting this for a long time. Finally got themselves at the intersection between the small and the main road. But boom, very scattered on. The one that actually do have another wall going on is going to be on our top right hand side between RAQ and Pygmy and Sam9 as well. Ooh, the fight here looks like it's going to continue since it's still within the circle. Maxius, nade across. But oh, he was being shot at. I wonder from who. Probably from some of the teams that actually came down from the uh, hill. As uh, oh. Maxius takes a little bit of shot there. Still a okay. He's the last man for boy, so he cannot afford to make mistakes. How to get out? That's a question. He, he's just barely brief. He got three first aid, don't even have time to reset himself. The moment he stepped out from the compound, only awaiting on the other end. He cannot even step on that buggy. We spray straight in the line of sight of Olio later the moment he opens the door. But DX still fighting as RQ, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be three-way war as well up there with 79 hovering about. But for you doing lines, they really want to end at this today with a fourth chicken, but can they actually do it? Oh, red face, knee on to the side. But nobody's there. Looks like it's stalemate for now. Or maybe these teams need the circle to go away from them before they are forced to break the cycle. Red face. All alone on this side. Axel on the other side. Euro Alliance on the other corner. Man, if the circle goes away and they're still in this position, it's going to be bad for all of them. They happen to be walking into a stalemate. None of them willing to move, and none of them can move. But SDX Boom Face Clan on there, then they are free to do whatever they want. Jimmy and Olio, somebody have to push forward here. And Red Face, just you know what? You're not gonna come out with you, just gonna wait you out then. But pick me and RQ and 79. Oh. Interesting. Boom! Low spring over the other end, and boom, did not expect that at all. Beautiful line of sight by Loyu. Check out members of Boom. Now we have RRQ. Only no mercy left against Big Me. And they know he's on the second floor. Billboard saw him. The fire is still burning at the door. But say that the Bacos on the other building as well. He might get an off angle. But everyone in Big Me is in the same building now. It's no mercy. They're on the chase right now. The Bako comes in from the lower ground. Trying to pin them down inside of the building. But RRQ went down to Big Me. Just too much for them to handle. It was wise for the side of Pygmy not to move in, not to move in solo. I tried to just find one person by themselves to move as a tree. But you do lie still having a bit of a stalemate between Axel and Talon Red Face here for the longest time. And less than 30 seconds. They have to figure out where to go because they don't have a choice now. Hopefully they do have vehicles to run away later on. But if they don't break the silence now, both teams will go down in vain. Woo. Right now, circle time. Who, which team will go out in vain? Will it still be them? Or will the circle still favor? We'll find out real soon. But what we, we do know is that Sam9 loses another player. Razy went out. So I guess that's the end of Boom. And like what you said, circle went away. So now we're going to see who's going to be the victors in that house. And we do have Empires and also as face still alive. Same goes for STX and DX. The Xavier's last map was close enough, getting themselves the top five. Can they finally get in the number one spot for this map and this round with that chicken dinner? But before I started Pygmy, they keep running. They don't really try to rush into people for Pygmy today. Most of them are actually running away from fights and try to make a U-turn and try to take advantage from the sight lines. But you do a lines and tell on, finally break the silence. Here we go, as the zone will start to close right now, we put a lot of pressure to these two teams. Olio and Jimmy is going to be the duo to try to do it against Talon. Got Excel and Red Face. Blue is going to arrive, and they're going to arrive first onto the members of Talon. 
finally they are out from the building, but none of them willing to just, you know what, we're gonna part ways and do our own thing. You do you, I'm gonna do me. Both of them are dying to get those two points in their hands, but Ooh. Talon knocked down on first, Jimmy. Getting on one, now remaining with Red Face. Red Face open up his position. Take a bit of an exit route at the back. But Olio, as well as Jimmy, can they work things out to finish off Talon? Oh, Red Face can clutch it by himself! Mm. Who finally ended. What a long standoff that was with Yudo Elias winning the fight now. It's all about problem solving on how to get into the circle since there's a lot of open space in front of them. And Vampire Esports by the edge of the circle. But pick me now against Loyu. Loyu won the fight. And Loyu with about 10% of health. He needs time to reset. Time is not on his side, man. This is definitely not his friend here. Blues in closing in and Dap. Finish off by GK with Vampires marching in. Sam 9, that's going to be the last of them. Because FaZe and Pigby all eyes towards the side of the side of Sam 9. Vampires versus FaZe. Now this, ironic enough, both teams are really good at this map. But none of them scores yet today. So finally, one of them will make it happen. Yeah, it could be. It could be. There's a good chance right now since we're in the top 5 team. Vampire Esports. Dealing with a face clan and look at the spread they have against face clan. They have them pretty much covered, but face clan they managed to revive the IGL. So it looks like face clan is back as a four, trying to defend their ground. We still have stage seven. Let's not forget about that. Stage seven commencing very soon in less than 30 seconds. Straps. Mini 14 do need a bit of magazine reload. Vampires split it into 2 2 formation while they're trying to corner about face clan, but they'll be stopped entirely on hold due to how you do lines just merging out of nowhere. And same goes for the other teams right across the corner. We still have top five. STX is one of them. I'm not sure about DX, DX being eliminated. Now remaining with face 2 2 2 1 1. Vampires going for 2 2. STX going for 3 1. While PGMY or Big Me. Remaining will two play same goes for you to Elias. Now it's not so crowded on the northern side, isn't it? Oh, it's not, but on the left side, it's very, very crowded. Three teams and only face clan in the circle. So the fight between face clan and these two teams is inevitable. It's a matter of who will cancel each other. It seems like you know Elias, they're gathering information from the other side of the road as well. Now Jimmy shoots out the vampire. Not able to get the knockdown to anyone. Vampire, they might consider to rotate from the north to get across the road. Less than 200 meters, less than 100 meters apart for this team. Jimmy, how can he not go down like that? There was less than one HP left. Well, the magic of Jimmy OP, it seems. Lady Luck smiling on him, but let's see if he can still get the luck right now. Because it's no longer about luck, I guess. It's all about skill on how they're going to manage to get into the circle. Just like how Vampire Esports is trying to do so, but they've been shooting away by Big Me. Mormon spotted out Vampires. Tony Gaze on the ground bleeding. Knocked down. Big Me taking advantage of the side of Vampires. They already lost one man early on. Got on the same vehicle, all of four of them are three. This is not great. They walked straight into Vampire. Sorry, straight into face. And sprayed by Pygmy on the side! Oh. Vampires! Oh man! Wow! Looks like FaZe can defend the ground real well against Vampire Esports. And now they need to do that again against the Feudal Alliance. You will like Olio shooting onto the other side. Momo! Not up by Olio, but the counter comes in from the other side. And Olio taken down. Momo! Now we're with the question whether he can be saved by his teammates. But anyway, the most important thing is that FaZe Clan Defend it well. They need to pick back up on Mormon because XTX are rushing straight into their crosshair. While Pygmy, surprisingly, is, despite they left with only do it for a long time, they survive and they are on their own because how separated they are between Drawn and Billboard. Every man for themselves. But it's not going to be enough for Pygmy. Drawn left and it's only worth Billboard. Now, XTX versus Face next. Yeah, XTX. With the space, and also we have Billboard. Looks like a good chance for us to see a different region getting the chicken dinner this time. As Space Man shoots, the answer here, putting pressure on the break, break force to reposition himself from the outside circle, coming back in. 
Wrong. Just around the horizon. Try to spot anybody, but the sudden explosion out of nowhere caught him off guard. He backed down so far. So well, uh, Zenderez of STX barely can see FaZe Clan. Now, this is where they can play their best for both teams. For FaZe, this is definitely theirs to take because they are hunting down XTX. The way the movement going in, so is just running away. Spotted out on them, so it's going to be break. But for the side of FaZe, they're pushing XTX to a corner. Oh, absolute corner right now. They don't have any more space. They have to come into the circle at this moment. Mormon keeping an eye on the SDX from the outside of the circle. He would need to come in as well. But let's not forget about that one player who has been sitting put all this while the final player from Big Me. That is Billboard. That could be the game changer for SDX. If only Big B just clutched this chicken out, this is gonna be huge. Comical even at this point. Now they're about to be spotted out, but that's gonna give away XTX breaks position on the oh. side, push them down. Down to only two teams left. 4v4. A full squad versus a full squad. Now we're gonna play about the communications team play and down to the last firepower. Who is better than the other? Yeah, and for sure, right now we'll see a new region getting the chicken dinner today. So it's either from Vietnam or from Thailand. Now, stage 9, 5 more seconds, zones will close entirely, both teams pretty much by the edge of the blue. Trying to spread out, face going with 1-3, with Mormon going for flank, trying to feed information as much as possible. Trying to score himself an AWM, but will it put to good use here? Onsens, only 14, they have so much right across them, they didn't open fire yet. A bit too late when they realised that. Ventura is going in! No! The change! The exchange and trade now 3v3! Oh, trading up with each other right now. Onsens probably has the information. He saw he saw break on the other side, but Onsens! Counter by break, knockdown! Now only two action numbers left for base clan to make it happen! Miller, break, switch over to Mormon. There's too many fires on. Face Clan, can they close this one up? Axie Axe oh. down to tree. Mormon finish off Trunk. Mela jumps hey, up. Mella. He's just sprays on JK. Break on Mela. Oh, they need a bit of a recess. Just take a being a bit of break. That's the Axe only Man. break remains. He clutched one more. Oh, one more to go, one more to go. It's going to be Mormon and Break right now. Four to get it up by Mormon. He'll be pushed by the blue. There's a move for the forward. Break sprays, but not able to connect a single shot of Mormon. Mormon gets closer and closer. Break is in trouble. Or maybe Mormon is in trouble. It's a 50 50 right now. Mormon left to come down. And Mormon! And it's Saint Clad! You win the day! Saint Clad! Take a dinner! That was a super freaking hot fourth chicken dinner sorted Ooh. out between these two teams as T Axe as well as Space Clan. It was anybody's game till the end of it from full squad to the classical mono to mono, but Mormon experience in, in play for as T Axe. That was super close. Man, it is space, baby. What can we say? Mormon, that was, oh man, that was so, so good. I mean, uh, it's M4 versus M4. It has the jiggles in it. He has that last year hearted dramatic ending. This is the best chicken dinner we have seen today. The longest to fight for against a full squad. But when it comes to damage Y, damage Y, sorry. I have to say everybody pulled their own weight. Well, Mela is Mela. We don't deny on that, but it's going to be Mormon for those chickens, for that particular chicken just now. Ooh, yeah, Mela is still amazing, right? Like, he got a couple of good knocks towards the end. And uh, because of that, uh, that allowed them to have their number advantage. Uh, but he got knocked before Mormon, made it a 1v1, and Mormon just had to do the jiggle work there. Beautiful. Orchestrated well by Mormon, man. If there is a, a music that you can put there, you know, it would jive really, really well with how Mormon just moved left and right with the straight, with the jiggle. Ooh, and it's just a beauty to watch.
Well, I have to give credit for this out of ST access well because just now break was on one HP last time that he didn't go down He reset himself came back stronger till the very last minute as well on top of Mela I mean that's quite a high percentage of headshot coming up from this guy But I do know this is gonna be a legendary player. This guy is a legendary player So it's something to be expected by the way Absolutely. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a I'm a Mela fanboy. So nice to see <laughs> him up there, still still performing very well, even though moving teams and you know his his level of gameplay is just just next. That's all I can say, right? But uh, not to discredit the other teams as well who made it uh, far enough in this game. STX up here, and we got a uh, Pikmi here, and we got Semnite for the first time in the top four. That was an ending, especially coming out from Pick Me. They have one of the longest duo, other than, if I'm not mistaken, you do a lines before. But still, face coming up strong by the end of the day, like per usual, they are the kings of comeback. Yeah, 13 elevations this time, not the highest. We've seen more, but 23 points. Not gonna complain about that. 10 more points than Team X. That got 13 points, but also complete. I wouldn't say complete, but that adds uh, some variety to the teams or the regions that get the ticket dinner here today. Not just that, the fact that also we have our eye on our eyes on the side of Yudu Alliance, where they have um, just one point difference against Boom before. This definitely opened up the stretch once more, but I do want to see if Boom's still standing at second place or do they being knocked down by another team entirely? And where do Face Clan stand after that chicken dinner with a huge amount of 13 elimination? Ooh. We gotta, we gotta wait for the uh, total scores, right? But there's one switch that happened at the top. Boom! Esports only got one point this time. Euro Alliance, obviously, they got more. So it's an easy calculation that Euro Alliance would overtake Boom. And I believe they should be at number one. I don't see another team overtaking them. 
There we go. 87. Now, this it was one point before. Still boom on second place. Talon Vampire still stand. Now, face climb all the way from second page up to... They were at around 14 or 13 place before. And halfway, all the red... Or just one map is enough for them to actually push all the way to seventh place. Oh, yeah. The competition here is starting to really heat up now. And if you don't align them, boom, they chill. Yeah, teams like FaZe, Altigo, Big Me, BTR, all these teams can actually chase up because we got two more days worth of games. Wow, if one day they can collect this much just, just by themselves, like doing a day, imagine for tomorrow, will it be a different team entirely? We saw definitely so many times DX so close of getting it when it comes to Mirama especially they're quite consistent compared to Irangul if only they can tweak a bit when it comes to Irangul it would be perfect for the teams but on top of Void and Lee they finish off the day with the double digit next to more but the gap is quite wide between a D13 place even if you want to compare with the first page it's just quite a big gap yeah at least at least they get a double digit so nobody's left out uh, by the end of the day uh, now it's a matter of like how much more can they push themselves page one maybe or maybe making that surprise entry into challenging for the number one by tomorrow maybe we don't know because these teams are all just amazing and you just can't drop your ball against any of these teams I agree, especially if you actually noted out on RQ, they are the only teams on second page have the biggest at start points compared to all the others. They're starting off at 16, which means they're supposed to be on the first page. But it's just not doing right for RQ today. Nothing just works for them. Yeah, not as what we've seen before, especially from uh, week one. So, tomorrow's another day, okay? No lost hope yet for RRQ. I mean, they are not too far, not too bad. With two days to go, they can do it. But of course, we gotta give tribute to Face Clan with the uh, with these stats, right? Top four gunslingers. Um, the gap is fairly big, about 500 damage as compared to Team X, and then everyone else is like about 100, uh, probably at max about 200 ish, or maybe close to 200. But because of their 500 gap, they won a lot of fights, especially the one with Vampire, and those were the important fights. But we're gonna pass it on to our hosts. Take it away. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to Tropicana Garden Balls. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your number one team of the six matches, Udo Alliance. Fantastic. Amazing. And in Ramadan, nonetheless. And okay, today with me, today on stage, we've got our translator, Mr. Jungs. Uh, you can tell he is always the tallest person on stage. And uh, one team member from you do alliance mr Kluk. uh he has a k in front of his name uh jungs told me it's about the adi <laughs> adi means little brother yeah okay so it was an amazing day today six games just finished and we are here today with the number one team after six matches with three not one not two but three winner winner chicken dinner all right so uh, the first question would be did you expect this coming and what was your team's actual target uh, okay dengan performance you realize hari ini dapat tiga winner winner chicken dinner and benda ni sangat-sangat hebat lah uh, apakah actual target apakah target sebenar pasukan you do alliance sebenarnya Target kita orang sebenarnya nak kekalkan konsisten je selama tiga hari ni. And Alhamdulillah, rezeki pada hari ni kita orang dapatkan tiga winner-winner chicken dinner. And thank you atas sokongan korang. Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, we try to aim uh, about like, we try to uh, to be a consistent team throughout these three days. But then, yeah, I'm really grateful that we managed to get a win, uh, three times winner-winner chicken dinner. And yeah, uh, I just want to thanks to our fans that keep supporting us. Fantastic. And I think he's 100% correct. Having talent is not enough. Being in a competition of this magnitude requires consistency. All right, let's move on over to our second question. We all know uh, that your very big regret is missing the champion on in spring 2023 uh, with just a few points. Can you share with us today what will you do this season to secure the top one ranking? Okey, kalau kita tengok season lepas, uh, Yudo Alliance terlepas peluang untuk menjadi champion dengan beberapa poin je. Uh, boleh sharekan tak apa yang adik akan cuba lakukan untuk season ni supaya korang boleh jadi champion? 
macam season lepas tak ada rezeki and season lepas pun last game kita orang kita orang buat gameplay yang uh, bukan gameplay kita orang and mungkin pada season ni kita orang akan perbaiki untuk uh, game last lah kita orang akan tukar gameplay untuk menjadi tak macam season lepas fantastic okay. <coughs> so um, if you ask me uh, we talk about last season basically uh, we did a lot of mistake especially on the last game we changed our gameplay and for this season i think we going to try to improve and try to learn from the mistake and not eventually not doing the same mistake again ah, fantastic learning from your mistake yes. right life lesson right there and not only that we've seen them in this season comparative to last season they've already got three winner winner chicken dinners on the first day what is the main reason do you think your team is so consistent even during ramadan Okey, uh, boleh ceritakan tak macam mana kau orang boleh sekonsisten ni dapatkan tiga winner-winner chicken dinner walaupun sepanjang bulan Ramadan ni? Uh, mungkin sebab atas doa kau orang and atas doa family-family kita orang, doa ibu saya and thank you atas apa kau orang lah. Uh, it's because of our fans, it's because of our family that keep supporting us, that keep pray, pray for us and yeah, especially for my mom, uh, I love you mom, thank you, thank you so much. Yele, you, you love your mom or not? Okay, okay. So it wasn't just translation, right? Okay, okay. All right, all right. Just making sure. All right. So is there any other words that you would like to say to Boom? Because the team Boom has very close points uh, with you today. Uh, do you have anything to say you want to say to Boom? Uh, okay, ada tak apa-apa nak sampaikan kepada Boom sebab point orang dekat-dekat dengan Yudha Alliance. Untuk, untuk Boom, good luck. Semoga konsisten juga sampai hari ketiga. And saya harap korang boleh buat yang terbaik juga. Wow. Uh, to boom me spot, uh, I, w- I just want to wish good luck and uh, I hope that you guys are going to be consistent as well until the rest of the day. Um, yeah, that's all. Fantastic. Can we get a round sound of applause for Klug? That was such a sportsmanship answer. I love that. I love that, Klug. Amazing. Fantastic. Wishing luck to your opponents. I love mm. Sayang kau. Okay. Uh, final words to the fans that have been supporting you all the way until today. Uh, any words that you would like to say to your fans today? Okay, ada apa-apa nak sampaikan kepada fans-fans yang support Yudha Lions? Uh, kepada fans-fans yang support tim Yudha Lions and semua tim Malaysia, thank you sebab dah support kita orang daripada jatuh bangun and semoga... Uh, tim Malaysia jadi juara. Semoga tim Malaysia boleh juara lah season ni. Uh, to all fans out there, especially uh, Yudha Lions fans, uh, thank you so much for keep supporting us, uh, support a Malaysia team. Uh, I hope uh, that Malaysia team can be a champion on this season. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is the number one team for the first day. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Yudha Lions. Thank you so much, Klug. Thank you so much, Jungs. For those of you watching at home, don't worry. We'll be here for the next two days, tomorrow and Sunday. So if you want to watch and you're in Malaysia, come on down to Tropicana Garden Malls. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our final game of the day. I will be passing it over to our casters. Take it away. Klug. Yeah, also... Apparently sponsored a dick look, I guess. <laughs> and then at least if he says like K look, I would still kinda accept it. But Kluk, okay, you don't just like Kluk. Uh. No, you, you know the app Kluk, K L O O K. Yeah, it's a broken. <laughs> yep, uh, they 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 are not part of the show. Thank you very much. But, uh, we I'm sorry, but do but say yeah, thank you to all of you being part of the show. Yeah. Thank you everyone, but also speaking of the show, we are not done, we are only done with the first day But you notice one thing about Adik Lugo, so he is super shy, even though the host is actually a meal, right? But he's very new to the host, so he don't even stare in the eyes of the host He always does that, and it's some somebody new on stage with him, right? Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's a typical thing, right? Yeah. yeah, unless you guys kid, like, gotta get comfortable, then maybe he speaks a bit more. But I'm pretty sure backstage he goes like, "Yeah, man, we want it, you know, we're showing <laughs> them, yeah, yo, trust it to pass the Malaysia." I agree. The boys are like that. I don't know why. When the camera is just not in front of them, they're so wild. Then it's so easy to get in control of them. Really, you just point a, a camera. They just silent. Yeah, boys be boys, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, 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 and, and I was expecting it to be a little bit too spicy when it came to the message to boom. But when I think about it, well, it's Adilu, and yeah, they don't do it without camera. 
wait till they go back. They're doing a lot of things behind camera. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But what a day it has been, right? I mean, three chicken dinners by Utilize in day one. We're breaking so many records today. Yeah, that's kind of true. And so far, the standard is going to be triple chicken in a day. 15 animations. Sorry, sorry, production, what you were saying? Oh, Castor can keep the end. <laughs> I think we're going to wrap the day here, Cloud. How about you wrap the day here today? <laughs> okay, so I will start to wrap it literally. We'll take a little bit of this. And we'll see you guys tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sir Cloud, together with Choo Choo. This is the PMSL Grand Finals Day 1. See you for tomorrow, day 2. Bye.